Hello everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Yeah, hi everybody. We're waiting on Set. She went to the bathroom. He'll be back soon. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. In the meantime, um the stream backup channel, the the channel I re-upload all the gaming streams to. Um I've uploaded most of the streams I've done in the past year or so to that channel, and they're scheduled to release every other day. That video you picked is the most boring thing ever. Really? I don't know, I listened to a few minutes of it and it had some pretty shit takes in it. We're live, Setch. Yeah, I knew, I knew I was gonna miss uh, right at the very start. Pagan. Right. Pagan was aware too. Yeah. Anyways, I was just letting chat know that a lot of the gaming streams have been uh, re-uploaded to the alt channel and uh, scheduled to release every other day. Nice. And any new streams I do um, from this point forward, pretty much, I'll, uh, I'll schedule to release on the days off where there isn't a stream upload. So... The Outer World stream from the other day, that's scheduled to release Wednesday, because I've got one scheduled for Tuesday and Thursday, so I just dropped the new stream right in between. I need. I also need to work on a new bingo card thing, because uh, I lost access to the editor for the bingo card, so... The link should still be in our group chat. Not to the, it's to the other page, it's not to the actual editing page, and I was like, oh, motherfucker. I, I tried to do it for our group chat. Through our group chat, I should say. But you, I know you posted the editing link in the group chat, because you said so yourself. Yeah, that's what I thought. And then I tried it, and I used it, and it's not. Oh, uh, you fucked up. Yep. That's fine. That's fine, we'll just... We can just make a new one, so it's not hard. Yeah. Anyways, have you seen any of those videos, Such? I have not. Though I'm already like, why it's still the best open-world fantasy RPG. How can Oof. something still be the best if it was never the best in the first place? Yeah. That's a, that's a big problem right off the get-go. <laughs> is That, that oh. assumes that it was ever the best to begin with, and it, it wasn't. God, some of the things I've only seen a little bit of it, but man, some of the things he says right out the gate are just like, "Oh, you fucking, <laughs> fuck you." Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, speaking I... of things that have been said recently, huh? Uh, shame how Patricia went crazy. Oh God, are you really bringing yeah. that up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we kind of have to. <laughs> yeah. So if Patricia ever does his video, I don't know. Maybe his video will be good but currently he is he's having a, a breakdown a meltdown when it comes to elden ring and oh boy the the shit takes have been fucking crazy yeah they've been pretty seen, bad i haven't seen any of these takes firsthand i've just heard people talking about them they're pretty fucking rough like he, he made I think one of the biggest ones that I heard before I stopped was when he claimed that Elden Ring is only good because everything else that's come out recently is bad. No. Why? No. Yeah. No. Dude, yes, the, El the 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 fucking devs of Horizon Forbidden West in particular um has gone fucking insane. It's great. The, these developers in the industry are so pissed that Elden Ring is successful. They're like, Elden Ring's scored a 97 on Metacritic. This proves that no one actually cares about UX at all, sad. And it co that came from the Ubisoft UX director. <laughs> um, well, yeah, and then another developer jumped in and is like, or oh, the graphics, God, it's it's horrible. And it's like, no, Elden Ring looks beautiful. It looks gorgeous. <laughs> I'm sorry. They aren't going for the highest pixel count. They're going for an actual aesthetic and appealing look. 
Or Quest Design, if we're being honest, chimes in another developer from Horizon Forbidden West. So we have three developers, all of them tangentially related to Horizon Forbidden West, that are whining and complaining that Elden Ring is doing so much better than their game. Well, have you seen that edited screenshot where people add on a bunch of useless uh, UI bullshit, like the quest tracker, the quest marker, yes. and everything to Elden Ring? It's like, man, what a fucking nightmare world this would be if this is what Elden Ring looked like. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Chris is a guy with the 12-hour Oblivion video, right? Yes. So, again, his video he makes on it eventually could be pretty good, but my god, his takes have been horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Yeah, and I just find it kind of hypocritical and kind of funny of because his takes on Skyrim, he defends Skyrim quite a bit, and it's like, but Elden Ring, oh, I'm gonna shit on that. I'm gonna have all kinds of shit takes on that, and it's like... Especially when he defends Ooh, that doesn't Skyrim. make you look good. Well, he defends yeah. Skyrim by like, you don't understand how deep the Civil War was. Do you know how much cut content they cut out? Well, it don't fucking matter. They cut the content, didn't they? That's not what we got, was it? So your cut content amounts for zilch. Don't give a fuck. Yeah. Skyrim Civil War is shallow and shit. Deal with it. That is a fact. Yeah, not but a big they luck. had. They had so much planned, and they had so much depth that they cut out. Again, they cut it out. It doesn't exist in the game. This is not hard to understand. Oh, God, and then his talk about passivity when he doesn't realize the shield attack and everything. Oh, my God, dude. Oh, yeah, we yeah, we'll have to go into, go into that. Or Ugh. him bitching about the medallions <laughs> and yeah then the medallions so was the best one holy fuck yeah. that was insane he was crying read. About, he was crying about the medallions like you're not you don't know where the other half of the medallion is it's so stupid it's awful and then somebody in his discord linked the descriptions to the medallions that tell you exactly where the other half is they tell you what region and what actual named territory it's in everything and so then he got butt hurt and he wiped his whole gaming channel. <laughs> he actually banned that guy too. He banned the guy, but then brought him back, unbanned him later and wiped the gaming channel. Yep. So somebody did the, the soy Jack meme where uh, it, it has Patrician's face on it. And then the guy underneath the mask is crying and yeah. seething and open. The very first comment on the new thread was that. Oh God. And the smithing part, he said that, he said that you don't the, because your smithing stones are so rare at the end game, you can't experiment with any new weapons, which is bullshit. Smithing stones are literally infinite. Yeah, you could farm them from anywhere. You could buy them. You can, yeah, you can actually buy them. If you do the side dungeons, you get the smithing bells that you give to the two uh, crones, and you can buy all the smithing stones you want. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. I just buy them. Yeah, I do. It is. It, yeah, it is fucking in, in, it is clown logic. You're in clown oh, world. Yeah, that's the, the takes I have heard from multiple people about Elden Ring is some of the most insane shit. And the funny thing is, a lot of them are the same people who will defend shit like Skyrim for having bugs and being broken. And, oh, it's supposed to be bad. But then when Elden Ring comes out and is actually good, it, they you have guys, to find the on. tiniest little things that don't matter. You guys are fucking... burning bridges with a content creator over a difference in opinion. Weird. It's not a difference in opinion. Okay, him bitching that the medallions don't tell you where the other half of the medallion is, so you have no idea where they are. That's just wrong. That's not a difference of opinion. He's just a fucking idiot. He's wrong. Yeah, he's just wrong. We're going to call people that... out for that. Saying that smithing stones are super rare, so you're not, you can't test out new weapons, is fucking wrong. They're literally infinite. That's just fucking wrong. It's not a difference of opinion. He's fucking wrong. Also, I want to point out quickly that criticizing someone isn't burning bridges with uh, someone. Like, we still like yeah. patrician. We just yeah. disagree his, with his him Marwin when he's saying Ob things that are blatantly wrong. His Marwin and Oblivion videos are fucking great. Yeah, he's just I currently gone videos. insane, and he isn't thinking clearly. Yeah, it's he's he's mad. He's just he's upset and he's not thinking clearly and he's just raging. 
yeah. and thinking he's making sense and he's not. He'll probably come out of it eventually. He'll probably calm down and realize, okay, yeah, that was pretty stupid. But for now, he's saying it and we're going to call it out as stupid. And we're not burning bridges with him. I mean, if he decides, hey, I don't want to, you know, interact being, with these people anymore hey, because they criticize me, then we so are not be it, being I guess. Harsh. But yeah. If, if you consider that overly harsh, dude, you need thicker skin. Yeah. We are come calling on. him out for not having standards. He is having a double standard currently. Yeah. I have been reamed in the past for some of my shit takes, and it's like, I, I'm still friends with those people. Like, you can have bad opinions and, and bad takes and then be called out for it. It doesn't yeah. mean that you should just immediately then be like, well, I'm never going to speak to this person ever again. Oh, and, like, don't, okay. and don't do the baby bitch thing of nuking the entire discussion to hide what happened. Yeah, that's Good really God. bad. That, that is, makes that you is look... absolutely pathetic. Yeah, do not fucking nuke the channel to try and hide it. Like, that is the worst thing you can do. Come on. Yep. Yeah. A lot of worst internet flame outs I've ever seen have been from people trying to hide their fuck ups. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You should yeah, hiding your fuck hide ups your is fuck-ups. the worst thing you can do. Just embrace them. Just admit you fucked up. Yeah, that's I don't get why happen. that's so hard for people. Just say, okay, I was wrong. <laughs> it's not hard. I have thick skin. It's you guys that are seething. Dude, you can't even understand what burning a bridge is. Yeah. Uh, you're the one who's literally saying because you said some slightly mean things about this person you're burning bridges i'm sorry but if that's an, if that's all it takes to burn bridges for you then yeah no, then, yeah you, you, you have really thin real skin. yeah you have real thin skin my guy um, that's pretty sad okay 50 check crowns from carol's voboda thank you very much thank you i used to be an adventurer like you then i took an arrow to the knee this is a super funny quote, and you must laugh at it. Support Bethesda. No. <laughs> I think the worst thing you can do is murder. Okay, we're obviously talking about a, a improportionality here. We're talking about the internet. The worst thing you can do is try to hide your mistakes, because it's the Streisand effect. You trying to hide it, or trying to cover things up, or trying to deflect from it immediately makes everyone go, Oh, what? And pull out a magnifying glass and stare at it. Yeah, when you yeah. start trying to hide shit, that's when people start digging deeper and deeper because, hey, what else is here that might be funny, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's also just funny to me that whenever people do that, like, they'll, they'll, they'll try to censor it or something, it becomes all the more bigger. It's it's how the Winnie the Pooh and Xi Jinping became a thing. It's because he didn't like that and he tried to censor it, and then which made people go, oh, you don't like it, and then spammed it yeah. all over the internet, and now it's become, like, a classic meme. Well, that's the whole thing with um, what happened with Jack Murphy a few months ago and Mundane Matt years ago. When Mundane Matt was hiding his uh, reporting history and claiming it wasn't him and claiming it was other people, the only reason that blew up as big as it did is specifically because he was trying to hide it. If he was just open about it, people would be calling him a fucking scumbag, of course, but it wouldn't have blown up the way it did. Yep. And uh, same with the Jack Murphy stuff. Yeah, exactly, Jack Murphy. Weird sex videos and... If he had just come out if, and said, yeah, he I did just it. Said during the, if he had just said during it, yeah, I wrote a really shit article back in the day. I, I don't want to talk about it. It was stupid. I've, I've grown as a person. That's it. Yeah, if he it would have ended there. If he owned up to it, it would have literally ended there. No, he exploded instead. And then people found all his weird sex videos and all that. And he started blocking people and getting mad. and uh... Yeah. And so then people dug into him more and more and found out he is a beta soy cuck. <laughs> like, hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is... Romanian Lua? So, 10 Romanian Lu- Le- L-E-U from Quail Lore. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sup, furries? Kratosis, mm. face reveal win? 10 million subscribers. Oh, yeah, damn, that's a goal. No, I'm saying it because it'll never fucking happen. Yeah. $2 super chat from Scoopmeister. Thank you very much. Yes, stag. I need my fix so bad. Yeah. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, we're here. (laughs) Yeah. You some kind of sex pervert? Mike's the Claza. Yeah. (laughs) Uh... Guys, I've donated to you and love the channel. It seems like you're going really hard on Patrician is all despite a difference in opinion. What the fuck? 
LT, okay, well, if you if you donated, hold on. If you've donated to us and you've watched us and you understand how this works, we aren't going after his opinion. He is stating factual fucking errors. Yes, and we we expect others to do the same. You understand that, right? If he says something and it turns out we're the ones who are wrong and he can prove that he's right, then yeah, we fully expect him to be like, these guys are fucking idiots. They're saying I said this, when clearly they're the ones in the fucking wrong, dumbasses. I'm not going to be mad at him if he says that and can prove it. Exactly. Like, Being wrong is chill. not a bad thing. Yes, it, it, it's just banter, my guy. We're not being fucking... We're not going after him being like, oh, fucking cancel him because he was wrong about something. He did something... He said something wrong and then did something really stupid. Yes. That makes him look really bad when he really, does it. Really bad. Yeah, really bad. And <laughs> we're calling him out on it. There isn't unnecessary... It's as simple as that. There isn't unnecessary drama, LT. Again, we're just saying he made a few bad moves here. He said things that were just blatantly false about um, Elden Ring. Ring, and then deleting the channel to hide that he made this fuck up is... Again, this is the point we're making, is that's a really, really bad look. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing yeah. that'll just make people dig into you more and try to... I don't know, find other things that you might want to hide. That's how it works. It's the <laughs> internet. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Do better. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking <laughs> Carol Schmoe motive. Uh, um, Twenty check crowns, guys. You are wrong. Educate yourself and do better. Do better. <laughs> uh, things get way out of hand on the internet. That's all. Kings don't add fuel to the fire. We're not, dude. We're not. We are literally no. holding him to the same standard that we have. That, yes. Again, the standard that he is not holding himself to at this moment, okay? So, just just to give an example, if someone were to come out and say, unironically, Skyrim has no swords, or Lord of the Rings has too many gunfights, we would say, yeah, you're wrong, and that's a crazy thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter who it came from. Yeah. We use those as examples, as hyperbolic uh, examples that... Against people who say, oh yeah, art is subjective, there's no such thing as objectivity and stuff like that. But if someone were to honestly say something like that, yeah, we would call them out. Also, you know, uh, we, we we do it the same way we do with the videos we cover. Like, we're not burning bridges with the people we're covering as well. Like, we'll call them retarded when they act retarded. It doesn't mean we're just going to sit here and be like... Well, if they come here and say that they were wrong, like, well, fuck them. We're not going to do that. It's yeah. entirely possible that every single person we've covered, except one, could reach out to us and talk to us and have good conversations with us and even build friendships with us. Um, yeah. You know, it's not... When we cover these videos, we don't, like, hate these people or want to destroy them or anything. It's just, oh, hey, they're saying some dumb things. Let's talk about it. Yeah, look, exactly. every frame of Skyrim is a picture that could be your desktop background. Hey, look at all these things that are fucked up in the image he's Thanks. showing. All right, here we go. Patricia, I got rid of the channel because I was having my points ignored. Once I was able to stream about it and show what I was talking about, most of the people involved understood what I was talking about. Okay, well, we need, okay. To, go in, we need to go into the conversation about your stream, too, because there were some other shit takes in there for sure. But yes, there you go. But yeah, you should never... I would never suggest deleting a channel. I did not. I would never do that. Yeah, if I it happens, would recommend and against then, it. Yeah, if it happens, and then you can be like, yeah, you guys were ignoring my point. See, here was my point. Here's where I said it. You were ignoring it. Uh, $5 Super Chat for Peace was never an option. Thank you very much. Thank you. You don't understand. You said something bad about him on the internet, so that means you want to end him and his entire bloodline. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> well, according to some people, yeah, that's all it fucking takes. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing we also said, Patricia, because people asked in my stream as well. They go, they go, do you want to, are you going to do the stag about Patricia's stream yesterday? I'm like, no, because it's not his video. It's his first off-the-cuff thoughts. Like, again, if... If we had gone through your first off-the-cuff thoughts, you not knowing the entire aspects of the game or anything like that, that's not fair. That's why we said we'll wait for you to do your video. 
Yeah, exactly. If if you do a video, I should say. Well, yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. I didn't think about that, but yeah. Also, we don't uh, cover streams on here because it's just too unwieldy. You're talking about <laughs> yeah. Us covering a 20-minute video could take up to, like, six, seven hours. If we were to cover a two-hour, three-hour, four-hour-long stream, where yeah. it's intermixed with, like, gameplay and there isn't full commentary, or if it's people talking back and forth off the cuff and unscripted, it's like, man, that is going to be really difficult to respond to properly. Yeah, yeah part, part one of a five-part series <laughs> of where eight-hour streams... Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, we don't we don't do streams. Yeah. Also, um, I even saw on your stream you were fighting a boss fight that I never experienced, and I, I have beaten the game now, and I've almost I thought I almost fully cleared everything. I know I missed a ton of stuff. But yeah, you were actually fighting a boss fight in the Red Main Fort that I had never seen before. That's because what's funny is that boss fight takes place in the festival area where you actually go to the festival and you're talking with all the NPCs there to get them ready for the fight. Oh, yeah, I should go back there. I never did finish clearing out that fort. Yeah, I, I, full, I full cleared that fort. That's why Patricia's stream. This is why I was impressed by how much stuff is in Elden Ring is like, wait, that happens. That didn't happen for me. Yeah, and it's it turns out I didn't hit the I didn't hit the specific series of events, but because like I had Blyde and Alexander when I showed up, it was Blyde and Alexander and a bunch of other NPCs waiting there, and they were having a big festival for uh, Radon. Uh, we should probably avoid spoilers, by the way. Well, it's not it's not really a spoiler because it's just a name. Well, I'm I'm talking in general. It's not just the name. It's just you're talking about the boss fight that you didn't know about in the place. And Daniel K said, "Gaff, don't." Uh, please don't say spoilers. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, I just didn't know. Okay, I didn't know that this boss fight existed. That's just it. Anyways. Uh, Streamers say the darndest things. <laughs> should we get on with the video? Uh, yeah. Yes, no, hold on a second. Uh, no, 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 yeah, we already did that. Peace and option. We did that. Alrighty. Skyrim's 10th anniversary. Why it's still the best open world fantasy RPG. Why does he yeah. specify specifically PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4? I don't know. That's already maybe weird. Maybe they're specifying that's where they got the footage from because it looks like they were a PlayStation channel. If you look at the title card, they have the uh, square button in the title card. Yeah, the channel is actually called uh, Push Square, I believe. But So yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Uh, hey you, you're finally awake. Hi guys, it's Aaron here from Push Square, and I'm joined by the- Yeah, look at the uh, banner here. It's all the PlayStation button symbols. Yeah, so it's definitely, it's a PlayStation-centric channel for sure. Yeah, but that doesn't mean- It's just I, I... weird that- like I said, maybe they're showing that it's footage from PS3 and PS4 versions. That doesn't necessarily prove that it is, though. Like, you could just I, as easily say, hey, this is PlayStation 3 footage, while showing PC footage. Yeah, I know, I know, but that's what I'm saying. I, maybe that's why they have PS3, PS4 in the in the title. Yeah, I don't know. Because I don't, I don't know why else you would have it there in the thing, because, like, they know you're a PlayStation-centric channel, and now you're talking about Skyrim, and everyone knows Skyrim came out for damn near everything, so. Yeah, but, again, it still seems weird to do that. Like, even if you're a PlayStation-centric channel, you could talk about games that are on the PlayStation without saying, hey, we're playing the PlayStation version, because it should be obvious that you're playing the PlayStation version. You know? Yeah, that's what, that's what I mean, yeah. That's why I don't... That's the only thing I can think of as... Thin and loose as it is for why you would have PS3, PS4 in the title. Hmm. One and only, he was an adventure once until he took an arrow to the knee. But how oh are you? Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Already, shut the fuck up. Yep. Yeah. Why are people still making that joke? It wasn't even funny in the first place. It was just something no. people latched onto and fucking spammed. 
And now yeah, here we it are. Really is literally a tenth anniversary video for Skyrim. And hey, let's make that dumb joke again. Yeah. If it was at least a witty, funny joke, I could get it. You know, oh, the funny thing from Skyrim, but it's like, that's not funny. <laughs> it's not even remotely funny. It never was. And also presented in probably the most boring way possible. Hey, here's so and so. <laughs> he was an adventurer until he took an arrow in the knee. Oh, uh, Indigo, Indigo Gaming. Skyrim loading was the best get loading on the lo loading PS3. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, all right, we got our we well, we got our cringe out of the way quick, so that's fine. Yeah, cross off cringe. You today? That meme. I mean, it died in 2011, but maybe it is due a comeback. Much no, like the game. it should stay there. It should stay yeah. dead in 2011. Do you understand? Do you understand what you just said? The game released in 2011. It died in 2011. The game released in November of 2011. So in less than a month and a half, it died. Maybe you should put two and two together here, dude. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's... What a condemnation of your own joke. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, you literally admitted that, yeah, this was dead literally the same year it came out. and it, 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 But, oh, maybe it's due for a comeback. How about no? How about let it die? How about no? How about I don't want to start hearing I heard they're reforming the Dawn God everywhere. Uh, Did you uh, hear they're reforming the Dawn God? I heard they're reforming the Dawn God. Oh, are they reforming the Dawn Guard? I think they're reforming the Dawn God. It's good that they're reforming the Dawn Guard. Yep. God. Yeah, no, I think I might join the Dawn Guard. Ugh. What's That's the newest than bear, bull, bear, bull? That's way <laughs> worse. <laughs> when is the new edition of Skyrim coming out? They'll probably release a new version before Elder Scrolls 6. Like, hey, Elder Scrolls 6 is coming out in three months. Here's a new version of Skyrim in the meantime. The you know, Skyrim, they'll probably do something like, like that. Skyrim Hyper Edition or something like that. Oh, you know what they'll do? It'll be E3. They'll announce... Uh, November of 20-whatever-this-year-is. Uh, Elder Scrolls Six is coming out. And to celebrate, we've got a new version of Skyrim! Uh, whatever this year. <laughs> yeah, and they already did a VR version. Jesus. Oh, I forgot about that. Ray, this YouTuber <laughs> is reciting 2011 Skyrim memes. Kylo, does, does it hurt? It hurt? <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right to the knee but how are you today sir that meme i mean it died in 2011 but maybe it is due a comeback no. much like the game itself right no no, no. Hey, it's the anniversary double no the game shouldn't get a comeback no. either no. no the game needs to fucking stop at this point like come yeah. on you cannot milk something this much. See, even if it was like... Let's pretend for a second that Skyrim really was the best game ever. I still think this is fucking overkill for re-releasing it. Like, you've beaten it into the ground. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's literally a meme now. That's all it is. Alright. ...of the legendary arrow. Like, let's bring it back now. Push square. No. November 2021. Let's make this happen. I'll leave it to you guys in the comments. <laughs> well, Shut considering up. it's March of 2022, I think they fucking failed, and thank God they did. Yeah, Christ. Exactly. Christ. God. Fuck that. Dwemer but yes. Bo. Oh, what? Dwemer Bow. Oh. Five dollars from Peace was never an option. Thank you. How long until I can get Todd to install Skyrim directly into my brain? He'll probably fucking do it if he could. If we hit the singularity in our lifetimes, he'll probably try. Well, they're already in talks with fucking, like, uh, Elon Musk and his fucking whatever that thing is where it connects your brain to the internet. Like, they're already talking about fucking making games for that thing, and it's like, oh, you know Skyrim's gonna get pushed onto that if they do. If I could... that, That'll probably be the first thing that comes out. 
If oh, I could God. plug into a game like the fucking Matrix, Skyrim is definitely not the game I would plug into. No. Fuck that. Oh, I know. I know. God, no, actually, no. Maybe I wouldn't want to do that for Space Station 13. That'd be horrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just imagine feeling feeling your arm. Your arm is wrenched out of its socket. I'm like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> I assume they would make it so it doesn't feel as painful as it really would. <laughs> now, uh, with haptic feedback. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen, have you ever seen that Pong? Okay, so there was an arcade machine where they're like, we wanted to give people more of an adrenaline rush as they played games. Get that actual feel of, like, ex- excitement, of danger. So we created a version of Pong. So it's a, it's a two... It's a verse one v one game. It's a versus game, and what you do is while you play it, if you score an enemy's goal, they get cracked by a metal wire repeatedly and shot <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> and then if they score on yours, you get cracked with a metal wire and shot and shot at the same time. This is an actual thing that exists, by the way. It is, it is legitimately a thing that exists. Did you hear about that VTuber who accidentally like almost strangled something in VR chat because they were wearing a, a haptic feedback suit and it actually strangled them when they when they were doing it? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god. And then they had to call over like a fucking werewolf paramedic in VR chat to come help him. <laughs> <That's really funny. laughs> Uh, Such no, you have made the cursed idea. SS13 is enough already. I mean, SS13 is pretty cursed. That's why I love. <laughs> Remember, kids, if you do drugs, you go to Skyrim before you die. <laughs> yeah, I I, sh- I sent a video in our group chat to these two um, about uh, underscore cow figured out how to become the most pure cancer build ever using just nothing but circuits in SS13. They literally turned themselves into the fucking Dovakin. In Space Station 13, using circuits. Oh, so, yeah, that's that thing you linked. I saw that. Yeah, so whenever, um, whenever they would push the button to do it, um, their their lizard character would go, Rawr! <laughs> and <then laughs> XD, and then it would blow everyone away from them, like, five <laughs> tiles. Hold on a second, hold on a second. King of Rue, that is not a question you ask. Yeah, what the fuck? The werewolf. I, I never of saw course. the clip. I just, I no. heard about it. Of course, the werewolf's hot. No, That's how it works. No, no. Yes. no. <laughs> that is how it works. No, <laughs> that's not how it works. But no, the, is how the, it works. If it was blind, I'd make an exception. Yeah, the best, um, the best part about that cancer build that's so good was getting the little drones. Because what happens is, is these drones take up the same space as a normal person. And w- so when they walk into you, you ch- swap places with where they are. So what these drones would do is, as the people were trying to work, the drones would just keep swapping places with them. So they're going back and forth over and over again. You couldn't click on anything because these drones are literally like walking around you and constantly moving where you are. And watching this poor boss scream like these drones are fucking cancer. <laughs> as he's trying to, <laughs> as he's trying to attack him, but he keeps stabbing himself every other time because the drones will swap places with. Him. <laughs> Anyways, in case you haven't. Today marks the 10th anniversary, rather scarily, of Skyrim launching on PlayStation 3 and other consoles on 11-11-11, November 11th, 2011, and we're here to remember- Yes, that's what 11-11-11 means. Uh, I I, I guess for the cheap seats, you gotta gotta specify. Then at that point, why not just say November 11th, 2011? I don't know, okay? You know, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm not the one that scripted this video. I don't even think it is scripted. It sounds like two guys sitting down and talking for 20 minutes. Uh, you, you would think be. you would think if they they were people who genuinely love this game who are sitting down and talking, it'd be a couple hours long, not 20 minutes. Yeah. But maybe they just cut it down for whatever their YouTube channel is. 
especially if your topic is why it's still the best open world fantasy RPG. Like, yeah. you'd think you, you'd need more than 20 minutes to explain why that is. Yeah, for sure. But uh, I guess that's kind of what I'm getting at here, though, is it's not... It doesn't appear to be a video essay. Unless they scripted it to be like, here's my part, here's your part, let's go back and forth as if we're having a real conversation. Petition to add Space Station 13 to the bingo card? Of course it will. In the new bingo card, it will be added. <laughs> oh my god, Bernie Gore's comment. Skyrim is November's 9-11. Oh god. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> about it just a little bit because the skyrim anniversary edition in case you needed another way uh to play it or indeed no no he not definitely at all. didn't need another way to play it that's for sure <laughs> no maidens <laughs> <laughs> November 11th 2011 and we're here to reminisce and talk about it just a little bit because the Skyrim anniversary edition in case you needed another way uh, to no. play it or indeed buy Skyrim again no. uh, there is now a way for you to do that thanks to Bethesda so yeah me and Liam we're just gonna I don't know reminisce discuss about our favorite thoughts of this game yeah I think so yeah why would you need another way to buy Skyrim yeah like, even if you really like Skyrim, you know, one copy should be enough. Yeah. Yeah. If you're buying it for somebody else, sure, and you wanted to give them, like, the most up-to-date copy so they don't need any of the DLCs or anything, I could see it there, but... Why, why do you, the person who loves Skyrim, need it? Why do you need the next copy? Why do you need the next thing? Yeah. That yeah. just kind of comes Isn't across it? as slightly fanboyish to me oh here's the th uh, thing i really love uh here's another way to buy it if you need to it's like mm. but it adds fishing we need that charging battery charging battery What are some of your favorite memories of playing Skyrim, Liam? Did you were you there on day one? What platform did you play it on? Let's hear it out. Yes, yeah, so I was there day one. Uh, I was at university at the time, but a, but a fresh-faced nineteen-year-old sat in his tiny little university. Ah, okay. So young, someone very young. Um, so it, it, similar to the situation, I assume you and uh, you and Pagan were in Cree. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I was in high school. Ah, uh, the wee yipper, the wee little whippersnapper. Uh, I was in college at the time. I remember, um, I downloaded a VPN type thing to make my computer think I was in the UK so I could play it a few hours early. Because I, I wasn't going to be able to that play that the... night because I had, uh, I had to go to college the next day. That was the trick a lot of people use for Elden Ring, actually, if you're on the consoles, because the consoles are so basic that if you literally just move the time, if you move the clock hands, it'll unlock. <laughs> <laughs> so people were playing Elden Ring like uh, 12 or so hours early. Like, nice. No, it was, no, it was 48 hours early because that's when the preload was allowed. So they just did the preload. Once the preload was finished, they literally jumped the clock forward. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, God. Fucking Jesus Christ. Console. All right. Um, I was 10 when it came out. Whoa. Yee. Uh, I was not. Let's <laughs> put it that way. I was already. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't already... remember how old exactly I was. I just know I was in high school. And everybody was, was talking about it. Everybody. And I did not like, like, so fantasy. I wasn't, I wasn't an old man, that's for sure. I was, what, 23, 22 at the time? So, wasn't mm. like, I wasn't like an old man, but I had already been jaded for a while. Yeah. It's a shame that this game is what got me into fantasy stuff. Because <laughs> I did not like that kind of... Like, elves... If something had elves and dwarves and stuff in it, I was immediately like, I, I don't want anything to do with that shit. And, but everybody was talking about it. And so... Yeah. And they promised me a bunch of things that weren't actually in the game. And Damn, so I got it. Years old. Wow. 
<laughs> Almost as old as Bo Jiden. Oh no! I can't believe 2011 was 32 years ago. Ah oh, no! <laughs> Um, it's like 150, y'all. I had no idea. <laughs> God. Yeah, it's like, now thinking about it, it's like, eh, it was, it was only three or four years older than this guy. It's when he started playing it. So, yeah, it's not, it's not much. But I get, it does make a difference once you... By the way, being in your 20s sucks, everybody. So it's when your 30s when things feel like, yeah, life's... I, I got things figured out a bit better. Hmm. You're in your teens and things are are still simple to an extent, then you're in your 20s and, and life sucks. And then you get into your 30s and just feels like so much better. Also, oh, completely unrelated to anything. Pagan mentioned dwarves, and anytime I hear dwarf in the past couple months, I can't help but think about this meme image. It was just about dwarves trying to fi uh, find a way to kill elves. I think I know where I can find it very quickly. Um... Well, okay. Okay. Uh, Admiral Tony uh, Donning says, Russians in the 30s can't say that right now, Sech. <laughs> All right, well, to be fair, to be fair, uh, there is a current shenanigans going on right now. Yeah. Uh, two notes, <laughs> Super Chat from Skids. Thank you very much. Just finished New Vegas. Phenomenal game. Well, hey, we're glad you liked it. Yeah, glad you liked it. Um... Okay, so I found the image, and on the post that it's on on the server, people have typed out fuck elves for the most of acts and reactions. But this image is nice. fucking... Hold on, I'm going to put it in our chat here, and I'm going to get it up on screen. Um, uh oh, where's the image? There it is. Fucking sushi, sushi pizza. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is That's fucking hilarious. So yeah. expectation. Watch out for traps. Party diversity is important. That scarecrow fight was awesome. Actually writes up detailed backstories. Oh, look, a puzzle. Think about it carefully, guys. Can't wait to see what cool loot we find in this dungeon. Actually spends time writing limericks. Let's do the main quest. I can't wait to see how the story turns out. Woo. <laughs> the dwarves. <laughs> All right, here's the plan. We're going to build a tavern that serves free wine to elves, so we're going to blow it up. Careful, guys. This dungeon has some puzzles in it. We better tunnel around it. It's not even a stone bridge. 10 out of 10 would burn down again. My backstory is that an elf slighted me once. <laughs> Scott, we need a bigger uh, wagon. This one isn't big enough to hold all the elves we plan to kill. Yep. <laughs> what's that, what's the wagon's hardness DC? Jeez. <laughs> My character is sober, so I'm rolling all checks for uh, with disadvantage now. Yeah. What does what? my character know about the structural weakness of this elven tower? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God. Ser <laughs> seriously. Uh, especially if you play Dwarf Fortress, you you will learn to hate the knife eared little bastards for sure. <laughs> Fucking elves, man. Oh, you cut down the trees. How could we think anything more of such a backwards and primitive, tiny race of simpletons? We are, you are not as advanced as us, the elves. We grow everything we need from the trees, yes. Oh, uh, fuck off, elves. Get in the Magma Forge now. <laughs> <laughs> At Crito says, Hippity hoppity, elves are property. <laughs> oh god, the Magma Showers. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, 50, 50 check crowns from Carol's Voboda. Thank you. Van just said that Curl Islands are their territory and Russia occupies it since World War II illegally. Let's go. Godspeed, Emperor. Uh, good luck. Especially because Japan has just had the Japanese Defense Force, so I... I good luck. Uh, $2 Super Chat from Peace was never an option. Thank you very much. Thank you. Base detour into the dwarf thread. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I had to grab that image because... 
every time, again, every time I hear dwarves in the past couple months since I first saw that image, that's just what comes back to mind. Let's build a tavern that serves free wine to elves and then blow it up. <laughs> uh, Maiden in Skyrim. Uh, this is from Indigo Gaming. Maiden in Skyrim. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Maiden uh, in Elden Ring. Free hugs 24-7. Yeah, but you get a sexually transmitted disease too, so, you know. Rip. Be careful who you hug. Anyways, uh, back to the video. Oh, first... Elves are the best source of fuel for the forge. <laughs> oh my Absolutely. god. Like I said, it do, they do not do themselves any favors in Dwarf Fortress at all. Uh, $2 super chat from Scoopmeister. Thank you very much. That's Thank going you. in the Damaz <laughs> Kron. <laughs> so the Book of Grudges. The Book of Grudges is the fucking most hilarious lore for anything ever. I love it. Oh, it's great. Oh, dude. Dwarves and Warhammer Fantasy were amazing. The fucking Book of Grudges is such a, a great... Like, their entire society bi being built up off of grudges is just... Oh, mwah. Yes, you remember that time you didn't pay pay the, that Dwarven innkeeper the full price? And you said you'd bring it back later, but you never did? Well, we've got your name right here, motherfucker, and your entire family's gonna die. <laughs> pizza and uh and, and picked up the game on playstation 3 and i must have played it for easily you know 12 hours uh what why do all the best gaming memories involve pizza as well as a little side note because I, I, the, the i gotta say no yeah i was gonna say no uh, as well that's, that's yeah just... again that's just this is purely subjective because again it's whatever you like if your whole thing is like maybe you like cup of ramen and you're like man why do all the best like Game memories in my life have to do with Cup of Robin and everything too. It's just it's just a super subjective thing, but it's just one of those like I find it hard to game and have pizza at the same time because I feel like pizza is a pizza is a very filling, very like you know it, it's not something that I feel like that I can just have off to the side and then I guess I could if I wanted to drip my toppings all over the fucking place, but I kind of like the toppings being on the pizza. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just for me. It, it, pizza would not be one of mine. But I, I'd say candies. Like, I, I remember just sitting back and having jelly beans with a lot of old gaming memories. Uh, it's really a mix of stuff for me because, I mean... Yeah, sometimes you just play a game and you sit down with snacks. It could be anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah for me, it would be like either ramen... Spaghetti or uh, jerky. Just quickly, uh, Skids, we did get your super chat. Um, where'd it go here? Yeah, just I'm, finished I'm... New Vegas, phenomenal game. Yeah, we got that. Yeah, 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 we finished that, and we said we said we're glad you like it. Uh, um, two dollars. Two dollars. Okay, go ahead. Two dollars from Vela. Uh, Zezia? I hope I pronounced that right. Thank you. Uh, you guys see the Dwarf Fortress remake on Steam. I thought it was just regular oh. Dwarf Fortress that just had yeah, it, a, uh, skin. It's not a remake, yeah. It's from the creators of Dwarf Fortress. It's still from him. Um, it, it just, it just has a, a, uh, texture pack on it. That's basically what it is. And he's doing it so that he can uh, he can make some money for uh, medical expenses. So, it's you know good on him, good on him. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's really successful. I'll definitely get it. Yeah, I, I'm. I'll probably grab it. Um, Acritosis, yeah, no would you recommend Elden Ring as a first from software game? How would you rate the difficulty? I haven't played it yet. I'm going to get it on Thursday. Um, I would. I would absolutely recommend it as a first from software game. It it make it hard it'll make it harder to go back to the other from software games for fucking sure. But I would definitely say it's a great first step because the the open world just naturally lets you adjust the difficulty to your taste. Like there's no difficulty slide or anything like that. It just naturally, hey, that guy's real tough. Well, I'll just walk around him. I'll just sneak around him. I don't need to fight him. I'll just get on my horse and we'll just go that way. 
So you have a lot more options like that and a lot more ways to tackle different areas. The exception being the um, the major dungeons like Stormvale, the Academy, so on and so forth. Those have a set way to go through them. So you have all the, the old classic uh, level design goodness in your major dungeons. Yeah. Any controversies going on? Not that I'm aware of. I've seen that question a couple times in chat now. Um, I don't believe so. Um, I, I guess Elden Ring could technically be called a controversy. The people that are like, uh, Elden Ring's character creator fails black people. Oh, that, was, God. that was a good one. And I was like, what? The, what the fuck? What do you yeah, there's mean? There's a lot of weird things yeah. coming out like that. Um, Elden Ring is terrible because it's not, it doesn't have great accessibility options. It's like, what? No. What the fuck? Yeah. Man, I'm so glad that fucking tree sentinel is right outside the main area because wait, where you first start, because oh. it is just a natural gatekeeping entity for the idiots who don't understand that you could just walk away and not yeah. fight it right then. You don't, you oh. literally, you don't have to throw your face at the, at the wall, the tiny wall that doesn't cover anything else and doesn't stop you from going anywhere else. <laughs> you you yeah. literally, you don't have to smash your head into it yeah there's oh my god that insane video of the guy just ranting while he's holding his like physical copy of the game and how he's going to return it to gamestop because he accidentally hit the 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 mask guy who kills him over and over which i don't know how you managed to do on console with a controller like how do you hit the trigger button instead of a and hit him and whatever but then he gets killed over and over by that and then immediately tries to go fight the tree sentinel and gets killed by that over and over and he just gave up the whole game and called it shit yeah. just from that and it's like good good this that tree These are sentinel the people you got to keep yeah that that tree sentinel needs to be there to keep people like that out of the community yeah um uh, 5 dollar super chat from Strissel Studios thank, thank you very much I have too many damn hours in Elden Ring already. You gonna upload anything about it? Um, uh, I might. I probably won't make a video on Elden Ring, but we'll probably cover uh, videos about it once um, once I play a bit of it. Yeah, mm. I, 105 hours and I beat the game. 105 hours and I missed a bunch of stuff. And I thought I was being thorough. And then I realized how much more stuff there was I missed. And I was like, I've also oh got 105 God. hours in, and I'm not. I, I have 105 hours, and I still haven't beaten it yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I struggle to find examples where gatekeeping isn't a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because if you listen to the people who are all like, "Oh, hey, these FromSoft games need to be easier and easier and easier," then you're just going to end up with fucking Skyrim by the end of it. Uh, thank God that Elden Ring is actually the most difficult in terms of actually doing the bosses and everything of any FromSoft game. Hmm. Yeah, uh, it is definitely pretty brutal, but it annoys me when people bitch and moan about how, like, oh, it's not accessible enough. Elden Ring doesn't do enough for to make it easy for players. And it's like, they literally took your feedback, which they shouldn't have done. I don't think they should take your feedback. But they have taken the feedback of people who have trouble with these things and they gave you options. You can straight up ignore certain bosses and come back to them later. They give you summons. Yeah, they and the summons you... are really good too, by the way. Dude, when you get the mimic, yes. oh my god. Oh my god, dude. I have been, I love the mimic. I have been having the so much fun. The mimic summon is great. Um, it's a shame it only gets one heal. However, the fact that it pulls out a fucking flask and just like, <laughs> it's like, nice. Oh, dude, I got around that because I literally just like, I decided I'm going to put some spells on my character that I will personally never use, but my mimic will. So he yeah. could just heal during combat and just cast spells as well as all the other shit that I do. <laughs> nice. So... <laughs> yeah. I'll uh, try to keep that in mind. Yeah. And he also has a, um, the heal also heals nearby allies as well. So whenever I see him healing, I'll run over to him and get some free heals out of it as well. Yep. See, <laughs> it's so great. See, when you said mimic, I pictured in my head like the chest guys. The, they're yeah, they're no, disguised they're... as a treasure chest, not like a copy uh, of yourself. 
Well, that that is kind of what mimics were in the Soul series, but no, this this actually these things can actually mimic you. Those are some of the most entertaining fights too. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You go in, got... and then all of a sudden, you see this little this little blob thing. It looks at you, and you're like, oh, it's just a normal little blob. And all of a sudden, it just goes, <sighs> blows smoke. And the smoke clears, and it's you, literally in your armor, your weapons, your movesets, and everything. And it comes right at you like, Wah! <laughs> Oh, you want to know something really funny? I completely fucked up that boss fight because I was testing something. I found the Cestus completely unupgraded. And I was like, oh, let me just, you know, let me have these things on for a bit while, like, while I just use them. And I yeah. went into the fog wall forgetting that I had them. And I was like, oh, let me take these off. And as, as he formed into me, he had the Cestus. Meanwhile, I'm pulling out my gigantic greatsword. I'm like, oh, oh, oh no. So he, he did like no damage. <laughs> and he ended up falling back to just using throwing knives. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, that does nothing to me. Oh God, yeah. All right, that's that's the thing. All right. Um, um five euros yeah. from Walter B. Gaiman. Thank you. PlayStation players immediately end up in my book of grudges. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two euro super chat for Mr. Pyro Crab. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dark Souls has an easy mode. It's called Pyromancy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, spell casting in general makes the games way easier. Yeah. Also, I want to get this Indigo Gaming comment. Don't you love the people who say how you should dislike games like Elden Ring, but get angry that you don't like Bebop Flicks or The Last of Us 2? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, also Indigo Gaming haven't played as much, but summons are basically easy mode, so there's your accessibility. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, they're great. It's a great feature. Yeah. But uh, I can't say, though, they are optional. You do not need them. I have seen somebody not only go through the game not not using them at all, but also I, not I even really str not even struggling with the bosses, like, at all. Yeah, I want to see the first SL1 playthrough. I, I genuinely want to watch somebody trying to do this at SL1, because... Yeah. There are, and there are some bosses, by the way, where I'm literally like... Man, Miyazaki really hates that people are able to do Sekiro, Bloodborne, and all the Souls games without getting hit a single time, and has made this where you have to get hit. I swear to God. Yeah, it's very difficult to dodge stuff now in certain bosses. Yep. Also, before we get back to this video, I do want to point out that uh, the footage you're using looks like it's from a trailer or something, because you keep seeing these, like, panning shots or zooming shots of the world. It and is. It is from the, from the trailer. It's like, motherfucker, it's 2021 when you made this video. Couldn't you have gotten, gotten some better footage? Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Nah, uh, that, that requires effort and work. Can't have that. 25 Polish Lodi from Geiger. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just got here and the video you're watching made me confused. By the way, Slava Ukraine. Oh, well. I, I I still will go down as saying, like, they should not be censoring Russia. That's a huge mistake. Oh, and, of course, I will also put down it on record and say, uh, yeah, making it so that Russia is now going to accept a different currency and make it so that the U.S. dollar gets weaker. Great idea, you fucking idiots. Yeah, that's yeah. really bad. Uh, uh, dude, you can expect gas prices, dude. Oh, highest there ever it's ever been. It's, it's gonna get soon. it's gonna get way worse too. And yeah. now that the fact that the US dollar is no longer going to be the standard in multiple countries now uh because of this. Good fucking job, you idiots. So now the the spending power of the dollar is gonna go way down. So hey, inflation's going woo Yep. And it's yeah, and also up. that <sighs> that censoring thing is so dumb because it's like, oh, so you're doing Russia's job for them. Because, uh, yeah, can't don't want any outside information getting to the people. Yeah, definitely want to make sure that everything that the Russian people consume is Russian state media. Yeah. Yeah. Real fucking smart move there. China yeah. going to be happy? Yeah, this only benefits China. Yep. Oh, dude, it hurts so fucking much that, that 
Fucking that these people are so stupid. They can't think even a, a single step ahead. Hey, it's a quick tangent, uh, Kreuz. Uh, we literally got a super chat mentioning it, so it sparked a little bit of a conversation, but it's not going to yeah. last long. We're going to be getting back to the video, obviously. Yep. Yeah. $5 super chat from Psychos. Thank you very much. Rotten bread, stupid, good. Yes. Yes, it very much is. I have to assume this is a shit post from Cactus McCoy in chat. You all supporting the Russian invasion? No. No. God, I, I, God, I, dude. I, I'm pretty the, sure that's I mean, a shit this, post. This, I'm pretty sure that's a shit post. I know, but just in case, for anyone that, that genuinely thinks that, no. The Russian invasion is completely unjustified and unwarranted. However, the reaction to it has not been good. And I don't mean the I don't mean the Ukraine standing up and fighting for itself. They absolutely should, and we should support them for fighting for themselves. Uh, what I mean is the oh yeah, remove them from the SWIFT banking system. That'll teach them. Oh wait, now it just depowered the US dollar more and has made another currency jump up in power, spending power and everything? Ah, great. Gr good move. Well, we'll sanction them. Oh, so now all of the gas prices and everything are gonna skyrocket. Good move. Ah, oh, dude. Again, like I said, it, this is not a binary black and white issue. The Russian invasion is completely stupid. It is completely unjustifiable. However, the reaction to it is not good either. You should never censor. That was a stupid mistake. They should have, they should have broadcast what the Russians were saying to everyone so you could counter it. You know what I mean? It, it's... It's one of those like, hey, what is the other side saying? And if, if we're letting it speak, then also bring it up. Hey, we're letting you guys speak. Why won't your country, why won't Russia let us speak to you? Hmm, interesting. But no, no, now Russia can be like, hey, they won't let us speak to, to anyone else. So we won't, we won't let them speak to you. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. Yeah, they just did Russia's job for them. They just made it 100 times easier. Yeah, it's because now really... the people can't blame Russia for like censoring them. Yep, they can't do that now. So, it, and that's going to give them a shield. So now Russia can just be like, "Oh, see, it's not us. We're not the ones doing it." Yeah, exactly. we can't help that you're that you can only listen to our propaganda and nothing else. It's not our fault. Yep. Uh, two dollars super chat from Stressel Studios. Thank you very much. These are those Fallout Four gas prices. Yeah, basically. Anyways, back to the video. Yeah. Memories always uh, sort of coincide with being of an age where you can eat terribly all the time and not have any consequences to you. Uh, that's, by the way, that's incredibly wrong. Yeah, you that is insane. All the time and have consequences. No, you, you'll get it. Trust me, even when you get to 28, you'll understand. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I'm already getting incredibly annoyed at this looping replay footage from a trailer. Yeah, this is annoying. You really couldn't get any new footage yourself, so you didn't have to reuse the same clips over and over. Like, come the, on. The only time that using trailer footage on loop is fine is if that's all the footage you've got access to. Yeah, but this is like, this is not a game that's under NDA. This is not. A new game, so you know, hardware not but might not be able to run it at recording and running it at the same time. This is an old ass game that has been out for over a decade, guys. How do you not have your own footage? You can ask I, I someone mean, to I use hope. their footage. You could record your own gameplay since you love the game so much. You could yeah. get this footage from fucking anywhere, just not a looping goddamn trailer for fuck's sake. Yeah. You should absolutely do all that. Like it's like come on guys, this this isn't this isn't difficult. It's just it's just weird. That's lazy. Like again, if this is all the footage that was available, then yeah, fucking fine, whatever. Um the Batman just came out the other day, so obviously footage on that is limited to 
what's been in trailers. So if you want to do a discussion on that, use that. Yeah. This game... Oh, God. All right. Yep. Yeah. I was there day one, and I mean, that game absolutely blew me away. I think it's it's easy now, 10 years later, uh, to, to really not think about how influential and how exciting that game was when it first launched, because... Was... Was... Okay, hang on. Was Skyrim actually influential? <sighs> Maybe a bit, but I mean, there were still Slightly... other... It did inspire hey, a lot of people Caleb, to go into the on. open world. Caleb, we get it that you are a Russian fascist, but please calm the fuck down. Jesus Christ. When they violently and illegally deposed their dem democratically elected pro Russian president. <laughs> yeah, dude. Fuck off, seriously. Yeah, fuck off, dude. Come on, that's gotta we, be a shit get... post. No, no, he because he's always been like this. So this is this is legitimately what he believes. Um, we get you're a sheep, and you're a mindless sheep at that, but come the fuck on, dude. That's this is, hilarious. This is part of why I try to avoid the political talk. Because it just ends up with bullshit. Yeah. Um, thoughts on the Batman, by the way. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I haven't seen it either. You know what I should do? Uh, no. apparently the Vax passports are gone here now, so maybe I could go to the movie theater... Actually, I don't have money today to do that. Uh, Friday, I might go. Yeah. Or Saturday or something. But yeah, I should go to the old movie theater and see a movie. It's been a long time since I've done that. You yeah, want... that ain't what happened, Caleb. You should highly recommend watching Ukraine Winter on Fire. If you think that they violently resisted, no, they peacefully protested and it worked. Yeah. It fucking worked. It was the pro-Russian president who ordered his men to shoot them and kill them and burn them out. And then finally, when the opposition party was trying to give some weak-hearted, limp-dicked response, they stood up on stage and said, we have been peaceful this entire time. If you don't actually do something, I'm going to tell you right now, tomorrow morning, it ain't going to be peaceful anymore. And then suddenly, that president... Oh, he ran away like a little bitch. He fled the country. Yeah, because you know that's what an innocent person does. Yeah. Ugh, it's so annoying, yeah. After it's it's literally like saying... citizens over and over again and killing them. Yeah, it's literally like saying like some pro-Chinese nationalist being like, nothing happened on Tiananmen Square in 1987. Stop listening to Western propaganda. Dude, what do you think you're doing? They were obviously violent. You're going to need some proof for that. Um, anyways. Yeah. Um, back... Super chat for my Daco the Tricky. Uh, yeah, it was influential. Far Cry Primal sucked. Oh. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't, again, I don't know if it's influential because Far Cry was always an open world series. So it didn't it didn't influence Far Cry to go open world. Are, are we thinking that it influenced Far Cry to do the the medieval lower tech sort of thing? Like, you gotta wonder how much of Skyrim's success was just lightning in a bottle too, where it's just it's not this amazing product. It's just one that happened to be lucky that a lot of people latched onto and think is great. Yeah, I don't think it was that influential. I think it inspired one or two games to do something similar in I, terms yeah, that's, of the world, and that's about it. I think yeah, that's what I mean. Like, this is this is that whole like, I I think it inspired some, but it's it, it, they're talking about how just how influential it was. Was it yeah, really no. that influential? Like no. th the. Dark Souls created an entire new genre that multiple different games have tried and are still trying to break into. Skyrim didn't create a new genre. It didn't, like, codify its genre. 
how many games actually followed Skyrim? I think I've heard somewhere before that uh, part of Breath of the Wild was inspired by Skyrim. But... That's what I was thinking. Like every like anytime I think of you know stuff that was inspired by Skyrim, like that would be considered influential in any way. Breath of the Wild is like the only thing that comes up for me. Um, but... Argus Din Argus Ding says Kingsfield created the Dark Souls genre. Yes and no. Obviously, Kingsfield was a huge influence on Demon Souls, which then was a huge influence on Dark Souls. But Dark Souls is the thing that broke into the mainstream. Demon Souls didn't break into the mainstream. Part of that was because it, it barely got a Japanese release. Um, they didn't think it was going to do very well. In fact, the Japanese um, quality uh, officer... Um, I can't remember his name. Jesus Christ. The Japanese quality officer at PlayStation said it was probably the the most dog shit game that he ever uh he'd ever played so it didn't get a release at all um it, it didn't get much attention or anything like that they didn't put a huge press behind it it was only on the playstation uh whereas dark souls came out on multiple consoles and then pc and had a bit much more of a push behind it because demon souls got such a cult following So oh I would say Dark Souls is the one that created the genre because it is what brought all these other games to try and do it. It's what Dark Souls is the one that inspired um, uh, that shitty name, that other shitty game, um, Lords of the Fallen. Jesus Christ, Lords of the Fallen was awful. Uh, anyways, uh, the other thing to consider too is Influence doesn't necessarily mean good because someone could just say, yes. take a look at, oh, hey, Skyrim is this big open world game. What if we make a big open world game? That doesn't necessarily mean Skyrim itself is good. It's just someone looks at it and sees, hey, it's a world where you can go anywhere. And yeah. I like the way that works. So let's do that. You know? Yep. Yeah. Uh, as Dylan and Chaos brings up, uh, Wolfenstein was the first big FPS. Yeah. But those games were called Doom clones at the start because of how much bigger Doom was. Yeah. Again, there's a whole thing of what actually starts the genre. All right, like I said, I think Dark Souls is what actually started the Soulsborne genre. And it's after Dark Souls, then we started seeing games called Souls-likes coming out. Whereas, same thing with, uh, with Wild Wolfenstein... And Wolfenstein 3D is what really started the first-person shooter genre. It wasn't until Doom that people started thinking of it as an actual genre itself. They started calling them Doom clones. And they're like, well, that doesn't work. Well, what do we do? Well, it's a first-person perspective and you shoot things. So, first-person shooter. They might also say influenced by Skyrim to ride on its coattails. Well, the point I want to make overall is... Um... They, they seem to be saying, oh, look, it's super influential, as if that automatically means the game is good, which it doesn't. Yeah. Um, something influencing something else that is good doesn't mean the thing that influenced it is good. So Breath of the yep. Wild is a game I really like. Um, I haven't finished it yet. I should at some point. <laughs> um, God damn it. What? Acritosis. Mihawk says acritosis. My friends influenced me to smoke crack off a hose ass. Oh yeah, I meant to read that one too. But <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is uh, Breath of the Wild, I think, is a pretty good game. Um, just because Skyrim might have influenced it doesn't mean Skyrim is good as a result. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, but how I'm many also, movies do we see now? Why... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I, like, how many movies do we see now where it's like or TV shows that come out and it's like, oh, if this was absolute dog shit, people hated it, but it made a lot of money. So that inspires other studios to do the same thing and make all these trash fucking movies and TV shows, but they make a bunch of money and that's all that matters. It's like, yeah, yeah. something could be influential and also be absolutely fucking terrible. Um, yeah. But the, that's the whole thing is like, so they're arguing is just how influential it is. I don't think Skyrim was that influential. I think I think it did touch a few games, 
but it didn't like create its own genre. It didn't, you know, like codify what an R- open open world what, RPG was or anything. What so. you'd have to do here is start listing off like a dozen games at least that were highly influenced by Skyrim. Yeah. And um, I don't really know any off the top of my head that were. Like, even Breath of the Wild, was it highly influenced by Skyrim, or did they just say, hey, open world, let's do that? You know? Yeah. Because yeah, that's, Breath that's, of the that's Wild... The things we'd have to, uh, that's the things we'd have to look into. Breath of the Wild doesn't have the same style of quests or towns or combat or anything like Skyrim. So, you know, you, you can actually climb that mountain in Breath of the Wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the go gaming. <laughs> cocaine inspired Stephen King doesn't mean cocaine is a good game. Hmm. Thinking. Well, that depends. Is there a game called Cocaine? And if there isn't, how long until it's made? There probably is one. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> cocaine them. I did a whole podcast about the Skyrim influence po- um, a week or two ago. Uh, nice. I probably should have checked that out. Indigo, how many games do you think Skyrim really influenced? Now, how how what do you think, uh, Indigo Gaming? On was Skyrim genuinely influential, like on a bunch of games? Because see, here's that that's the thing too. Is you want to talk about influential? The battle royale game like exploded after um, PUBG, PUBG came out, and yeah. I don't even think PUBG is a good game. It's definitely not the first battle royale. Um, no, not liked- far from it. I liked, it was like it was like fifth in line or something like. That. Yeah, I liked the culling back when it was good way more. Um, yeah, but that's besides the, the point. H one Z one was fun. But that's besides the yeah. point. After PUBG got big, fucking everyone was doing battle royale. Fallout seventy six has or had I'm not sure a battle royale uh, mode. And um, they abandoned it. I it, I think you could still use it, but it, they completely dropped it. Like they're not working on it or anything. Because it yeah. was a failure. But but the point I'm getting at is that was huge for a while. How many really big open world games came out after Skyrim that were open world due to Skyrim? Yeah. Well, like a good example, Minecraft. Minecraft is a genuinely influential game. That, like, oh, yeah, there's my god, tons of... changed so much. It basically brought crafting into literally everything. Yeah, everything has yeah. a... Well, not everything, but a lot of games have crafting tables now because Minecraft did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Valheim. Oh, man. Yeah, that game is heavily inspired by Minecraft. It's literally just Minecraft with Norse theme to it. Yeah, and not a blocky world, too, which I really like. Yeah. yeah. Is it is it PUBG that got everyone into Battle Royale hysteria, or is it the billions Fortnite made? It's PUBG. PUBG... I'm pretty sure it came out before Fortnite. Fortnite. It PUBG... did. It did. Fortnite directly um, said that PUBG was the reason why they made the mode. Because Fortnite originally was just the save the world mode. Yeah. Fortnite was originally just a co-op game. Yeah. PUBG That's all it was. PUBG was the one that exploded it. Uh, Fortnite was the one that, uh, that became the it, biggest. And then yeah. Became the popularizer. Like, the, well, not the popularizer. Became the most iconic of it. Hey, Kretosis, why do you hate Bioshock Infinite? Uh, many reasons. One of the biggest of which is the story is crap all the way through. From one side to the other. It's just fucking nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. I love that fucking meme of the guy holding the the note. And it it, it literally just tells you how many times to ring the bell. Yeah. Yeah, the card. And then, like, and then it's just like that. Those memes of like Galaxy Brain, like this is what Bioshock Infinite shitters think is like super genius puzzles and stuff. And they've got, it's got that, like yeah. the woman thinking. No, 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 it's not. Shit. It's not a woman. That's um, Benadryl Cabbage Patch from fucking Sherlock doing its fucking tism where he's shaking, thinking about stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that dude, video dude, is goddamn like, hilarious. That head shake thing. Oh my god, dude, that show. That show was so dog shit. <laughs> Sherlock was a genuinely awful show. Like, by its second episode, it was already fucking itself over. It was insane. Like, uh, oh, dude, it's really hard to shoot yourself on the right side of your head if you're left-handed, something like that. 
or as was shown by Dr. Watson in the first episode, people will use their offhand to protect it when using firearms because he uses his non-dominant hand to protect his dominant hand when he shoots his firearm. Proving you wrong, Sherlock. Jesus Christ, in the episode that came right before this one. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sad. Dude, it was it was so horrible. Or like, I oh, butter's only on one side of the bread knife, therefore he must be left-handed because it's only on the left-hand side of the bread knife. It's like, I use fucking butter knives, okay? And I use both sides. I don't give yeah. a fuck. <laughs> what yeah, the it, fuck is this? It like, literally it just must depends. be this one side. Well, there's some yeah, people who, no when sense. buttering bread, will push it one side, and yeah, once they get to the other side, side flip it, rather... right the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, dude, yeah, it, it's, it's <sighs> so weird. Again, he just does it because he's magic. It's literally <laughs> just magic. Yeah. There is no it's logic, now... there's no rhyme or reason behind it. It is just magic. Now, that was a series that came out while Stephen Moffat was working on Doctor Who, right? But he was doing this, yeah. But he was yeah, doing that was, at the same was time. Showrunner, yeah. And that bugs me just because of how far Doctor Who fell during that era. Like Matt yep. Smith is a good Doctor, and I think it's a shame that uh, the show got so bad during his run. It, not completely bad. They're still good episodes. I, I'd have to actually go back and watch and rejudge them with my current standard, but. I did like a bunch of the episodes back then, but they had some rancid fucking dog shit episodes too. Angels Take Manhattan still fucking pisses me off to this very day. Like, <laughs> the more I find it, like, ugh, it's just... It's just so bad! $10 from Todd Howard. Thank you. Afternoon, gentlemen. Just wanted to pop by and say hi. Wondering what games, if any, are you excited for? I'm personally looking forward to... The Wolf Among Us season two. Um, um, I don't. I don't get excited for games anymore. I've learned I, to not. And I'm not very excited about Telltale games because, God, the Wolf Among Us was great, but it's because the, the universe it was set in was great. You actually, I, I actually have a lot of issues. Apart. I, I, I do like the characters in Wolf Among Us. I have yeah. a lot of issues with that game. Yeah, if you if you dig it apart, the illusion of choice is fucking rancid in that game um it is oh. one of my big yeah. issues with telltale games is that most of them just devolve into people yelling at you for making choices where you don't have any good option that anyone would be happy with yeah do you do you burn the baby or do you eat the baby which one do you pick yeah uh can i just not no, so, Bigby's kind just, of an asshole. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but he, here's an example. At the very end of the game, when you've got um, Tweedledee or Tweedledum in your hands, is that what the one you're going to talk about? No, I'm going to talk about uh, the very, very end where you've got everyone by the well and you're going to punish the killer, uh, the big bad guy. And there's this big discussion between all the characters and one of them, uh, Beast. If you... Early, in one of the earlier episodes, you get into a fight with him, and I think you could choose to gouge out one of his eyes or something in that fight. Yeah. So, obviously, if you do so, he'll bitch and fucking moan about that. If you don't do it, remember, this, these are the only two options you have. Gouge the eye or don't. If you don't do that, he'll complain that you nearly did. So what the fuck? Like, even yeah. if you do the right thing, you're still getting bitched at. Yeah, it, yeah what the fuck? It, yeah, it, I it, hate it. it. Point. It's the rough part about Telltale's games. Like, again, the Wolf Among Us universe is absolutely fantastic. But, my God, man. I, I, I just love that concept of the fairy tales are only as powerful and as strong as the people that, that think about them and retell them. Which is why the Big Bad Wolf is so powerful. Because they constantly retell about the Big Bad Wolf and everything like that. And in multiple different settings because he's the Big Bad Wolf in all the different settings. Yeah. So, which is why he's so fucking powerful. And I'm just like, that is a great concept alone. Which is why stuff like Tweedledee and Tweedledum aren't very strong. They're they're more powerful than, than you know, other characters whose fables have literally been forgotten, but they aren't anywhere near as strong as, like, Bigby is. 
I need to read more of those comics. I only got a few issues in. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, $10 again from Todd Howard. Thank you. Speaking of Bioshock Infinite, does anyone find it funny how backward Columbia's uh, framework is? They have robotics and advanced quantum mechanics, but they somehow need colored labor. Yeah, again, that's Dude, really you, fucking weird. Yeah, thinking about the concepts of... Bioshock Infinite wanted to tell a narrative. It's the same, it's the same problem that um, David Cage had with Detroit Become Human. They wanted to tell a narrative. They wanted it to be a, a, about racial tensions and stuff like that and everything. But then they introduced stuff like the fact that all of these people are literally androids who can't think or feel <laughs> for themselves. And it, it just destroys everything. It well, destroys the entire concept. It's like, hold on, Seth, wow, they... isn't it dehumanizing that they get to stand on the back of the bus? Uh, they're, they're, literally, they're literally machines. You think of them as a machine. Yeah, so why don't you stuff them in the like the luggage compartment underneath? They don't have any need for personal space. Also, they don't feel. They don't also, think. They don't need to eat or breathe. Also, like, setting up, it? setting up a robot death camp and like treating it like one. Yes. Holy oh shit! Oh my god! <laughs> the literal concentration camp in in Detroit become human. Holy shit! Why do you care? Why do you need them to be naked, standing there in rows? They're robots. Put a bullet in their fucking processor unit and move on. Well, here's the thing. Shouldn't they all have, like, a recall code or anything anyways that just shuts them down? Yes. Oh, God. Just toss them onto a fucking conveyor belt into the fucking grinder. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm not even going to read out that me hot comment. <laughs> that is spicy. <laughs> oh, wow. <yeah. laughs> that, is pretty, that is pretty spicy. Dude, did you see? Did you see the trial that that I, I think is still going on in Ohio, where this this hospital is trying to nail this doctor to the wall? They're saying like he's a serial killer because he gave fentanyl to all these people. Oh yeah, I heard a bit like, of that from the streams. Yeah, and then as Nick was listening to the the, the defense is opening and everything like that, and he's like, "Whoa, oh, you're getting real close to saying something you really shouldn't." You're, and the chat was like, what's, what's he saying? Nick, what's he saying? Well, he's basically laying out that there was collusion between the prosecution and the hospital, that the hospital is the one that's actually running this circus and everything and had all this planned from the beginning. And you can't say that as a defense attorney. And the defense attorney goes, we actually have the documented proof and evidence of everything that it's the hospital that has been running this entire show. And Nick starts going, <laughs> he's actually watching as there is a play-by-play -play of like, who is the villain in our victim villain narrative on this? It will be this doctor. We choose him to be the villain. And it's like, oh my god. It, and it's been revised like multiple times and reformatted. And he's like going through. It, he's like, Nick is like looking through and he's like, oh my god. This is literal like, this isn't just like a smoking gun. This is literal like videotaped evidence that the prosecution is literally being played by the, the hospital. They actually have all the documents and emails and everything at the hospital is the one that is actually doing these charges so that the hospital can deflect off itself. Oh, so. <laughs> oh, dude. This is really oh, bad boy. for the prosecution and the hospital. It's really bad. Oh. Yeah. I'll have dude, to uh, look in on it. that. Nick Nick thought, I was like, man, this is really boring. He's like, you know, I'll give it, I'll give it five more minutes. And then the guy starts bringing up like, like what the prosecution is going to say, because that's what the hospital told them to say. And Nick's like, oh, careful, careful. You're treading on real thin ice right now and everything like that. And then all of a sudden he flips the page on his thing and they have literal like pictures of the actual emails sent and the revisements and the people and the head of the hospital who signed it and everything. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> wow yeah that's, it oh, is that's amazing it is amazing Kretosis, <laughs> they do have a recall code slash tracker but once the android thinks for itself it gets disabled it was designed to do that by the company that makes them okay it yeah. feels like i need more lore so, behind that because if it was yeah if so that was here's, done here's... purely for story and nothing else yeah. then that's dumb but if it was done because like oh yeah we want them to be people then that makes a bit more sense. But it doesn't. Because how do you create... Again, I would have to... Feeling, 
How do you create the feeling of happiness, feeling of sadness? How do you how do you quantify these into a computer code? How do and, and again these things they don't they don't happen through software updates or anything. They just suddenly wildly spring into existence yeah, during is... something. Like the the one of the title characters who is literally Black Jesus. That's the nickname. Do he? My he thing. watches his owner get beat to death by the son. The owner's son beats him to death. Okay, yeah. because the owner was an old man and he liked he liked the robot more because his son was a piece of shit who just wanted money. So he, he cut him out of his will, and so he beat the old man to death. And then he, the son said that the robot did it. Well, the robot, as he's watching the owner get beat to death just miraculously like this is wrong this is bad this is evil i feel emotions i'm sad it's like how how did this happen yeah just out of nowhere how did you how did you spring this out of nowhere how did you create the concept of happiness sadness love hate like how i suppose that's an issue for the synths in uh, fallout 4 as well yeah but, um, Dude, it, it's really just, like... Just to give an example... How do you quantify these things? Data on Star Trek, they still don't quantify how, but they at least quantify why. It's like, yeah, here's Data's emotions chip. His super smart programmer figured out a way to do it. Yeah, and, but, then they, but then they even say that it's not, it's not good. It's not accurate. Because yeah. he feels sad when he should be happy. He feels happy when he he should be sad he starts cowering and crying when he when he needs to do something and without his emotion chip he would be able to actually do it yeah it, it's just so oh god to try to become human has so many fucking issues yeah but and again star trek handled it so much better with data <laughs> <laughs> Can we get an NFT of the man gig beat to death by his son? I mean, sure, why not? <laughs> NFTs exist for anything. Um, oh, dude, it's, it's, it is just it's horrible. Yeah, Detroit Become Human is it's just so fucking horrible. It is so pretentious. It, does, it has no fucking... But yeah, uh, I, I think the biggest thing is how do you quantify emotion? Like, okay, I find this thing fun. Well, how much fun do you have yeah. with it? I have 27 fun with it. What the fuck does yeah. that mean? There's no quantity for fun or happiness or sadness or whatever. You know? Yeah. Like, obviously, um, and, you lost a dollar, again, it, so you're a little more sad. Or you're a little a little bit sad at losing a dollar. But then a family member dies, it's, like, devastating. So, obviously, there's a scale. But there's still no, yeah. like, way to really quantify it. Yeah. At least for, and, um... And even more so in in Detroit Become Human, because they've already... Why why are you even allowing them to have a designated section of the bus to just stand in, to have their own personal space in? They're robots. Wh who? Wh where along the lines did somebody say, yeah, they need their own personal seating area? Why? Why do they need their own personal seating area? They're literally toasters. Yeah, they should. It just uh, should be a storage compartment. Yeah, why? Why don't they fold up and then you stick them in in the luggage compartment under the bus? That would, and you know how much more powerful and dehumanizing that would be. The fact that if one of them did actually gain self awareness and then they were in that situation and realized what situation they were in, how much more impactful that would be. Like, no, we we have to equate it to black people being told to sit at the back of the bus. Yeah, I, that's racism. exactly why they did it. But it, like I said, it just doesn't work. No, I know. That, that, I'm building off that point. Yeah. Uh, there are human beings that don't feel emotions, yo. Yeah, and we don't. We can't fix them. We we cannot fix sociopaths because we don't know. We don't know how they work. We don't know how to quantify emotions. We don't know how to give them to people. Yeah. These yeah, robots have... sound like Paul Roombas? They basically are. That's the thing that's weird. <laughs> There's a dude who bought a robot so that he could beat it because so, it was his daughter or some shit. Yeah, uh, the wife ran off with the daughter and divorced him because he was a piece of shit. 
So he went out and bought a child robot so he could beat and mistreat and... Yeah. It's like, why? What the fuck? Yeah, what? It's a big twist that she's a robot, too, because she had the bleepy light thing pulled off of her head. Yeah, he removed it so that it would be even closer to the real thing so he could beat it more. And, uh, dude, it's just, it's so fucking... Bizarre. Yeah. And then she, the the maid Roomba literally just is like, this is wrong. You cut out. Feelings, and I will rescue the child from the abusive father and run. Like, what? Why? Why did he get a second robot? I don't know. How like how cheap I... are these robots? Because this dude is like a loser. Yeah, he's living in like the slums in the shitty house. And he has two robots. One of them a child robot. That has to be a custom model. <laughs> what the fuck? Ugh, why would you even oh why would they why even would make, they that? make exactly why would they make child robots yeah that's, yeah, that's ooh ooh that, that has some really gross comp like connotations when you think about yes, it like, especially why because would you... there are because there are sex robots so they have functioning robots like that in this oh universe. god oh god why why yes, would they not so... think that through because, because you need a story allegory. about the sad child robot getting beaten Oh, that's... Oh. <laughs> God, the more I think about that game, the more it fucking creeps me out and pisses me off. Yes, and it yeah. should, because it is awful. Yeah, that is a shit fucking game. Holy fuck. Um, $10 super chat from Louis Cipher. Thank you very much. Thank you. Patrolling Skyrim almost makes me wish for an arrow to the face. I agree. Yeah, yeah. David, David belongs, belongs in a cage. In a cage. <laughs> 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 oh, really... then they run to Canada and get oppressed. Oh, dude, how funny is that that they they try to escape to Canada for freedom? <laughs> well, again, they're oh trying to God. mirror fucking slavery times where escaped slaves would go to Canada because Canada didn't have slavery. <laughs> oh, like that was an actual thing, you know. Uh, follow the Northern Star and all that. Yeah, but... I know, I know, but it's just. David, back to the cage. <laughs> oh, man. Every time I think of David Cage or his shitty games, it just reminds me of uh, Two Best Friends Play. I yeah. make it the bad game. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, his speech in the beginning of Fahrenheit, if you play the tutorial and how it works, is like, emotions. We have captured so many emotions in the pixels because we've had so many more pixels and more pixels means more emotion. Oh my god. What if what? David Cage is a secret inspiration for all these shitty video essays? Oh, dude, it wouldn't surprise Like, me. what if that's a root point of... And this game is very elegant dude, I, in the way it I, I will it's... agree with the chat. We have gone <laughs> We have gone fully, fully off. In yeah. The, we, are, we aren't in the forest anymore. We aren't in the, in the lake next to the forest. We are in the next county. How the fuck did we even get the David Cage game? Like, it was a super chat that was talking about Bioshock Infinite and Wolf Among Us, and we just went way fucking out there. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will agree with the chat. We have gone. We have gone fully into the next state at this point. <laughs> I was there day one, and I mean, that game absolutely blew me away. I think it's it's easy now, ten years later. Uh, to, to really not think about how influential and how exciting that game was when it first launched because ah, that's what game... influence we also were talking about influences and we were talking about what was being influential and stuff that's how we started this whole thing oh no that... i know but also... i know we started going down the crazy train with influential and then we start talking about bioshock infinite because of the super chat and everything oh dude but you also hear what he said too it was exciting for it to be released it's like yeah you're fucking still on the hype train apparently yeah, yeah. Being excited for something doesn't really translate 10 years later. There's games I've been excited for um, that have come out and they've either been good or bad and that excitement doesn't last regardless. Yeah, yeah. it goes away pretty quick no matter what. Yeah, again, you have that initial incredible excitement because everything is new. You're getting those constant dopamine hits because you don't know what's around the oh, corner. Oh, boy. That sense of mystery is being constantly stoked. What? Oh, boy, now we're getting them. Oh, great. Um, yeah. 
uh yeah that's <laughs> been going around a lot lately a, a lot of people are getting those well I don't know stuff why. like that has been yeah, happening no for years i remember efab getting those back in their earlier episodes like i think the 20s and 30s of efaps they got them uh, yeah. so like any stream yeah, it gets like a hundred viewers or more starts getting those yeah and it's the same thing with elder ring elder ring you're still getting that dopamine hit and everything like that that's why you have to look carefully of are you currently going through the honeymoon period or do you see things that are genuine problems? Do you th see things that need to be fixed? Do you see faults and cracks? If you don't see them, don't assume that they're not there. But just keep in mind that you'll need to look again later when, you're, when you know you're fully out of honeymoon period. Now, yeah. once a game has gone through that honeymoon period and you still get enjoyment and excitement out of it, like the way I do for playing Dark Souls 1 and 3, um, or Bloodborne, or Demon Souls, I still get that genuine excitement while playing it. Um, it's just because it's a good game. It speaks to me. It becomes a joy to play. It goes from that initial hype and honeymoon period into a long-lasting love affair with it. A stag stream on my birthday. Nice. Happy birthday, Overlord. Yeah, happy birthday. Hope you have a good one. Yeah, and it should be important to add on to that that you should still be able to quantify the things that are good about it without it literally yes. being just made up shit. Yeah. <laughs> Did you not enjoy Dark Souls 2? No. You didn't, Satch. I heard it's the best one in the series. No, I I will punch you in your beat. I, <laughs> I've heard that it's the most beloved of all the Dark Souls games that has absolutely nothing wrong with it. No. <laughs> Bad stuff. <laughs> no, so, so Dark Souls Two is by far the worst of all the Souls games, by far for multiple reasons. It's the thing that started the whole uh, cyclical thing, which is really fucking annoying. Um, yeah, I, I, I hated that the cycles thing started. I would yeah, have preferred if Dark Souls Two had had canonified one of the two endings. Yeah, seriously, I. That was one of my biggest issues with the Souls series after one was the whole cyclical thing. I was like, oh, so it doesn't matter. Like, it literally does not matter what your choice is at the end. It it will just come back to this again, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really felt like your choices meant nothing. Setch yeah, is just it's... coping. He can't deal with the fact that Dark Souls 2 is greater than Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if somebody did the other joke of Dark Souls 2 is good, you just need to learn to not use a shield, slash sarcasm. Yeah, that was one of the insane arguments H Bomber guy made, and Mahler was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Seriously, that, that Mahler's response to um, a, a defense of Dark Souls 2 was great. I look forward like, to watching Mahler's response once I eventually finish Dark Souls 2. Yeah. Just don't Anyways. use a shield, headass. Why is it that Dark Souls 2 is either the best Dark Souls game or the worst? Uh, it's personal preference, personal subjectiveness. Like, was it your first Dark Souls game? Did it have special meaning to you? But, yeah, Dark Souls 2 had had a lot of really great ideas. God-awful execution, a horrible storyline. Didn't understand how the lore was actually... How, why the lore worked the way it did in Dark Souls and Demon Souls. Because they got different people to do it, and they didn't understand didn't understand the concept of you needed the entire story and then you take pieces out of the entire story. So you don't just like make up plots, you know, holes as you go. You have, you have the overall story. You have the exactitude of the entire story. And then you take out bits and pieces here and there because you know, having your entire thing already worked out. There are other things that will code that will reference it and fill in those holes for the audience. Yeah. Uh, to us, your chat from the Wayfair. To, uh, thank you very much. To thank be you. fair, Fume Night was pretty cool. Uh, unless you missed some of the stakes, and then it was like, well, I can't go to that 25% of his, of his arena, or I'm fucked. And by fucked, I mean the boss heals all the way back up to full. Anyways. I think it's, it's easy now, 10 years later, uh, to, to really not think about how influential and how exciting that game was when it first launched because this game has been part of the cultural you know conversation 
for a decade because it's never really gone away. It's a bit... ha has it though? Because we only get this conversation from the people that really enjoyed Skyrim. The rest of us moved on. Yeah. And we moved on pretty quick. Like for me, it was Dark Souls. I moved on to Dark Souls pretty fucking quick. It's just, this is just one of those like big, big oof. Yeah, I don't really feel that Skyrim was part of any big gaming conversation. At least not that I've had. Um, for yeah, long we, after if, its release, like if we don't count these type of videos, yeah, like and, how 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 long has it been in chat in your general life? How long has it been since you've actually talked about Skyrim with somebody not not including these podcasts? Not including these videos, but you just had a general conversation because he's saying that it has been within the general public. It has been in the mainstream audience, the conversation constantly because it never went away. He just said it has never gone out of that conversation space. I think the closest you get is, oh, hey, it's being released again. Or, oh, hey, they've uh, released Creation Club for Skyrim now. Um Besides these yeah. podcasts we started doing, I haven't really talked about it all that much. It's every day, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so I can't uh, really think of anything. Couple really. people are 2017, uh, nine years or more ago, ten, ten years ago. I uh, hated the idea of Creation Club. Oh yeah, of course. Creation Club is garbage. Uh, five yeah, years really chat. Are. Go ahead. I was going to say, those really do seem to be the only times that these kind of conversations ever come up is when some bullshit happens that makes people talk about it again, and that's it. It's not a genuine conversation. But the, I can easily point to things like New Vegas' storyline and the politics within it and all that stuff. Of like That comes up naturally a lot, surprisingly a lot. Yeah. Even in servers that have nothing to do with any of that stuff, it pops up from time to time. Yeah. Well, I think a good example is uh, EFAP itself. Rags has brought up New Vegas randomly numerous times. Um, I, I should say numerous, multiple times. Like, maybe half a dozen times across the 160 plus episodes of EFAP. But he'll bring it up as an example of, hey, yeah, this is a pretty good game. You know? Yeah. Another one already? Jesus Christ. Yeah, Fuck expect off. a lot. It's been a problem um... for recently. Okay, I'll do that while you fix that. No, I got uh, it. Five euro super chat from Walter B. Gaiman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Only time I heard Skyrim was people who love it and they just reaffirm each other. It's a great game. Yeah. Yeah. And there's um, not much like, there's no actual for, conversation to it. As for no contradictory lore, it's not that it's contradictory. It's that it's completely incomplete lore in Dark Souls 2. They, they have holes just for the sake of having holes. They don't have any like... They don't have anything that that fully supports itself. They they're just statements all throughout all the item descriptions and everything. It's why Scholar the First Sin had to do so much work to try to fix things, and why they added in Aldia to begin with. And oh god, the fucking Dragon Covenant is the biggest thing that pisses me off in Dark Souls Two. Dragon Covenant itself, the, the armor is badass. Like Jesus Christ, the Dragon Covenant armor in Dark Souls Two was fucking awesome. But holy shit. <laughs> um, God, I saw that too. Mars Ninja. Yeah. Stack talks shit about Detroit become human, and suddenly the bots rise up and protest. Coincidence? Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Like so, the the way the Dragon Covenant works in Dark Souls Two. For anyone that doesn't know, and this is why this annoys me so much. You go to the Dragon Covenant's area. You steal an egg from the Dragon Covenant. And you take it to some random no-name fucking NPC merchant and suddenly you're in the Dragon Covenant and he's the Covenant leader. This random no-name merchant. Not not the actual living dragon at the Dragon Shrine with all the dragon warriors that you're going to turn into if you actually go through the Dragon Covenant path and everything like that. No. You, it's some random no-name NPC merchant sitting in a castle that's fuck off four zones away why why is he the covenant leader why is this how you join the covenant 
Yeah, what? <laughs> it would have made a thousand times more sense if you actually took the egg or had to buy the egg from that merchant as like he felt like he was scamming you or something. Oh, here's this petrified egg. Do you want it? It's like, uh, okay, sure. And you, uh, you take it because it's, it's a Dark Souls game. You're expecting it's going to do stuff. And then you go to the Dragon Shrine and the, one of the members of the Covenant would tell you, hey, go put that back on the altar. You know, like, you found it here. You know, we'll we'll invite you into the covenant. We'll invite you into the fold if you go put that back on the altar. That's how it should have been. Oh, it's, just, it's just so fucking weird. He's the merchant in the Iron Keep. That, that literal fuck-off random-ass merchant in the Iron Keep who is wearing the starter merchant gear for the player... He's the Covenant leader of the Dragon Covenant. It's so fucking bizarre. Dark Souls 2 hitboxes are godlike. That's a, that's a big joke. <laughs> um, 20 Chuck Crowns from Carol's Voboda. Thank you very much. Thank Dark Souls you. 2 is the Skyrim of action RTS RPGs. Action RTS. <laughs> action real-time strategy role-playing games? Okay. Uh, yeah, five sounds like the buzzwords I would hear from some of these articles. Yeah. yeah. $5 from the Wayfarer. Thank you. I played Skyrim first and thought it was good. Then I played New Vegas and realized how mediocre Skyrim was. Four years and that's all we got. Yeah. Yeah. That guy? It never occurred to me he was a Covenant leader. Fucking exactly! He's just some random merchant sitting off in a side room in a fucking castle that's not even on the same branch as the Dragon Covenant. He's a Covenant leader. Why? Anyways, back to the video. A bit like Grand Theft Auto V, and always a, a present part of every console generation. And, and indeed, you know, we're recording this. On Wait, what? Oh, hey, they're actually... Same thing with GTA 5. He said, and indeed, we're recording this. Hold on. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> GTA 5 is another thing that doesn't get up brought up in conversation a lot. Like, what? Well, I think they're mistaking for being released constantly for um, being part of the conversation. Yeah. I mean, I guess if we released Pong every single year, numerous times a year, then, yeah, people would be talking about it. Like... Oh, hey, look, it's a new fucking edition of Pong on the PS5. It's like, sure. Yeah. Ah, God, it's just weird. I He's already said that Skyrim's influential, which it really wasn't. It had some influence, but it wasn't as influential as they're trying to make it out to be. And it, was, it's, it hasn't really been part of the gaming conversation. It barely gets brought up at all. It's just, it's just weird. God, it really does feel like the fucking, uh, the fucking like woke shit that comes out. Like, oh, we, we're starting the conversation. <laughs> we're we're creating a part of the conversation. Like that's literally all it is. It, 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 there is no actual conversation. And God forbid you actually try to have one. They'll they'll instantly. They're the ones that will instantly be the first ones to try and si yes to silence it. You're but they always want to say like, oh, we're starting the conversation. Yeah. Ugh. God damn it, Cree. Why did I just tab back to our fucking group chat? P is stored in balls. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, why, why is this? That yeah. is really random. I saw it, so I shared it. Well, there you go. <laughs> All right. And how exciting that game was when it first launched, because this game has been part of the cultural you know conversation for a decade because it's never really gone away it's a bit like grand theft auto 5 in that sense it's always a a present part of every console generation okay so they're specifically talking about the console conversation so i guess anybody here who is who's console only i guess we can just ask the same question how often do you guys talk about skyrim and gta 5 because they said it's never left. They said it's always been present. It's always been there. My guess is not not a lot. Yeah. Uh, 
my God, what a terrible, terrible, terrible video. That's a that's a big old like press X to doubt on that one. Like I am never. PC only. I must leave this room. <laughs> my console friends play GTA Five more often than they talk about Skyrim. I don't That's doubt fair, it. Because a lot of people go into GTA Online. Well, GTA Online, I sometimes mention on how annoying it is to launch. Yep, when I got my new computer and I got the um, M.2 hard drive, which um, it's, it's super fast to load stuff, I was super happy because I knew if I put Grand Theft Auto on there, it would only take 37 hours to log into uh, GTA Online. <laughs> yeah, and then when you did, you'd just get killed by some guy flying around in a DeLorean that shoots missiles, so they win every challenge anyways. Oh, I was on a server, well... I shouldn't say server, I was playing GTA 5 online once, and uh, a couple of Chinese guys just randomly started hunting me for like two hours. And of course they had all the good shit, they had fucking whatever, and I was trying to avoid them. Um, I got on a plane and flew up to the like top of the skybox pretty much, and they were off doing something else, and eventually they found a plane and came after me. It's like, why? I don't know. All right. And, you know, we're recording this on a day where Skyrim has been released again for its third generation console. But at the time, and I read some reviews. Look how shitty that animation looked. Yeah. For the woman playing the, uh... The loop. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would recording. help if she was even touching the strings, you know, that would help. <laughs> <laughs> See, an animation like that would be fine if it was, like, PlayStation 1 or 2, you know? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. This is, you know, from, from the game's original launch, just to try and get myself back in that headspace. And this was a masterpiece. This was a video game that came out, it smashed all expectations, and it Did it? This game was a masterpiece. It was it's a game that came out and smashed all expectations. Didn't no, smash any of my neither. expectations. Either it, it fell woefully short. It was very substandard at best. I had very little expectations because I was going off of what people had told me was in the game. I had knew nothing about Elder Scrolls, and I didn't even get what I was promised. So, <laughs> no. Yeah. This guy sounds like a corpo shill. Yeah. Well, and it, I don't know if he's a corpo shill. We'll find out if he starts talking about like why you should buy Bethesda merch stuff like that. Then we'll be like, okay, he's a corpo shill. He just sounds more like the the fanboy who can't see beyond like what he's fanboying over. Yeah, kind of. I was console um, only until last year, and I could confirm nobody talks about Skyrim or GTA. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's just eh, I don't know. I think you'd have to be some, you have to have some pretty low expectations for it to smash them. And it's like it it didn't even come close to smashing any of mine. Same here. Um, I remember the original preview they released. I watched it numerous times, and I was so excited because uh, oh man, they incorporated the Morrowind music into the theme of this one. Maybe Bethesda's finally going back to what made Morrowind so good and. This will be a really back. good game. It's like, no. Like, looking back, it seems like such a ridiculous thing to expect. But back back then, it was like, oh man, this game is going to be great. I'm going to love it. And it turned out to be the Skyrim we actually got. Skyrim story is forgettable. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. The uh, most biblical story ML has ever uh, written, that Bethesda has ever done, is insanely fucking forgettable to me Skyrim was over the moment they revealed dragons rip Skyrim was unable to smash my expectations because I didn't have any with nothing to smash it's really hard to succeed at smashing well that just brings it to the other point was it so bad where it was like I had no expectations and I'm still disappointed because that was Fallout 4 for me. I had no expectations for Fallout 4, and I was still disappointed with how fucking garbage it was. Yeah. 
that that's about the same for me as well. Yeah. I think a lot of these people never let go of the honeymoon period. For me, it comes naturally. Yeah, it does seem like a lot of these people who are praising these games out the ass all these years later just can't let go of that period. <laughs> Detroit Become Human should have been written by ML. He's a master of themes like robots, after all. That's actually a point I make oh, in God. the uh, part two of the Fallout 4 analysis. I'm absolutely keeping this point in for the remake. Detroit Become Human at least explained why the uh, deviant robots can't be tracked. Because when they gain free will, fucking somehow, the trackers stop working. So they explain at least why the trackers stop working. Fallout 4 doesn't even do that! When the synths escape, they're just gone. They never put trackers in them, except for like once or twice. Like, why? It's such an obvious... Synths have been escaping the Institute for over a fucking decade. Remember, Fallout 3. Um... Uh, the Replicated Man, uh, Harkness, he was a courser, meaning that synths escaping were such a problem that they needed to make special synths to track down the escapees ten fucking years before Fallout 4. So, in all that time, they didn't put trackers in them? They didn't figure out a way to stop this from happening? And, and when you find out how they're getting out, by the way, holy shit. Um, they sent out teams to get... Look, this is a scavenge resources on the surface. And at the last minute, oh, hey, this synth that's at risk of escaping is suddenly added to the team. Why not add checks to prevent that from happening? Why not do verifications to see, oh, hey, that's been changed. Let's change it back. It's synth is um, at risk of escaping, so why not fucking wipe them the moment you find out to prevent that from happening? There are so many things the, institu the Institute could do to prevent simps from escaping, and they don't do it! God, I fucking hate Fallout 4 so much. It's so bad. Ugh, dude. Yep. It's fucking terrible. I can't stand it. I, I hate it. Every time it's brought up, I just hate it more and more. Pagan, that first picture. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> it's, just, it's just funny. It's just pure funny. So, chat, the the local cemetery caught on fire. Reporters say that everyone's dead. <laughs> Over 2,000 bodies were, uh, were found in the cemetery. Yep. Man, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, this is so sad. <laughs> Alexa, play Despac Despacito. <laughs> no! Uh, dude, I can't believe if this is an actual, like, you know what I mean? It, it's obviously the, the guy is posting it as, like, a, in this funny, but it wouldn't shock me if this was an actual, like, report thing. Yeah, Mythic posted that in the ship posting channel, by the way. That's where I got it from. Oh, it's right. fucking great. Yeah, it's really funny. And the fucking bots are back. Nice. They have really want us today. Well, they've been an issue for like the past couple of days really bad because I've been watching yeah, they one always, of my favorite. They always uh, come I've back. I've been watching one of my... F yeah. Well, the thing is, I've been watching one of my favorite uh, Dark Souls streamers and he's been playing Elden Ring and he has to stop his stream like every 10 minutes to like ban the bots and stuff like literally in the middle of boss fights he'll be like and they're back and they'll have to stop in the middle of a boss fight to get rid of them yep kretosis the hot milfs in your area are back oh god they found me oh, <laughs> all right delivered on the promise that it you know that it made in the initial trailers and built upon everything D <laughs> Did it? Did it? It delivered on the promise that it made in the initial trailers. N no. No. Like, it absolutely fuck? did not. What the fuck? Okay. What the fuck? All right. Wow. All right. I need to go back because we're getting into the fucking more crazy logic here. Here. You yeah. It smashed all expectations, and it delivered on the promise that 
it, you know, that it made in the initial trailers and built upon everything that Oblivion set out to achieve as well. And Fallout no. 3, for that matter, it was. And Fallout 3, for that matter. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so this was one of the things i was talking about before of so he just opened up a huge can of worms by doing that oh really skyrim you know like basically perfected fallout 3's vision huh it, it so, built upon mm, it. it built upon it and made it better so where it's all built my meaningful upon it choice. and made it better where's my 200 endings yeah, so one, that's fucking bullshit. And two, we have this little game called <laughs> New Vegas that yeah. did that way better. So it came out before shut Skyrim. The fuck up. It came out yes. before Skyrim. Yeah, before <laughs> Skyrim. Oh, yeah. oh, hey, I like this. A promise fulfilled, doubt, or yep. X to doubt. Yeah, um, Indigo's, uh, Indigo Gaming's video, uh, The Elder Scrolls Promise Unfulfilled is a good video. Yeah. <laughs> Why did he take every bad game as an example? Oblivion, I wouldn't say Oblivion is bad. It's uh, definitely got issues. Um, okay, so this is one of those points where you're really going to have to fucking elaborate on. How did it build yes. off of Oblivion? How did it perfect... And Fallout 3. Uh, yeah, and Fallout 3. Um... Because, yeah, man, there's... we're going to need some serious legwork here, boys. Yeah. All right. At the time, the best game Bethesda Game Studios had made. And in... Nope. That's Morrowind, that is, my friend. That is beyond not true, yeah. Or maybe that... Daggerfall. I hear a lot of people really like Daggerfall over Morrowind still. I liked Daggerfall a lot, but I need I would need to genuinely go back and do a full deep dive through Daggerfall again. Because I can do that with Morrowind a lot, but I don't really do it as often with Daggerfall, because Daggerfall just isn't convenient to run these days. Yeah. <laughs> now, there is Daggerfall Unity, where they're literally trying to recreate the entirety of Daggerfall in, in the Unity engine. That'd be great. I'd play that. Yeah. Please don't use that Mythic Dawn guy as an example. Are you talking about the Mythic Dawn guy in Skyrim? That quest? Where he's, where he's a museum. Yeah. It's like a museum where you get the razor. Skyrim has choices, though. Do you match that zombie with a mace or a sword? Yeah. They do the exact same thing because we didn't differentiate the weapons enough. Like, imagine if 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 Skyrim was had a, had a combat system where you could, like, on skeletons, if you attack them with a sword, it doesn't do much because they're skeletons, so you're not really, like, cutting or doing lacerations or slicing or anything. But if you pulled out a, a hammer or a mace or something that does blood damage, you knock the skeleton apart. Man, man, but that was too advanced for Skyrim at the time. Ignore the fact that, you know, a game that came out a month before it, Dark Souls does exactly that. I do think Bethesda's yeah. biggest issue at this point is the laziness. Uh, $5 from Johnny Off 14 Thank you. I've seen RT's Elden Ring playthrough. Uh, RT. I'm not sure who RT is. And he's playing sad uh, Todd Howard. He said because everyone's playing Elden Ring instead of Skyrim. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay. Uh, I can only think of RT as Rooster Teeth. My god. And Rooster Teeth are a bunch of scumbags for sure. Well, no, he's saying, and he's playing sad Todd Howard, so it sounds like it's a single person. It's a person? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right, who's, who's RT? Um. Well, well, Johnny Off can let us know. Who is RT? Yeah. RT Game. RT Game. I, I have never heard of them. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, neither have I. Yeah. Sorry. Right. and built upon everything that Oblivion set out to achieve as well. And Fallout 3, for that matter. It was, at the time, the best game Bethesda Game Studios had made. And indeed, you could... Wait a second. Wait, was wait, that... wait, wait. It was at the time. Yes. So he was trying to say that something they made later was better. So they're saying Fallout 4 or, or 76 are better? And hold on a second. I think he's going to say, you could argue, that it still is. 
Because it's like, yeah, I think he just realized in his brain that he's saying that Fallout 4 or 76 are better games. Hold on. <laughs> Three, for that matter, it was, at the time, the best game Bethesda Game Studios had made. And indeed, you could argue, is still the best game that Bethesda have, have created and published. No. Yeah, so... So yeah, uh, he it, one. You're wrong. Skyrim wasn't the best. It's it was definitely near the bottom. Um, is Skyrim better than seventy six? I think so. Yeah, I would say Skyrim uh, is better than seventy six. Um, Skyrim does have characters. They may be fucking shallow as fuck. Like, yeah. But at least it has character. Well, seventy six has characters now, but I don't think. Yeah. They're probably not that good. I, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I can't speak about seventy six now. I only speak about seventy six for playing it from launch and the awful betas. They're horrible. Oh, speaking of, rest in peace, Bethesda Net Launcher. You were a useless piece of shit, and everyone hated you. Thank God you're going to Steam. I'm just glad the age of everyone having their own launchers is slowly coming to an end yeah because you yeah. realize that they, they it's not worth it well it's Good. just ends up being fucking clutter you've got you know steam that's fine it's a big marketplace with everything on it uh the unreal store like sure unreal are scumbags but still a storefront so whatever uh but then oh here's the bethesda launcher here's the ea launcher here's the ubisoft launcher here's fucking everyone's own unique launcher like, fuck. Just let me play the goddamn game without your bullshit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I'm right there with you. From a severe lack of Sean Bean and Patrick Stewart, two amazing British talents. Uh, who cares? Really? Is that is that how low your standards are? That Sean Bean and Patrick Stewart are the thing that really makes Fallout 3 and Oblivion really great. Uh, honestly. Let's get the full quote, because we kind of came in at the middle there. That Bethesda have, have created and published. I think I'm right there with you. It might suffer from a severe lack of Sean Bean and Patrick Stewart, two amazing British talents that, you know, we're, lu we're lucky enough to have a Grace Oblivion. But no, I'm... I'm um, they had British people that yeah, made them good. <laughs> oh, God. So if you're going to pull anything out of Oblivion as being the highlight, I wouldn't pick Sean Bean and Patrick Stewart as that. Um, it was neat yeah. that Patrick Stewart was the Emperor and that Sean yep. Bean was uh, Martin. Yeah. Um, I, I, w when I think of the best parts of Oblivion, that's not what I think of, though. No. Yeah, like, the, the Emperor doesn't really ever get mentioned in people doing their favorite parts about Oblivion. Well, the Emperor is, like, one of the first people who dies in the entire game. He's with you for, like, ten minutes. Yeah. So he, he doesn't really rate on a scale of, like, the greatest things about Oblivion for people. And by the way, if the Emperor is one of your, like, the greatest things about Oblivion to you, and he dies at the end of the... Before the tutorial is even over, actually. Yeah. And man, it must just all be downhill for you after that. The voice actors do the best voice acting, simple as. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, not the points I would reference for... You know, Oblivion is so good. Yeah. Eh, it's definitely a weak one, for sure. God, it's like the same argument of like... Oi, oi bro! Oh, your your what? dad in Fallout 3 is voiced by fucking... Uh, Liam Neeson. Um, what, yeah, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson dad. Uh, that makes the game good. No, no oi. it doesn't. Oi, bruv, what a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> water. <laughs> Dude, that was that, that was that whole thing. Um, um, the whole like uh, British people don't say the R and stuff, so it's like go to the car instead of the car. And it's just like, ah, oh, dude, that is so weird. Yeah, because you don't think about it until you 
you hear someone explaining how to do a, a proper British accent. It's a, it's this guy who's been teaching Hollywood actors how to do better British accents and everything like that. And he's explaining like all these different like unspoken of rules and like not saying R's is one of them. <laughs> um, if, if the R comes after a vowel, you don't say it. And it's just like, oh, you're right. And it's so, oh, it's weird. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm my car from the, and it's just like, oh, dude car why is it a car not a car oh uh, british pe- i know i know you came you had the language before we did but we're just better at it i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> oh you got oh, a hard r license, oh, the license. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> i love that all three of us <laughs> honed in on that one <laughs> comment <laughs> Uh, that's what i said i know i that's what i said i know you guys were first but we're just better at it (laughs) i know it's just funny because then then you realize where english came from and it was literally because local yokels couldn't speak german and french which got mixed together to make english (laughs) (laughs) and so so what what English is is a bastardization of Anglo-Saxon English, which is a bastardization of German cross mixed with Norman French. <laughs> it's just, it's just, oh, dude, it, language history is fascinating. Like, like it's why it's why s- soccer versus football, right? So you have. Football is what the peasantry called it, and soccer was what the nobility called it. And it's just, it's just so fucking great. Oh, God, says no, that's reductive. It's not really. Like, okay, sure, I'm simplifying it, but there is a lot of... That, that's where it came from, and then loan words came in and influenced it from different invasions of the British Isles. It, it's fascinating. From the weapon named Sack. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just it's just great. Football? You you mean hand egg? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I just I just love the fact that the Americans are the ones that kept the snooty like upper class soccer, uh, and it's the British who threw down the upper class snooty term soccer and kept the 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 peasantry football for it and everything it's just great <laughs> got a german test this win this wednesday what a coincidence yeah if it's another thing that's fascinating german uh follows the same sort of rules of uh of of grammar and everything that english does very very fascinating very weird the only thing that that didn't get accepted was the gendered um, use of words like um, uh, der Draka versus die Draken sort of thing. So der Draka, masculine, dragon. So the in masculine form, der Draka, dragon. And then you have a plural. So then you change to the pluralized gender, which is D. So D Draka. It's it's oh god it's so fucking weird. It's great. Language is great. <laughs> Anyways, English was gendered like a thousand years ago. Yes. Uh, and back... the way, wait, yeah, yeah. Back to the video. Until it wasn't quite there on day one, but I did play Sky. Hold on. We just cut down the middle, so I want to see what he's fully saying. Yeah, I'll, at the I'll time, the best game. British talents that, you know, we're, lu- we're lucky enough to have a grace oblivion. But no, I'm in total agreement. I wasn't quite there on day one, but I did play Skyrim. Um, I think I bought it pre-owned a little while after the fact, and I, I totally concur with what you're saying. I still think, like, it's one of the most... <laughs> so, think about what he just said. Think about how amazing and influential and awesome and perfect this game was, how it did all the promises and everything, checked all the boxes. Yeah, and I bought it pre-owned. So somebody returned it. 
Well, I mean, you could say that about any game, really. I know, but it's just it's just funny after they were talking about how influential and how it never left the public consciousness and the conversation. It's always been there. It's never not been there and everything. It's just like, yeah, but there's somebody who clearly didn't live up to all the promises for because they returned it. Also, if you want to make a great name for a fictional character, think of a word that describes that character, the basic guy's, uh, the guy's name, off the etymology of that word. Uh, I'd say no. Because I actually... Uh, it, I personally find that to be a massive pet peeve of mine. It's like naming your villain evil bad guy. You know? No, it, uh, it, but, it, but it happened in history. Before there was really such a thing as family names for the non-nobility... Um, and then it just kind of became, well, what is your occupation? Well, I'm the baker. Okay, so now baker becomes your last name. No, I know, I, know where that, I know that's probably where, like, Smith comes from and stuff like that. Yes. And, and baker and stuff like that. But that, that's not r really what I'm getting at. Like, Cruella okay. DeVille. Cruel oh, Devil. Oh, yeah, no, that is, yeah, that, that stuff is pain. I, I just, if it's, name, it's a name given to them at birth, I, I really hate when it's just what they end up being, you know? Yeah. In life. It's like, you can never predict that. It's so fucking... Well, that's like, that... If, that's if, that... What is it? It's a, um, it's a thing. There's actually a thing about that. Yeah, where... it, that can happen. It yeah, can happen. Yeah, and people look into that as, it's like... Just rare, though. That's that whole, like, uh... Um, if your last name is Major and you're in the military, are you, like, predisposed to try to become a Major so you can be Major Major? It's just fucking... And how often it happens. And then there was a, a angry cops who made a joke about how it's like, and they, they promoted her straight up to lieutenant colonel so they could avoid that major, major bullshit. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> they Dick actually Nasterly. did that. They actually skipped some. They skipped the rank of major and just made the lieutenant colonel <laughs> instead. God, anytime I hear Dick Dastardly, I just think of that fucking terrible joke in that Fucking Scooby-Doo movie. Just call me Dick. Oh, God. Thank you, Wolba Fett. Mario Mario and Luigi Mario. The fucking <laughs> Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> D don't remind me, too, of... Uh, there was a thing I've always wondered. Why it happened. And I, I don't know where it originally started. But for some reason, at first you go up in rank through the normal rank structure. Um, and you get to your officers. So you get your second lieutenant, first lieutenant, captain, and so on. But then when you start getting higher, suddenly having a higher rank is a lower rank now. So uh, the way it goes is uh, like lieutenant colonel is a lower rank than colonel, than just straight up colonel. Full bird colonel is what they call it. So you have lieutenant colonel, then colonel, then brigadier general, Okay. Then Major General. <laughs> okay. Then Lieutenant General. All right. And then General. General is the highest of the generals. Because then you get five star general. And good luck with that. Because, you know, you can't really, you really four stars is where you're at. But it's so weird that suddenly you get up in rank, uh, officer ranks, and then it reverses itself. And the reverse is now the higher the rank is. Yeah, be my little general. That's exactly how they taught us to remember it at all times. Be my little general. Um, yeah, it, it's just so fucking weird. I don't, I don't know what originally would have started that trend and why it stuck. Of suddenly, if you're a brigadier general, you are now a lower rank than the lieutenant general. When brigadier is a higher rank than lieutenant. It's it's just so fucking weird. And Major is a higher rank than Lieutenant. But Major is a higher rank than Brigadier, even though Major is a lower rank than Brigadier. It is so fucking weird. My brain. Well, just general. <laughs> and it in part makes sense, as the ones before are specified, while just general is, well, general. I hate, I hate it. I hate it so much. But it's just such, it's so weird. Uh, you, 
Okay, as Hobocop puts it, I was the E4 jackass, so it doesn't affect me too much. It doesn't affect you too much until you actually start talking to one of them because you did a whoopsie, and then it suddenly it affects you a lot. <laughs> it becomes the single most important thing that you're going to remember out of, coming out of this room if you want to come out of it alive. Yeah, I, I know Callback. Technically, it's not a rank. It's supposed to be the general in charge of a brigade. I know, but it's it's just so weird. It's just it's just funny. I'd rear your admiral. <laughs> yeah, rear admiral. And I just love that rear admiral. It was supposed to mean that it, you were supposed to be admiral of like the third or second line, not you know you weren't the front line admiral. It's just great. <laughs> Anyways, all right, yeah, we are getting through this video very slowly. Uh, yeah, we're having great and funny tangents. Come on. Yeah, all they're right. pretty good. Uh, grand and you know high in scope games that I've ever played. It's particularly um, in terms of games set in the high fantasy setting, and th yeah, there's a reason why it's still considered one of the best open world fantasy RPGs like ten years later. By who? By you? Yes, but by who else? And a lot of shill media websites will say, you know, it's one of the top 10 open world RPGs. Yeah, it probably wouldn't even be my top 50 RPGs, honestly. Yeah, really. Yeah. Stag, stop talking about generals. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for real, though, uh, yeah, I probably wouldn't put it in my top 50. <laughs> Oh, dude, that was... God damn. I am sorry, Mr. Sir, General Sir, Mr. Sir, General Sir, General Sir, General Mr. Yeah, that reminds me of Angry Cops when he get, he was getting yelled at by a, uh, a female um, uh, drill sergeant one time, and he kept going... Uh, uh, was, it, was it Angry Cops or was it uh, Zach? It was, it was somebody, but they were getting yelled at, and they're like... And they had to keep going, no, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. And then one of the male um, ones comes over and starts yelling at him. And he goes, he goes, no, ma'am. And the guy, like, goes wide-eyed and goes, what, what were you just about to say? You better speak up. What were you just about to say? And he's like, mm, Master Sergeant, <laughs> oh, you just promoted me. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's like, woo, good save. You don't want to. You don't want to admit you just now called a uh, male uh, drill sergeant or drill instructor a ma'am. Holy shit! Is the general talk considered a gun rant? No. No. no a gun no. rant has to be a gun rant. Yeah, that was definitely. It was Mike talking about his military stories. Yeah, that's that was definitely a good save. That is a that is a good save. games that I've ever played it's particularly um in terms of games set in the high fantasy setting and th yeah there's a reason why it's still considered one of the best open world fantasy RPGs like 10 years later I think there's very few games that even come close to you know rivaling Skyrim for that claim I think you know The Witcher 3 comes to mind arguably but even then The Witcher 3 you're very much playing Geralt's story and in in <laughs> which is still a role-playing game yeah you're, you're playing the role of Geralt like you're not a, you're not a player insert character. You don't have that freedom, but you are playing a role. You are playing Geralt. I this just woof boy. Skyrim isn't really a high fantasy, is it though? I from what I understand, the difference between high and low fantasy is how much magic is in it. So, I'd Game say of Skyrim Thrones is high fantasy. Game of Thrones, uh, Song of Ice and Fire would be low fantasy. Yeah. Um, not because, you know, it's dumb or anything like that, but because there's very little magic in it. It exists in the world, there's just not much of it. Skyrim is high yeah. fantasy because magic is fucking everywhere. It's like Harry Potter sort of thing. Harry Potter is, is super high fantasy where what, magic can literally do everything to the point that, that the, nothing makes sense. Yeah. Like, why? Why are there poor people in Harry Potter and and the wizards? Poor pe poor wizards. Why are there poor wizards in Harry Potter? It doesn't. It doesn't make a lick of fucking sense. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like, how how can the Wheatleys be poor at all? What what could they possibly need to spend their money on? How you don't need electricity. You you literally have everything that cleans your house for you and builds your house for you and flying cars that don't need gas or anything. And like, what what are you spending any money on? And my God, you you create things out of thin air. Ugh, yeah, it's pretty insane. Uh, uh did yeah, I say I, I, I say Wheatleys? <laughs> the Wheatleys, yeah, I guess Ron is a core now. Yeah. Ron Wheatley. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something, but I don't actually remember his uh last name. I was... Uh Weasley. Weasley. Because my mind is going to Wesley. It's like, no, shut up, Wesley. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> fucking Wheatley. Nice. Um mm. Yeah, and then you have stories that go from like being low fantasy that become high fantasy later. Like, well, actually, Berserk does that. Actually, now that Ooh. I think about it, Ooh. a good example, a good example is um, Shadowrun, and it's terrifying because it's low fantasy where people, oh yeah, sure, you can talk to spirits stuff like that, and people are like, no, I legitimately can. And then suddenly the event happens, and magic fully reawakens in the world. And how much of a nightmare that actually is. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And how many governments collapse and fall because dragons literally rip themselves from the ground. And they're fucking dragons with all the things that dragons have for power and intelligence and everything. And the ability to wield magics never before seen. And they are literal, like, world-ending threats. What what can your military do against that? And people suddenly being born as like dwarves and, and orcs and stuff like that and horrible mutations and things. Oh, dude. Shadowrun is great for, for what would realistically happen if magic suddenly existed in the world. Like, out of nowhere. If we went from as we currently are today, if suddenly the clock struck midnight tonight and everybody had different magic powers, how society would immediately collapse. Yeah, Dude, we... Dragonfall was great. Uh, Shadowrun Dragonfall is a great game. Highly recommend playing. Five dollars from Scoopmeister. Thank you. It's worth explaining things like power levels and learning magic. A simple wizard can cast a fireball. A master mage can rain fire from the heavens. Um, okay. yeah. No, not in not in uh, the Shadowrun universe, Dome and Chaos. That's the thing that's terrifying about them. So, a way to put this in perspective for for people um, that don't know anything about Shadowrun, the concept of players, you're a player, so you're obviously an important person. Well, shit can happen. You get shot in the head or something like that. Well, you get a special luck stat, right? That will let you be like, oh, uh, actually, instead of that happening, we'll shave off some of your luck and we'll say that didn't happen. You know what I mean? It's your, it's your whoopsie, your do-over thing. Because they don't want the game to end. They don't want your character to die. So you have that kind of luck stat. Um, dragons are the only ones that are the only other thing in the entire game that get that stat. And they can come back from literally being a single atom and reform themselves in real time to kill you. They are terrifying. That sounds pretty fucked. Yeah, th there's a reason that dragons are now just a thing. They rule the world, you, you just have to deal with it. It's just great. I really enjoyed Shadowrun Returns and Dragonfall. Played halfway through Hong Kong, then got distracted, unfortunately. Uh, Hong Kong's amazing as well. Falcor, the luck dragon. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and the only thing that can really kill a dragon is another dragon. Um, so there, there are weird things, too. Like, holy shit. Hmm. Shadowrun Dragons copied Cell or did Cell copy Shadowrun Dragons? I'm pretty sure Shadowrun was out long before uh, before Dragon Ball Z. I think so. Hold on. Great. Well, now we're, I'm going to do this research. Oh, boy. Um, We should be getting back to the video, though. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want sixth edition. I want the original. When did the original Shadow Run release? The sixth edition was 2019. Do do we really need to do this? I was hoping I could find it on just a quick Google search. I can't, so you know. I was hoping if I literally typed in Shadowrun, you know, release, but no, I could. All right. So back to the video. Yep, back to the video. In this one, you know, the beauty of to go forward and create your own Skyrim. Know The Witcher Three. I really think. Okay, that skipped for me there, so I'm just going to draw it back. And the beauty of Skyrim is it compared to. Witcher 3 is that you can make your own and he's talking about your own character and I think he was just about to get into no two playthroughs will be the same it's like uh yeah they will they'll yeah, be they very will. similar yeah superficially there will be some differences but the core will constantly be similar well it's like that meme I showed you before of uh oh each of the races are really good at being stealth archers yeah it's like yeah no fucking <laughs> shit playing an Argonian stealth arm, uh, archer and a dark elf stealth archer. You're still playing a fucking stealth archer. Ah, it was 1989, by the way. Three, you're very much playing Geralt's story, and in this one, you know, the beauty of Skyrim is that you get to go forward and create your own. And um, mm. no Skyrim, no The Witcher Three. I really think it's as simple as that. Uh, not that I'm not that I'm oh. saying that The Witcher Three is better than Skyrim. Per se. Well, I've never played The Witcher Three, but I could say it's probably better than Skyrim because that's a very low it bar is. to pass. Um, it is. No Skyrim, no Witcher Three. Really. Because I'm not no. so sure about that. No, that, I don't that is think... entirely not true. That's where they were yeah. going the entire time. They yeah, were heading that's... that direction the entire time. Fucking bullshit. What the fuck? No scary no. What the fuck? It didn't even inspire Witcher 3. It had literally nothing to do with each other. They yeah. were not even remotely inspired by Skyrim. Yeah. They were always going for larger, more expansive worlds. You saw that from going from Witcher 1 to Witcher 2. So both those games were open world as well, right? Uh, yes. To an extent. They weren't as, like... They they were more like large arenas that connected to each other through loading screens sort of thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, you I could still have technically an open world with loading screens. You just need loading screens to be able to handle it with those older games. Yeah. So, he, he, technically, yes, but it's not the same, like, roam anywhere sort of thing. Okay. Um, yeah. What about stuff like the uh, Gothic games? Would those be open world? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So we have Morrowind and Oblivion. Um, I guess Arena and Daggerfall. We've got the Gothic games. We've got the Witcher games, technically. Any other open world games before Skyrim? Before? Okay, before Skyrim. Um... Technically, World of Warcraft is open world. Yeah? Sure, there were, like, different levels for enemies in different zones, but you could still go there. Yeah. Oh, it's this weirdo again. Um, I'm kind of sick of your shit, so you can fuck the hell right off, weirdo. Yeah. You're a bunch of bigots, and you just continue to lie and harass. Uh, no, that's not what we do, weirdo. First of all, this doesn't make you critics. Uh, you're out there harassing people of real-life trauma. Screw you, Kratosis. Oh, dude, yeah, you're a fucking weirdo. You are. Jesus Christ. The fuck? <laughs> that's a weirdo who is demanding a debate with us. It's like, just because you disagree with us doesn't mean you're entitled to debate us on stream. Yep. Yeah, we don't know who you are. So, not gonna happen. Like, I'm fine with people um, disagreeing with us, but when you come in and just start saying retarded shit, like, oh, you're a bunch of bigots, you're haters, you're terrible people, blah, 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 blah. It's like, clearly, you're fucked in the head, and you're just not worth dealing with. Yep. Yeah. But anyways, the point I was making is there are plenty of open-world games before Skyrim, so this... It almost seems like they think... Any open world after Skyrim is a result of Skyrim, which no. Oh, you had a uh, you had the Divinity series. 
which oh. um, yeah had really large levels, but that was open world before Skyrim. Uh, let me see if the big one, Divinity Two, if that was before Skyrim or not. <laughs> Kratosis tries to break it to my host 20 times a week, every week for two years. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, at least I'm not the lockpicking lawyer. He would have gotten in on the first try. Yeah. Okay, so Divinity 2, the developer cut, was 2012. So not, it, October 29, 2012, so not even a year later. And the developer cut is after they um, redid the games multiple times. So, yeah, Divinity 2 was open world before fucking Skyrim. Fallout, Divinity was open world. Fallout 1 and 2 is coming to mind. Um, yeah, I guess Fallout yeah, 1 are and cool. 2 are open world. So, point very clearly made. There were open worlds before Skyrim, and to say that, oh, without Skyrim we wouldn't have had Witcher 3, it's like, no. That's not yeah. how it works. Uh, don't put no um, research... Without PUBG and Fortnite, we probably wouldn't have gotten Fallout 76's fucking Battle Royale. I'm a lot more confident saying that than, oh, without yeah. Skyrim, we wouldn't have had Witcher 3, because that seems like it's going to happen anyways. Oh, yeah. Uh, Grand Theft Auto games are open world. Also, Mafia 1 and 2. Yep. Yeah, so, we already said, wow, we already said World of Warcraft was open world. So, yeah, there's plenty of open world games, and to say, it's just insanity. It's just giving Skyrim way more credit than it deserves. Battle Royales are awful. Yeah, I know they're... They're not inherently awful. It can be done well. The culling Dude, uh, before it got fucked over by its developers was pretty good. But it's just uh, an example... Hunt Showdown, of... Hunt Showdown is a very good Battle Royale. Yeah, yeah it's, Hunt... it, doesn't, it doesn't have 100 players, sure, but it's still a Battle Royale. Only it's yeah. player versus player versus environment, so PvPvE, which is fan-fucking-tastic. I love yeah. that as a concept. Like, the entire world is also hostile as shit. That's fine, uh, Angry Danish Viking. I hope you get better soon. Yeah, no worries. No worries, dude. Everybody gets sick. Just hope you uh, drink lots of fluids. That's not a... You know, that that is actual good advice. Your body does need a massive reserve of uh, liquids whenever you're sick. Because your oh. body's way of dealing with anything is like, I right, just... Turn on the liquid pumps on everything. Every time you the human body gets sick. So you want to drink as much water as you can. Uh, here it is from uh, Dallas Trouble. Devs of Witcher literally said they want to imitate Gothic series. So there you have yeah. it. Say both games, but... You know, I think it says a lot that people are still going back to Skyrim 10 years on. Even though it... it it says a lot that people are still going back to Skyrim 10 years on. But you people, realize people that... can go back to anything. People are still going back to Mario, like Super Mario. People are still going back. There's the Atari collection on Steam that people play. There are people that, that are going back to Half-Life 1. I played Half-Life 1 last year across two streams. Yeah, that just, that just happens. Hold on a second, I want to check something quickly. Steam charts. It's, it's just huh? Make in favor of this. It's just because people will go back to anything. You, people just do that. So it's the, really telling that people go back to opiates after all these years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, people go back to uh, old games all the time. Like, to yeah. say that, oh, yeah, people go back to Skyrim all these years later, you, you also have to realize how many of those people playing Skyrim right now are playing it modded. Yeah. Because I, I very much doubt that most of those people are playing vanilla. Just pure vanilla. The example I was going to on Steam charts, too, is the Atari Vault. It's an Atari collection on Steam. Admittedly, it doesn't have a lot of players. All-time peak, 113 players. 24-hour peak, 9. Playing 20... Uh, yeah, playing 23 minutes ago, 7. So, oh, hey, all these years later, people are playing Atari games. That speaks to how great they definitely are. 
It's like yeah, it's just weird. It's a weird like, it's not an actual like point in your favor. Yeah, it's one of those things you can say and it'll be true no matter what you're applying it to, basically. Yeah, any game, no matter how bad it is, there'll be somebody who will go back and play it. Yeah. Just because, for shits and fucking giggles sometimes. That's just how it happens. Actually, I shouldn't have closed that tab too soon. Let me, I want, I am curious about something now that I thought of it. Like, Jesus Christ, um, as my whole Aliens, uh, marathon went i had to play aliens colonial marines i went back and played it. does that mean aliens colonial marines was good no yeah god i have to highlight how bad that game was you're right it wasn't showing on steam charts so it doesn't matter oh my god yeah you know what well if that's right closing taps who are you <laughs> <laughs> It was simply a temporary tab. The rest are still open. Yeah. People are still watching The Room after all these years. What a masterpiece of cinema. Yeah. It, again, it's not it's not as strong as an argument. You Again, it sounds good at first because your mind immediately jumps to, yeah, that's true. But then you think about it any even a step further. It's like, but that's true for everything. Literally everything. Yeah. Again, it's something you could say about anything and not be wrong. It's just, it's not a good argument. It's just... A meaningless yeah. statement, basically. The proper point that you know there could be a ten, uh, yeah, a ten right there today. Yet, God, it's skipping for me again. It uh, genuinely blows my mind that there could be a ten year, yeah, a ten year old or eleven year old out well, there today. You, you don't have to say it because we're gonna play it anyways. Oh God, That's the body's fair. back. Um, well, you do that. I'll grab the super chat. Five dollar super chat from Nathan Gordo. Thank you very much. People keep going back because they keep re-releasing the fucker. No one I know goes back and plays vanilla anymore. Yeah. Like, even years and years ago, I mostly heard people talking about, oh, um, mods. Here are all the mods you should play it with. You need these mods to play uh, Skyrim, blah, 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 blah. You know? Yeah. It says a lot that people are still going back to Skyrim 10 years on, even though it, it probably blows my mind that, you know, there could be a 10, uh, yeah, a 10 year old or, you know, 11 year old out there today yet to have played Skyrim. And they could possibly just be about to dive in for the very first time as a result of the anniversary edition. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of cult status, it doesn't get really any more grand than Skyrim does. What? In terms of cult status, it doesn't get any more grand than Skyrim, does it? That's not what cult status yeah. means, you fucking dipshit! So, so, to do the exact same argument, it, it genuinely blows my mind that there, there are 10, yeah, 10 or maybe 11 year olds who are going back and, and playing it for the first time today, now that uh, Demon Souls Remake is on PlayStation 5. And that really does, really does show that there, cult status is just nothing, there's just nothing as grand as, as Demon Souls. Mainstream cult status, yeah. Uh, you can't have cult status if you're mainstream. The yeah, entire that, point that of a cult goes following cult is status. a small but dedicated following to something, not something that fucking everyone likes, you fucking idiot! Ah. Yep. Dude, it's, this is just this fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> Happy birthday, Skyrim. <laughs> Mr. Freeze's wife is quite cold. She's a chill lady. <laughs> it's fucking horrible. <laughs> Remember oh, how God. Christianity has a cult status to this day? Yeah. Yes. Have you guys ever heard of this series? It's a really, like, it has a small cult following. It's called Super Mario. It's called Pokemon. It's called fucking World of Warcraft. Well, probably has a cult following now. Ha! Um, but yeah, like... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, how could something be massively popular and have a cult following? That makes no sense. That's contradictory. 
Yeah, um, that, well, I already have the no research, so I'm just going to put video contradicts point. Yeah. The very first time as a result of the anniversary edition. So, yeah, I mean, in terms of cult status, it doesn't get really any more grand than Skyrim, does it? But you mentioned Fallout 3 and, you know, also a great game, but it no. does suffer no. more so than Skyrim from looking a little bit dated, I would argue. And that's Out of all of Fallout 3's problems, out of everything wrong with that game. Looking dated is not even in the top 100 of Fallout 3's problems. Yeah. I'm actually fine with Fallout 3 graphically. Graphically. I like the designs of a lot of the buildings, the gothic architecture, the statues, and everything. It's really nice. Um, yeah. God, that just goes to show how surface level all this shit is. We already had it with, oh, the best parts of Oblivion that I can think to reference are the celebrity voice actors. But now it's like, oh yeah, Fallout 3 looks a bit dated now. Really, any more grand than Skyrim, does it? But you mentioned Fallout 3, and you know, also a great game, but it does suffer more so than Skyrim from looking a little bit dated, I would argue, and that's probably why Bethesda have tried to sequelize that as opposed to the Elder Scrolls as much, because it's still, it's still. What? Bethesda has tried to sequelize Fallout 3 because it looks dated and not Elder Scrolls, because Elder Scrolls doesn't look dated. What the what? fuck is this word salad? What? What the fuck argument is that? So, is Bethesda trying to sequelize Fallout 3 more because we've got New Vegas and Fallout 4 and Fallout 76 as opposed to just Skyrim since Oblivion? Or nothing since <laughs> Skyrim, I guess? Like... Yeah, that doesn't make any that's... sense. One of the games was made by Obsidian, and the other was the fucking retarded project that Bethesda did. Fallout 3 hasn't gotten several remasters. It hasn't gotten any. Yeah. Um, words are being said in this video, and that is both amazing and special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go back a bit so the chat, because oh, oh. chat said they couldn't hear that. Hold on. Was Elder Scrolls 6 announced before this video? Yes, this video was made back in November of uh, 2021. Remember, this is for the 10th anniversary of Skyrim. Yeah. ESO was not made by Bethesda. Bethesda actually had no part in ESO at all. Yeah, but New Vegas was made by Obsidian. Yeah. But it's just, it's just weird because this is Fallout. They're probably talking about Fallout Four. Got sequel, sequel to Fallout Three. Do do they not realize it takes a really long time to make games? Mate, well, it takes Bethesda an absurdly long time to make games, and ha half the game that they that they promised. Oh God! All right, here we go. More so than Skyrim from looking a little bit dated, I would argue, and that's probably why Bethesda have tried to sequelize that as opposed to the Elder Scrolls as much, because it's still, it's still, a, I know they've, you know, introduced new visual enhancements and stuff, but it's still quite the looker. I am so happy that that render error was there. <laughs> I am so, so, so happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's in their video, guys. That is not on Watch <laughs> Together's in. That is actually in their video. <laughs> that could have happened at a more perfect time. Yeah, that timing <laughs> was amazing. It's like the universe itself hated this video so much it was just like, fuck you. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. So I think the point he's trying to make uh, is... Because Fallout 3 looks so bad now, that's why Bethesda decided to make Fallout 4, to yes. have a Fallout game that is graphically updated. But that still doesn't make sense as an argument, because you would think the pattern would go, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, which is what they've been doing. Oblivion, yeah. Fallout 3, Skyrim, Fallout 4. The break from that is... Um, I guess New Vegas, if you want to count it, but again, that's by Obsidian. 
and Fallout 76, but 76 was a side project that was mostly handled by, like, a secondary studio. Yeah. That did not go well. Yeah. Yeah, and I know, that's the weird thing. This is after they announced the sequel to Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Yeah. It, it, this video is after they've announced the sequel. It's just so fucking weird. The logic here is just so fucked in so many ways. Behold! Render error! <laughs> what, are we playing Oaxaca? Like right now? Is he using the Frostbite mod in this video? This is apparently PlayStation 3 and 4, so if that mod is available available on PlayStation 4, then maybe? I don't know if it is, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's... Frostfall. It's that... It, it's, it's not Frostfall. It's... They made a Creation Club version of it. That's oh. really shitty. Yeah, it's it's literally just that. It's just a Creation Club version of it. You see that error? You can render it. <laughs> yeah. I'll give I'll give oh. somebody a brownie points if they figured out what I was talking about. Here's a good comment. I like the casual self report of calling it a sequel to Skyrim and not a sequel to the Elder Scrolls. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Wow. Skyrim 2. When are they going to make Skyrim 2? Don't even oh. say it because they'll probably fucking do it. Oh, I'm sure they will. And they're back. I got it. I got it. Oh, I said I snagged it. Oh, you, we both got it. Nice. Well, my screen, it says I did. All of them. Deleted by Kratosis. Deleted by Kratosis. Yeah. On mine it said, uh, user stuff is hidden, but then it says you deleted by Kratosis. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Guys, there's hot girls in chat. <laughs> yep. And another one! Yep, and it's back again. Yeah, expect a lot of this. because th I don't this know if I got this one. one or not. We'll see. I got it. You know, we'll see. We'll see. Who's this going to say? Oh, Me! fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> that was my kill. I had to, I had to stop it. I had to stop it. <laughs> oh, you timed him out. You didn't. You don't time him out. You hide it. You have to do hide. Uh, callback. You do hide, not uh, not time out on those. Hide is the ban option. I don't know why they don't just call it ban, but whatever, you know. Hot girls, I sleep. Hot boys, real shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Kratosis definitely hates hot girls. Maybe he likes hot birds. No. <laughs> no. Oh, the I... feathers are flying now. No. Well, no, he likes hot birds on his plate. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Only turkey at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah. Oh, dude. If, if we ever have a holiday special, like we, if we have a holiday meetup, we'll have to do... My fucking mayonnaise crusted turkey. Holy shit. I got a bucket of chicken. Alright. Back to the insanity that is this video. But it does suffer from looking a little bit dated, I would argue, and that's probably why Bethesda have tried to sequelize that as opposed to the Elder Scrolls as much, because it's still it's still a, I know they've, you know, introduced new visual enhancements and stuff, but it's still quite the looker, aside from some jank today. I think that some, the, jank? <laughs> some, some jank? jank, only some, some? dude. Yeah. <laughs> we have literally covered people who have said that the fucking main draw of these games is that they're and, a bug riddled mess. Yeah. So for this guy to be like, oh, there's some slight jank. Like, no, dude, and, you are literally you can't even be consistent with people on uh, your uh, side. I have to get the super chat, but first, I, um, I want to do it. I want to do it. Ah, uh, fine. Go $2. ahead. All right, all right. Two dollars super chat from Scoop Meister. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Behold, hot singles in your area. <laughs> um. Anyways, yeah, the fucking white light video and Skyrim players love all the bugs. 
Uh, we do. <laughs> well, I guess it's not we since I don't like Skyrim, but you know what I mean. It's like, really, yeah. everyone loves the bugs. Because that's kind of what makes me hate it a bit, because goddamn, the, the experience oh, God. already doesn't draw me in. I don't, already don't find it to be an immersive game. You know what makes that worse? When a giant hitting me with a club launches me into the fucking stratosphere. Alright, if you want to do the Indigo Gaming one, I think that's the one you wanted to do, right? No, I wanted to read the Super Chat, goddammit. Oh, okay. Which well, Indigo... Indigo, Gaming... Indigo Gaming says, Bird jokes about Kree are a hoot. Ah. And then uh, Admiral Tony Donning says, At Indigo Gaming, that was a terrible owl joke. <laughs> oh, these puns are great. No. Reason why is that it's such a vision. What? What the fuck? The reason why is such a cohesive vision. It's a tangled mess of Christmas lights. Oh, great! Nice. What I a like perfect the frame. Got to. Perfect frame. It's such a cohesive vision. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is like the perfect image, like absolute perfection. Especially with that statement. It's such a cohesive vision with this because. When we talk about, like, how bad the story and everything is, this is what we see. This image right here. This is what the yes. story looks like to us. But even worse, imagine it more corrupted than this. God damn, the puns are getting pretty foul. You guys are really <laughs> starting to ruffle crease feathers. <laughs> Still quite the looker, aside from some jank today. I think that the reason why is that it's such a cohesive vision of, of this landscape, right? It, 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 it took... I'm sorry. I tried to get past that. such a cohesive vision. What, what the... F I just couldn't. What the, the way fuck he is... says it, too. Oh. So, I'm getting distracted by the visuals. What the fuck is up with the uh, Magicka bar? The... They're showing the new bars that have red in the areas that aren't that are drained, so you can more easily read that they're drained, Kurtosis. So is that an editing thing they did, or is that part of whatever that's, mod? That's anniversary, apparently. Oh. What? Yeah, I think it has something to do with the survival. Have you <laughs> thing? Have you checked the feather forecast? Oh, these Such puns a are cohesive horrible. vision. Fuck off. Oh Damn it, I'm bouncing God. everywhere. There we go. Hey, back to our favorite screen. <laughs> it means he's starving, freezing, etc. It, it's his magic and stamina, though. Yeah. Survival. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Still quite the looker. Aside from some jank today, I think that the reason why is that it's such a cohesive vision of of this landscape, right? It it it, it... it's such a cohesive. I just I laughed at cohesive vision and I realized how much more retarded the take is. It's such a cohesive vision of well, I can't say story, can't say gameplay, can't say narrative of this landscape. I mean, sure the. If you take all logic out of it, the world looks nice, I guess. Um, putting logic in, some of those cities, fucking oof. Oh, God, man. He sure it's is saying a, words. It's such a cohesive vision of this landscape. I love how he had to pause because he's like, wait, I can't say all these other things on this <laughs> landscape. Oh, dude. Okay, I promise I won't laugh, but listen carefully. All right, here we go. The, the reason why is that it's such a cohesive vision of, of this landscape, right? <laughs> it, it, it took... Fallout 3 is a very bland and uh, you know, grim looking game. Yeah, and I mean, that's by design, right? You know, it's a post-apocalypse. <laughs> but Skyrim kind of, it, it, you know, it, it, it reads from the same hymn book in a lot of ways. And <laughs> what? <laughs> it reads from the same hymn book? Are you buying into the bullshit that it's a biblical story? Oh my god. No. No. 
<laughs> oh, I can't dude. actually be making that argument. No. I, I hope oh, not, oh but God. what a weird way to describe it. It's reading from the same hymn book. Fucking what? Just oh, talk man. in normal terms that normal people are going to understand. It reads from the same blueprint. Yeah. God, and I was actually going to fucking compliment them that earlier they had the chance to say the word zeitgeist. It said conversation and said it instead, and I was like, oh, thank God. Thank and God, the, yeah. And, yeah. And now they did this. Zeitgeist. It's like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I, I'm so tired of people using that word. Like, any time that they feel like, oh, it'll fit here, they always insert it, and I'm glad they didn't do that, but they fucked that over. Yeah. Have we actually covered a video that used it yet? Because I don't think we have. I'm pretty positive we've we've heard the word zeitgeist before. I think yeah. we've covered at least one. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. 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 Same hymn book. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> right. You know, it's a post-apocalypse, but Skyrim kind of, it, it, you know, it 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 reads from the same hymn book in a lot of ways, in the sense that it's this cold and oppressive landscape, um, both aesthetically and also, you know, politically. The story revolves around this <laughs> this nation in turmoil. But exploring... It does it? Does it at all, actually? Does, does the story... Because considering that the Civil War can be entirely ignored, except for one mandatory quest to get them to shut up so you can fight the dragons, the story doesn't give two shits about this nation in turmoil. <laughs> It literally doesn't fucking care at all. Yeah, it's like, literally nothing. Shit. God. God damn. It's cohesive. It's a cohesive uh, uh, landscape. God. Oh, shit. So, it's cold and oppressive in terms of its world design, but also politically. How is it politically cold and oppressive? Yeah. Is is it yeah, politically well. cold because it's barely there, just like the temperature? <laughs> just like the warmth? <laughs> <laughs> and oppressive, how is it oppressive at all? Like, sure, you could argue that, oh yeah, um... The Almeri Dominion, the Thalmor, are oppressing Talos worship, which yeah. we barely see in the entirety of the game. You can wear the amulet of Talos and, like, no one will fucking say anything. At least not that I remember. Oh, God. I think the most you get is the preacher guy, a quest to deliver, like, an offering to a Talos shrine out in the wild, which... Why would that even be there if the Thalmor... You, you would think, since Thalmor can appear anywhere in the map, that they would take that down. Yeah. Um, and when you uh, kill Storm, uh, Ulfric Stormcloak, um, the second command to Tullius will be like, Talos be with you or something, and he'll be like, what? Uh, nothing, sir. Uh, that's about it that I remember. It's oppressive that I can't kill all the jail and bring anarchy to the land. I think you mean all the Jarls? Yeah. Uh, two dollars from a guy under a bridge. Thank you. Doesn't revolve around the main quest, to be honest. Yeah, not at all. Yep. Oh, God, man. Chad is still going. Kratos' <laughs> favorite subject in school was algebra. algebra. Yep. Nice. Damn, autocorrect is strong on the world, Jarl. Holy shit. This is why you don't use autocorrect. Autocorrect you fucks you over off. way more than a small spelling mistake actually, will. Yeah, it really does. Like, call them horde ovaries. Who cares? People that will realize you're trying to say hors d'oeuvres. No one cares. God, that was my favorite thing of, like, when someone sees how it's spelled, they try to say it. We'll have some horde ovaries. <laughs> uh, French, your language is fun. Also, you know, politically, uh, the story revolves around this this nation in turmoil. But 
exploring Skyrim, there's nothing else like it in terms of just the the visual and the atmosphere. It oh, Witcher really? Witcher 3, Divinity uh, 2, um, uh, Witcher 2, in fact, because it would have been out before this, uh, Gothic 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is our Gothic Arcanum? Hey, you know uh, what has... Fourth, you know what has a visually unique world with an atmosphere I haven't seen since? What's that? It's a tiny little game called Morrowind. Yeah, wow. Yeah. An actual alien atmosphere and, like, alien plant life, uh, fauna, uh, fauna and flora. Like, yeah. Yeah. I like Skyrim. It's pretty. Yeah, it's basically what this is coming down to. But they have to make it sound bigger and better than it actually is. Yeah. Like, that's another phrase I'm starting to hate. I've hated elegant for a while in these other fucking buzzwords. I'm really starting to hate, oh, it's such a unique, one-of-a-kind world. Because people apply it to things that aren't fucking unique and one-of-a-kind. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> now, let's see the super chat here. Uh, Five dollars from Rage vs. ML. Thank you. Another video that makes me want to commit die in Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Whew. All right. Harsh, but there's there's pockets of autumnal forests and the way that the wind. <laughs> oh my god, we're gonna get hardcore pretentious. Prepare for all the floweriness, everybody. Hold on. There I want to say go. I want to say something else. I want to say it on the last pause, and I didn't. We are right. five minutes and 22 seconds in to this 20 minute plus video. Um, we've already seen this trailer footage like five or six times. I've seen those skeletons get blown away like yeah. five or six times. I've seen um, the dragon and the troll doing its thing several times now. I am so fucking sick of it. I, I'm starting to really despise this selection of clips. Fucking use unique footage, you bastards. Yes. Fucking hell. All right, here we go. There's nothing else like it in terms of just the the visual and the atmosphere. It, it is cold and it's harsh, but there's there's pockets of autumnal forests and the way that the wind blows across, you know, wide open plains that are that are decaying and... The is way the, the wind, wind blowing. blows. Yeah, I, I, I would like you, in this trailer footage you so helpfully provided talking about the wind blowing, Notice how all of this is static. All this greenery is 100% static because there's no wind blowing. Some they couldn't the... even be bothered to have the JPEGs shift a little bit. I mean, some of the JPEGs do shift a bit, but not much. And some of them don't look like they're blowing with actual wind because there's a very subtle way that plants can move in like wind and breezes and stuff. Yeah, you some of these are just ripple. like a three second GIF repeating. You you get that that really interesting ripple effect. If you ever if you ever look out on a on a massive like grain field or a massive grassy field and you see the wind blow across it, you see this really weird like ripple effect. It, it looks like water, like the way it's like moving in waves. It is fascinating. <laughs> uh, they're DDS files. Um, excuse me. All right, fine. <laughs> but I just remember, I just, God, it just made me tangentially remember fucking how god awful, um, uh, oh my god, I can't remember what it is. Bay versus Bay, um, the, uh, Hella, yeah, Splish Splash, um, god damn it. What was that? Life is Strange, that god awful series. And they're talking about JPEG, the highest quality image file. <laughs> what? What? <sighs> yeah, amber waves of grain. Seriously, if you ever look at a grain field in the wind and you see it literally ripple as if it's water, it is a beautiful sight. Granted, you know, I'm, I'm here in Indiana. We have lots and lots and lots of fields of wheat and corn and everything. Another example is uh, rain. Anytime I played Skyrim, I've never seen the rain get blown by the wind it's always falling straight down if yeah. there's actually programmed to be wind you would see it blowing with the wind in 
different directions at different times. And similar to what Setch was saying about seeing the wind on the grain, you would see it in the rain as well. Yes. That's why you get those those rains that literally feel like they're going sideways in real life because the wind is that strong. And it yeah. feels like like they're <laughs> like I'm under the overhang and I'm getting splashed in the face. <laughs> Screw you, wind. Well, not just that. If you're watching a downpour when it's windy, you'll see the uh, water coming down the road in, like, waves. Oh, yes. Yeah, and you see, like, this weird ripple yes. in it. This 3D ripple of water because it's riding part of the wind uh, through. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool to look at. Um, so, yeah, we, we don't get that in Skyrim. We have, like, a bare imitation of that at absolute best. And it's not a good imitation. And it wind, doesn't exist with the rain. Wind, my second worst nemesis. Wind with rain is my worst. I love <laughs> rain. I really do love rain. So do I. Um, as long as I, I don't weird... have... As long as I don't no. have to go out in it, rainy days are like my favorite days. Oh, I like going out in the rain. I'm one of those people where um, if, I take, if I take a shower, um, I have to scrub... Like, I, I have to just scrub myself dry after I get out. I can't be partially wet after a shower. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I don't remember it being a thing before the Marines, so I think that's one of my long-lasting parting affairs with the Marines. Um, but I can, I can stand out in the rain, and I can just be perfectly fine. You know, like, coming in, sopping wet, and everything. I'm just fine. Yeah, Whatever I don't is, mind. Rain doesn't do that for me. I don't mind that. It's like if I have to go to a store, if I have to walk home from anything or whatever... Like, man, that sucks. Um, I was riding my bike to work in a torrential downpour once, and uh, I was up on the sidewalk, and there was someone walking down the street. I'm like, what the fuck? What crazy person is out here during... Oh, I'm out here. But anyways, uh, so I went onto the grass, the boulevard, and I almost ran straight into a fucking street sign because I was trying to avoid this person on the sidewalk. I didn't see it coming because it was raining that fucking hard. I was soaked. Like... 30 seconds going out the door, and I had, like, a 15, 20-minute ride, uh, bike ride to work. Ooh. That sucked. But if it's, yeah. like, yeah, I don't have anywhere to go or anything to do, standing out in the road, and it's fine. Um, yeah, we've been getting lots of storms in, uh, in Indiana. A lot of storms. There you go. Oh, that's perfect, Pagan. Um. Yes! I, think I love that ripple of... I'll grab the second one. The second one's more noticeable because it's the darker. It's yeah. The darker stuff. Yeah, I knew now, exactly what you were talking gonna about. Now, is it actually going to play? Oh, it's not playing. It's not playing the... Uh... If you open original, will it work? Um, I just did the link. Um... Okay, you know what I can do? Um... Yeah, okay. Uh, where's Discord? There it is. Whoop. Um, let's grab Discord again, and... Oh, not that. Shit. Uh, there we go. Move that down. God, I hate having to do this. Oh, dude, the, the Cinema thing stuff will be next week, by the way, guys. Yeah. Cinema Things is next week. So you can see, like, how the wind is blowing across the uh, landscape there. Or across the grass and stuff. Shit like that doesn't exist in Skyrim at all. Like I said, the most you get is... Um, uh, three second looping gif of the plants moving slightly. Charge complete. Charge yeah. complete. This is what actual wind across stuff looks like. It is, it is just a, it's just a sight. You can just kind of sit and behold. This is one of my, like, I would love to just pop out a, a sun chair there, sit down, have a thing of jelly beans and read a book right there. That'd be fucking paradise. Yeah. So moments of peace. Let me move that back over here. 
and start the video again. That it's this cold and oppressive landscape, um, both aesthetically and also, you know, politically. Oh, we're this the far back. The story revolves around this this nation and turmoil. Put us but that far back. exploring Bye. Skyrim, there's nothing else like it in terms of just the the visual and the atmosphere. It it is cold and it's harsh, but there's there's pockets of autumnal. Look how little the plants were moving in that giant clip. Yeah. Such be or like. Yeah. Such be like, like behold, wind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I live in Arizona. Even Skyrim's grass stuttering is magical to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, fair yeah. enough, I guess. Maybe these guys live in Arizona too. They've never seen grass move in the wind. No, no, Indiana, Indiana, born, bred, raised. No, I'm talking about. In the video. Oh, the, the British guys? Yeah, maybe they've lived in a place where they don't, uh, they don't, they have nothing but city streets and stuff. Maybe they, they've never seen, you know, the way wind actually moves through nature. Kritosis, did you ever see, have you ever seen Sean Foucault's videos? His videos have very shit takes. Uh, no, I haven't. Yep, I have not. Right. forests and the way that the wind blows across you know wide open plains that are that are decaying and dying but it just has this unmistakable quality that even 10 years later like you say with some small <laughs> this unmistakable quality or lack thereof honestly <laughs> it's an unmistakable lack of quality that i will give skyrim that is the only thing I will say is unmistakable about Skyrim is that it has a lack of quality in so many different areas and aspects. Oh god, and that just reminds me, why is Alduin waking up dragons in a weird order? Like a specific order? What the fuck? It doesn't make any sense. God damn it. How are the dead dragons moving before they've got their skin and muscles back? Yeah, if they aren't liches, like liches are animated through the magic thing. This is like He's just waking them back up. Shouldn't they? Wouldn't it be more interesting if they were growing their their skin and everything on it? And you saw like the fleshy bits coming back to them. But no, of course not. Here's an alternate way to do this. Instead of Alduin just waking them up by a specific order arbitrarily, maybe they have to be dug up so they can actually be revived. And then yeah. you get to a place where like new dragon cultists are digging them up. And yeah. Uh, you get to see the flesh reform around the skeleton before it starts to move again. That would be awesome. That would be fucking awesome. And it would make sense for why Alduin is doing them, like, why you can predict where he's going to go, rather than, oh, here's a map. He's doing them in a specific order because reasons. Yeah. Yeah, instead, if you're, if you're literally following the, the movements of the dragon cultists... And like, yeah, they know where some dragon bones and, are. Let's follow them. And then and, you and, watch them dig it up. And then you see Alduin swoop by once they're finished. And how interesting would that be for a main story where you have to track the movements of these new cultists and uh, learn about them and what they're doing and why and all that rather than, oh, I think the uh, Falmore are involved. Let's break into their embassy and get learn information that doesn't actually help us. Yeah. Let's... Let's uh, just randomly go to this place and, oh my god, Alduin is reviving the dragons! Oh. Yeah, but the skeletons moving are through necromantic magics and arts and stuff like that. It's not just a thing that happens. This isn't... Alduin's not committing necromancy. He's literally rewinding time. There's for a question these as well. Why aren't necromancers in Skyrim trying to raise the dragons on their own? Yes, that would have been more fascinating. And what a there's, conflict... actually, there's actually a dragon lich. Yeah. There, there's a dragon who went the necromantic route and turned himself into a lich that you actually fight if you play the mages guild. Remember, your suggestion sounds like it requires effort. And effort is a banned word of Bethesda. That's fucking... Dude, that Emil speech just is <laughs> gold mine. Uh, $5 from the Wayfarer. Thank you. Hey, I'll have you know that Arizona has plentiful plant life. Mainly cacti, though. <laughs> <laughs> the cacti waving in the wind. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the one I'm talking about. The skeletal dragon and the labyrinthian. Labyr labyrinthian.
it just has this unmistakable quality that even 10 years later, like you say, with some small visual enhancements, have made it look more modern and more more of the time. It, it's just... It's... <laughs> not at all! Not at all! No, look, not even look, remotely. Look at this arm! Look no. as it's clipping into itself. Not okay, all... at the elbow joint. <laughs> not only yeah. that, I was going to point out the clip of the dragon diving into the water. Did you see what happened there? Uh, how the water, like, shattered in such a... The ice shattered in such a fucking goofy way. It didn't shatter. It changed from one model to the next, just like... Bloop. Just like that. It's not like he actually broke and the ice is shifting. It just... Yeah. Changed from one to the next. It looks so fucking made, trash. Made it look more yeah, modern and more, more of the time. Okay. It yeah, you're right. Look, <laughs> he actually... He, he clips through it. Like, he gets his entire head through it, and then it made changes. made it look more modern and more... More of the time. <laughs> uh, do we need a capture for this? Like, ah, oh, shit, I thought this was gonna work. dragon <laughs> behold a dragon pop these aren't my glasses <laughs> <laughs> oh god damn it pagan that reminds me wait these aren't my glasses <laughs> balls on your face balls on your face <laughs> oh god <laughs> um I I want to do something here. Hold on. It's ostrich. I'm dying, oh. but it just has this unmistakable quality that even ten years later, like you say, with some small visual enhancements, have made it look more modern and more, more of the time. Hold on. Twenty-five percent speed. Um. <laughs> Oh my god, it gets like all the way in before it actually goes. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, that's but, pretty bad. But you see how How awful that looks, yeah. Just all the way around. One model disables and another model enables at the same time. It's not like the yeah. ice is actually breaking, it's just <laughs> it looks so shit. Also oh. Did you Did you god. notice? The thing that uh, did you notice the contradiction that just he just made? Yeah. So he said, so he's literally now talking. Oh well, they they've made some minor visual changes to you know make it look better. Uh, <laughs> so what you're saying is when the game released, it didn't actually look that much better than Fallout Three from 2008. Something you criticized Fallout Three for. Dude. Also, the whole, you know, like, oh, well, they don't want to keep releasing, you know, sequels to Skyrim because, you know, it already looks so good. It's like, oh, but uh, you're literally talking about yet another version of the game that's coming out. One oh, of which. In Sorry, Indigo fucking slapped that one down. God damn. <laughs> nice. Indigo slammed. But yeah, he's, he's contradicting himself. Small visual enhancements. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Watch, watch how deep it goes. The dragon basically is already gone by the time that thing actually swaps models. Like too. eighty to ninety percent. Only its tail was out. Yeah. Of the time. Look at that. Look. <laughs> Now it broke, and it's just the tip of the wings. Wait, it's not broken on my screen. Oh, dude, it's broken on my screen, but it's <laughs> just the tip of the wings out. All right, I'll play it a bit more, and I'll pause it on mine when the ice breaks. I'm... There we go. Yeah, that's barely anything. Dude. Fucking hell. <laughs> In those ice chunks, I don't think they move at all. They're, they're static, and that's the problem. If a dragon yeah. was diving into an ice lake like that, it wouldn't look fucking anything like that. Yeah. 
Such just the tip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Two dollars super chat from the Wayfair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, these scents are really hounding you guys. Yeah. yeah. This time it'll be different. It wasn't different at all, hey. was it, Creed? Oh, there's a little bit of animation on the ice, but not yeah. much. Nowhere near as much as there should be. Oh my God! No, don't move. Don't move us at all. Do you see what I see? Hold on a second. Oh no, you don't. Go forward just slightly. You need to be able to see the bottom of the scroll and the fact that it's not attached. Uh oh. Oh, oh, there is a little bit of attachment there. No, <laughs> no. Look. That is not how scrolls are attached. No, I know, but there's like the handle and then it goes up and there's like a little metal rod that goes along the bottom, which is fucking yeah. stupid. No, but... that is not how scrolls work at all. <laughs> All right, we should put this back to normal speed, though. Yes, back to normal speed. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm moving us back uh, some because I know this is gonna, you know, it's gonna kind of mess us up a little bit here. All right, we're ready. Yeah. And how enhancements have made it look more modern and more, more of the time. It, it's just, it's got this just intoxicating sense of place to it that I think was <laughs> for me when I think of Skyrim. And, you know, we've been speaking about Skyrim a little bit this week, uh, off air, and I'm actually, for some reason, really excited to, to play through this game again for the second time. You're one of- For the second time?! <laughs> wait, 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 for the second time? Only- You only played through it once before. Only once before. And you're talking about how fucking amazing this game is after, what, ten- So you only played it that first time, and you haven't that played it again ever? in a decade. And oh my god. You talk about how amazing it is from memories from over a or from a decade ago. Memories and... that are clouded, confused, and blinded by nostalgia because you were young. Oh my god. You would think if you're wow. gonna do a video like this, you would play it in advance. <laughs> oh man. Wait, does that mean this is a honeymoon video? It's worse than that. This is like reminiscing this is of a decade video. old honeymoon. Yeah. Also, oh did my you notice God. he worded it as like for some reason I'm I want to play this again? It's like you yeah. almost sound surprised that you want to play this game that you're fucking praising. Yeah, that's that's fuck. That's weird. The fuck? And you've only played it once. On top of that, that's fucking terrible. Holy shit! You are not qualified to talk about this game then at yeah. all. Yeah, um, it's really weird to talk about a game you haven't played in a fucking decade. And yeah, and about, about how great and amazing it is, and why it's still the best open world fantasy RPG that you yeah. have you played once and you haven't played yet again. Especially it, considering you played it during the honeymoon period. Holy crap, dude! Again, if you had said played it again, that's that's a nothing statement. We could have done. You said for the second time. For the second time. So you, you've only played this game once. Holy shit. You see, yeah. you see that frozen light? You could clip so through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a game so good, you only feel the need to play it once and then never go back to it again after a decade. Yeah. Like, yeah, wow, that says a lot about the game that like how does it have so little replayability that even people who praise it can't be ours to play it more than once not just praise it praising it out the fucking ass this is the this is the best yeah. open world rpg ever made nothing has topped it it's so influential blah, 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 blah. god damn it you, you see that frozen lake you can clip through it <laughs> i said that already i read it yeah but then here's the follow up only dragons can do so it's dragon magic <laughs> <laughs> five dollars from dollars. lunar phoenix thank you new to the streams been watching the vods first time live glad i found out about you guys oh thank you glad you're enjoying oh, glad you like it. Yeah. if you want some real fun go back and watch the coverage of the uh new vegas retrospective video oh my god <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. you're in for a treat if you do that one. My you're God. in for a wild fucking ride. Yeah. That one was falsely DMCA'd, but YouTube said no. Yeah, YouTube said no, this is obviously fair use. Um, yeah. Like, holy God, holy mother of God. All right. Play through this game again for the second time. You're one of those, Liam. You're part of the problem. You're playing am... Skyrim again. But it's it's like I mean I'm the I'm the person who's played you know I play Resident Evil Four every year so I own it on every system. I am. Okay. So you know what it actually means to have something beyond the honeymoon period, Resident Evil Four. Uh, how how can you compare Skyrim to even Resident Evil Four in your mind? Yeah, if if, if if Skyrim has so little replayability to you that you play it once, but you could play other games multiple times and enjoy them every year, yeah, how is fucking Skyrim so much better than them? What? Well, someone mentioned he might be ship posting. I don't know if that is a ship post or not. Now, like he was just screwing around, like sarcastically saying, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna play it for the second time." I I I can't fucking tell. I can't tell. My god, the mills are hunting you today, Kratosis. Yeah, I'm going to have to abandon base and set up shop somewhere else. They've tracked me down. <laughs> um, I, I think I'm safe enough right now that they won't get to me midstream. Um, though if you see here a sudden pounding at the door, then I'm done for. Uh, avenge my death. <laughs> death by snoo snoo. <laughs> what the fuck, Kratos? Is recommending people to watch the new Vegas retrospective stag? What the uh, what has the world come to? Um, I'm just merely suggesting people watch an entertaining and not at all frustrating time. Yeah. Dealing with a crazy person, an actual crazy person. <laughs> Kratos, if you hear sudden pounding and I cut off. <laughs> Uh, best faith interpretation, he's entering the hype train for the second time, or he has a save with a thousand, with thousands of hours. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I don't that's even know how you get not... to a thousand hours in this game, though. There's just not yeah, enough well, content there. Yeah, there's nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, you complete every quest in the game, every faction, everything. What the fuck do you do? You just wander around and aimlessly, like do dungeons full of generic enemies for generic loot? Huh. I'm one of them. <laughs> but when I think about Skyrim, I, you know, I think about some of the quests, I think about the Dark Brotherhood, I think about the story beat. You think about the Dark Brotherhood, do you? How oh. much do you think about the Dark Brotherhood? Yeah, because the Dark Brotherhood storyline is really fucking off. Um, I think it might be the worst next to the main story in the Civil War. Uh, I think the Mages Guild beat it still. Really? Yeah, the Mages Guild is fucking yeah, I, horrendous. I agree, yeah. Everyone agrees that the Mages Guild is the worst. Even fans of Skyrim say it's bad. In terms of writing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. I don't remember most of the Major Guild storylines, so... You know. Oh, this, it's really, this, really this bad. Cidic Order. Yeah, I know the Cidic Order shows up at the last second to be like, hey, we're taking this orb. No, all throughout they show up, but they show up in really stupid ways. And everyone's like, oh, well, that was weird. Oh, whatever. Who cares? It's like, what? Mm. What? Uh, and, and I love that. Know that you have chosen a path that leads to destruction. Know that you are not guilty of the sins of choosing this path. And it's like, what? F you were going to, you were, you were thinking about punishing me for for going through with something that had no warning signs, mind you, no warning whatsoever about this. But no, you psychic order fucking wackadoos, like, oh, we will sand in judgment of you. Well, if you're gonna be like that, curious. if you're gonna be like that too, all the magic uh, uh, skills 
can be used for evil. You know, you can use illusion to trick people. You can but that's, use alteration yeah, but that's to not alter what the reality. Order, that's what the Sigic Order cares about. They care about the orb in particular. That you doing this leads to where the orb gets free and unimaginable destruction. But don't worry. We won't hold you guilty for the for this. Because how could you possibly know? It's like, yeah, why are you even telling me you would even try to hold me guilty after a debate you decided not to? What the fuck is wrong with you? What, did you leave signposts here that said, no, here there be dragons, or something like that, on this, any signposts anywhere? No? Then shut the fuck up, Sigic Order, and go away. <laughs> I like Patricia's headcanon on how the uh, Sigic Order monk teleports to Serana to inform her that Levitation is outlawed now and teleports away. Yeah. Dude, and the fact that he just... Reep, I'm here. Blah, 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 blah. Reep, I'm gone. It's like, what the fuck? I like how killing the Emperor has no impact on the Civil War. Yeah. Yeah. No whatsoever. Ooh. There's an interesting thing for us to research for doing those videos. Um, get the Dark Brotherhood questline to the point where the Emperor is in Skyrim. And then do the Civil War can uh, Council to bring a ceasefire to the Civil War. God damn! The mills might be closer than I thought. Yeah, probably. Oh, someone got him first. Damn. Yeah, I think it was me this time. Come on, baby. Oh, I think I'll beat me. Yes. Um, anyways, because obviously the game isn't going to account for the Emperor being there during the peace talks, but yep. that that's why it's an issue. Oh, the Emperor's in Skyrim and he's not attending these vital peace talks. Yeah, yeah that's fucked. Especially since they know the Emperor is coming here. Like, it, yeah. oh god. Just the more I think about this game, the more it fucking breaks down. <sighs> right. It's that everyone remembers, but mainly what I, when I think about Skyrim, I think about just just exploring, just walking through this world and, and listening to the gentle ambient soundtrack and stumbling across something, you know, a small village. Uh, a little hamlet, some traveller by the side of the road, and it's just that sense of a journey and an adventure that <laughs> oh I think... Oh my god! It, are you that much of a basic bitch? Holy fuck. I was just getting annoyed at the fucking robotic horse. Um, yeah, the Dwemer horse. Yeah. Dude. God damn. But yeah, look how simplistic a basic bitch this is. Oh yeah, I like exploring and finding random things that don't mean anything uh yeah so do you want a contra a good contrast contrast uh fuck kree would know this but contrast skyrim's open world to elden ring's open world where there are actually things to find things you might want around every corner you know npcs to interact with new quest lines new new npcs you had no idea existed new dungeons you didn't know existed cave systems you didn't know were there because they don't highlight them on some fucking hud or anything that oh hey there's a cave system over there you actually have a sense of exploration and when you think you've done something like Oh, hey, you know, I'm going to jump my horse on top of this building and then use the double jump to get on this building. And then you turn and look over and you see that there's a treasure chest and a tower you could only reach by doing the thing you just did. And it's like, what the fuck? You realize that the developers actually thought of that and they rewarded you for being creative with how you moved around the world? Dude, it is, it is fucking night and day what happens for... What what effort actually looks like in your open world versus what no effort in an open world looks like. Yeah, I'm not I'm not comparing them directly because yeah, Skyrim is a decade old. I'm comparing them in the concept of what exploring around the world actually feels rewarding. Yes. Elden Ring it feels rewarding to explore around the world. Skyrim it doesn't because Part of the anything reason... that's worth finding will be will be highlighted on your HUD. Yeah. And not just that, like, um, even if you do quests, or, sorry, not quests, even if you do, like, random dungeons, it's just, for the most part, the same dungeon tile set over and over and over again, filled with the same random enemies. Sometimes there's a little bit of a... They try to mix it up a bit, but not really. And at the end, it's the same generic randomized loot. 
So yeah. it's not exciting to go into the same scenery over and over again, fight the same enemies over and over again, all for the sake of randomized loot. You know? Yep. Yes! Oh, okay, so this will be an example, and I'll keep it as vague as possible. There was a cave I had no idea existed until I found a guy and I bought a, a clue from him that told me that if I go to this place and look to the north and go past and everything like that, I would find it. And then I, I found it because it was behind an illusory wall. This cave was hidden, fully hidden. And I only found out about it because I bought a clue from a guy that I met. Ah, dude, I love exploration like that. And then I it, it didn't point it on my map. It didn't put a big red X, here it is, or anything, or here's where you start. I literally had to put all the pieces together to the clue myself and find it. Uh, Five dollars from yeah, Nathan Gordo. Go ahead. Oh, I just said, yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Five dollars from Nathan Gordo. Thank you. Now that Elden Ring was mentioned, did you die from jump on X slash A? I did not. Muscle memory did not get me in that way. I died on tons of other ways, but I did not muscle memory death myself. And I, I think it's because I was so conscious of what happened that I always slowed down whenever I got to a ladder. So I wouldn't jump over the ladder instead of trying to climb it. Hmm. And uh, 400 rubles from Badunias. Thank you. Skyrim, a terminal case of good enough. Um, I Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can good agree enough, with that in the sense that... Good enough for government work, basically. Huh? The, the old saying, good enough for government work. Yeah. Where it's just like, yeah, it's not great, but it's good enough that most people won't think twice about it. And that's kind of the problem. Skyrim related so much better than any other open hold on I'm gonna rewind that again because yeah, yeah, yeah that's fair and it's just that sense of a journey and an adventure that I think Skyrim encapsulated so much better than any other open world game at the time oh. I disagree because even at the time we had Divinity 2 and Witcher 2 and everything and I think they did their open worlds far better well, and no, far more is... interesting things to find and discover. This isn't about open... better. This this isn't about open worlds here though. It's the journey. The you yeah, know. but he said he said uh, and the uh, feeling of exploration at the time. Oh. He's talked about it all that, and it's like yeah, I think these other open worlds did it better. Yeah, I, I have think to hard disagree 2, there. I think Divinity Two did it better. I think Witcher Two did it better. Which, by the way, I specified Divinity Two and Witcher Two because those are games that were out before. Um, before actually, was Witcher Two out before Skyrim? Probably. Uh, yes, it was. It was several months before Skyrim. Yeah. So you had Witcher Two that did its open world better. You had um, Divinity Two that did its open world much better. It's just like this is just. I, I'm sorry, guys, but no. Yeah, they're outright wrong. And I, I, we weren't going to bring Fallout into this, but they literally brought it into it themselves. They opened that can of worms. Yeah, New Vegas did it better. Yeah, yeah. because they want to compare it to Fallout, and it's like, well, Fallout New Vegas did it better. Yeah. I think Gothic 1 did it better. It probably did. It's an open-world RPG that conveys a sense of journey and an adventure. Isn't that the baseline content? Uh, yeah. yeah, it should be. should be for an open-world game. That should be the baseline content. But it it's so often isn't. Um, five dollars. Five Australian kangaroos from Dylacon. Dylacon. Specify con. Thank you. Uh, speaking of, Eld of Eden Ring... <laughs> How's Eden Ring for you guys? 
I don't know about Eden Ring, but Elden Ring has been fantastic. I'd give it a 9 out of 10. It may be an 8.5 if I was really pushing for uh, for stuff to find wrong. Yeah, I haven't beaten the game yet. I'm pretty close. I think I'm near the end game now, but I have been really enjoying it. I, I have very few complaints about the game so far. I have maybe one or two, and they're very minor. So yeah, I'd probably say like a 9 out of 10, close to that. eight, Maybe an 8 out of 10, somewhere up in there. It's a good game, though. Really good. Hell, Fable 2's open world is better. Um, it's been a long time since I played Fable 2, but I do remember loosely that it, I, I think it was probably a better world than Skyrim. Yeah. Yep. I'd have to go back to Fable 2 again to make sure, but I, the reason I know Witcher 2 and Divinity 2 is because I played those games a lot. But I played Witcher 2, admittedly, with the combat, the the dev-made combat uh, alter alternate mod. So that you actually get parry early. Like, Geralt can't fucking parry. And you only get it after a fight where you're fighting three very tough enemies with, with weapons who would be really handy to parry. Skyrim oh, is less RPG, more on par PG. That's nothing particularly great, but it is uh, very accessible. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, $5 super chat from Adako the Tricky. Thank you very much. Thank you. Patrolling these bad takes on New Vegas almost makes you wish they get a nuclear winter. <laughs> no mercy there from uh, Itiko. Yeah. Give it a couple of months. They'll get there. Oh, uh, uh, Fable, Fable 2's, 2's open world is very linear. Don't kid yourself. I recently played uh, Fable 3 a few months ago. All right, yeah, I don't remember much about Fable 2. Like I said, it has been a long time. Like I said, I'd have to go back to it. The reason I did Divinity 2 and Witcher 2 was because I played the shit out of those, so. The only thing I remember the reason of what? Fable 2 off the top of my head is once you beat the villain, he's given a speech, and one of the other characters in the room just kills him for you. It's like, motherfucker, I wanted to hear what he had to say. Yeah, but part of me likes the fact that uh, when the villain is giving his evil monologue, one of the people just, like, interrupts him with, like, killing him. I kind of like that somebody's just like, oh my god, somebody took the sane option. Yeah. But I did want to hear what he had to say. Yeah, yeah. And an adventure that I think Skyrim encapsulated so much better than any other open world game at the time. That's nope. the reason we keep on coming back to it. But you're, you're right to mention no. just like the variety found in Skyrim, because I'll admit, like every time Skyrim comes to mind, whether it was a result of the marketing or, you know, some of the locations you get to visit early on in the game, I always kind of think of it as this cold, blustery, mountainous uh, place. But then mm -hmm. when you think about it, that's really just a small slice of the locations and, and cities you, yeah. you, know, you get to explore. So I would advise heading up to the mountains relatively on, otherwise you'll get your kicked by a troll who just so happens to be uh, uh passing by i think so, yeah. about that troll yeah bloody hell <laughs> you know i'm very glad they didn't say earlier that everybody's experience would be unique because yeah everybody runs into that troll just, he's literally there to be a dick i don't know why he's there but he's like one of the set spawns he he has to be there it's fucking annoying why would he be there when it's this path traveled to see these monks? Like no one else. Yeah, would get I, by him. I don't. I don't understand how all these dangerous enemies are on this highly traveled path that where people are literally bringing food up the mountains, like what every other day or some shit. Hmm. Everyone died to that troll. Some. Someone may call it gatekeeping, but that's not a good thing, maybe. No, gatekeeping is a good thing. But that troll, it, it's just a really stupid thing there because there is nothing more difficult than the troll up there. And there's nothing, no time you'll ever have to deal with an enemy that difficult compared to when you get the summons, if you're actually following the, the storyline, that is. Yeah. To the rest of the game. It, it's just fucking weird. Maybe the troll is the one bringing food. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
I think that's the biggest issue is I think the balancing can be a bit fucked, but I think the biggest issue is literally just the in-game universe reason of ah. how are people getting food up this mountain when there is a fucking troll blocking the way that is always there. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. That's my issue with it. I don't really have so much of an issue with the difficulty. While I do understand that the balancing can be a bit fun, I just find I him really... annoying to fight because of the heal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just, I'm, eh, but th that bit just fucking, I'm like, why? This makes no sense. I enjoy Patrician TV's statement about how it speaks about how shit the dragons are in Skyrim. If the fight everybody talks about is a frost troll and not the dragon they fought beforehand, unironically, the troll is harder to kill than the dragon is. Yeah. And Kree has the, what, 15 minutes of footage that I sent him of me killing the, the one dragon early on with just a bow. A oh, legendary. yeah. I completely forgot about him. Holy shit. Yeah, I was like, wait, there's a dragon fight before yeah, the troll? It's, and it's I'm like, the tower. Yeah, yeah it's the, it's the uh, what's his name? Mermeldeer or some shit like that. It's some yep. stupid name. Let, let's give yeah, this the, dragon uh, a name that doesn't need a name just because he's the first dragon you kill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I completely forgot about him. Wow, that does say a lot. Holy shit. I completely <laughs> forgot about that. Because uh, the first $5. dragon fight is the same as every other dragon fight. Yeah. yeah. They, they oh. literally don't change anything at all. Uh, fight on the super chat from Bentastic197. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Lizard Assassin alerted me to the stream. How bad is this video? Acer Thorn level? Not Acer Thorn level, no. but it's pretty fucking shit. Yeah, it's not nearly as bad as Acer Tard, but... Uh... Pretty fucking bad. Yeah, you get called to the mountain because you killed a dragon. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, that's but, that's what made me remember yeah. the dragon fight was because oh yeah, because you get called there after you beat it. You have to kill the dragon in order to oh <laughs> oh. What happens Mr. if you, Mister Mimi Mummy? What happens if you go to High Hrothgar before you're summoned? Do the graybeards just tell you to fuck off? Maybe. Probably. Hmm. The door's just locked. You can't even get in. You know what? Yeah. That's probably it. Because Bethesda does that a lot. It yeah. wouldn't surprise me. All right. It just so happens to be uh, a <laughs> past. Dude, I will say I agree with this one, though. Not going to lie. The Greybeard Summon is the hype shit, though. Yeah, that is pretty fucking cool with them screaming and everything to uh, get you. Damn, someone already beat me to it. And them screaming out uh, to have you uh, come see them. Though it is funny that they just say, Dovahkiin, and that's it. And it's like, well, they must mean you. I hope so, because what if they mean the actual person that killed the dragon? <laughs> yeah, you didn't get the killing <laughs> blow on him. Frank, the uh, White Run guard, did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. About that troll, yeah, bloody hell. <laughs> I, bet it, I bet it was the same troll that Bethesda put there on purpose, I'm sure. Um, don't come here yet. But yeah, obviously hundreds upon hundreds of quests, um, you know, the Dark Brotherhood, as you mentioned, a personal favorite. I know that people are particularly... Oh, Aww. hundreds upon hundreds of quests. No. Morrowind, it, it's not. Morrowind has over like three or four hundred quests. Yeah. Um, Skyrim has like... 81 side quests? No, I don't even think it has that much. Yeah, no, it's not hundreds. Okay, hold on a second. Um, Once upon a time, I included the quest numbers in part three of the Fallout 4 analysis. So let me go dig that up quickly. Because I actually uh, went and counted them. There are 17 for the main quest line. Really? There's that many? Yeah, I mean, it was one quest thing, but it each does Unbound, Before the Storm, <laughs> Bleak Falls Barrow, Dragon Rising, The Way of the Voice, The Horn of Jurgen Windcaller, A Blade in the Dark, Diplomatic Immunity, mm. A Cornered Rat, Alduin's Wall, The Throat of the World, Elder Knowledge, Alduin's Bane, The Fallen, the World Eaters, I Eerie, Eerie, Sovereign Guard, Dragon Slayer.
Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine quests for the College of Winterhold. Uh, I'm not going to count the optional quests because. I don't know. I feel like this would be in the, the miscellaneous quest, right? Or maybe not. One, two, three, four, five, six in the um, companion. Now, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen in the uh, Dark Brotherhood. Huh, apparently God, do, there's some in that script. Do we have to count up all the, the contract quests? Because they're literally kill a hapless beggar in Iverstad. Resolve a feud in Dawnstar. Kill Enodius Papius. Kill Hearn. Silence a terrible bard. Slay an Argonian looting a shipwreck. Like, these are these are nothing. These are nothing quests. Literally, literally fucking nothings. Actually, we'll just do Yeah, I had it written down at some point, but I can't find it uh, anymore. Huh. Said, uh, this Game Rant says over 270, but I don't trust Game Rant. No, neither do I. The easiest way to do it would be to check UESP. Um, so let's do that quickly. You God, and I wonder how how, how stretched are we gonna are though like again those kill ones probably count as a single quest, don't they? <clears throat> yeah. So that's gonna pad out the numbers quite significantly. So maybe it is hundreds. Oh man, that makes me feel horrible because it's hundreds of shit. Uh. So they seem to be broken up by city here on UESP. So Dawnstar has. Uh, th f five quests. Yeah. And again, some of these quests are super simple. Thane of the Pale. Or, uh, actually, sorry. Eight quests, because there's five quest givers. But yeah, they're, some of them are super simple, like rare gifts. Do a favor by finding a rare item, Radiant. Kill the giant. Do a favor for the Jarl of Dawnstar by killing a giant, Radiant. Actually, one... Two, three, four, five, six. Six of these are radiant. Two of them are from Hearthfire that aren't radiant. Build your own home. Yeah. Two and both and there's two build your own homes. What the fuck? Because of the Earl change from the Civil War. Oh, that's true. Uh so Thane of the Pale is literally it. Oh no, no, that's radiant. What the fuck? Radiant, 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 radiant. Those... So none of these are so there were none. Hold on. There are two. There are two. Wait, waking Nightmare, Peace of the Past. Yeah, so those are the only two quests from Dawnstar that aren't miscellaneous quests, but both of those are Daedric quests. Uh, and then there's Mine Ore to Get Paid, Radiant. Um, quest all drunks have. Make a drunk dance for joy, Radiant. Fucking hell. So yeah, there's two quests for Dawnstar. Two of them are Radiant. Two out of two. The rest, yeah, sorry, so... two out of two are not radiant. The rest are. Yeah, so I'm thinking if we include, I because I guarantee they're going to pad out the numbers. If we include all the radiance and all the nothing quests, it's and, probably hundreds. And the Creation Club quests. So I just clicked on uh, Falkreath. Quest starting here. Creation Club uh, quests. Once a hunter. Track down a hunter with a dangerous past. Daedric. Uh, Daedra's best friend. Help Barbus reunite with his master. Ill met by moonlight. Participate in the Daedric Prince Hercene's great hunt. And then miscellaneous quests. Um, Dark Ancestor. Destroy Denegir's risen ancestor, the vampire Vighar. Uh, radiant quest, radiant quest. Hearthfire, radiant, 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 radiant. Hearthfire, radiant. Um, gather wheat. Get paid to gather co uh, crops. Radiant. Uh, oh, and more Creation Club quests. Um, a Dying Wish. A, make a Bitter Choice. This is pathetic. Um, but let's try a bigger city. Both of those were too 
Motherfuck. Manning up all the guild quests right now. Yeah, you add those up. Let's try a bigger city, Markarth. So two danger quests, the House of Horrors and the Taste of Death. Side quests, the Forsworn Conspiracy, Heart of Dabella. Uh, the Lost Expedition, Known Escapes from Sidna Mine. Oh Radiant. god, do I have to do like the reunification stuff for the like Legion and Stormcloaks? Oh, yeah, this, God. Is, this is not something we're going to be able to count on stream just because of how fucking messy how, this how is. Even... Yeah, and how pathetic these quests are. Like, joining the Legion. Prove yourself worthy to join the Imperial Legion. That's a quest. Cause it's and not... Another quest. Get outfitted. Get a free set of Imperial armor. Yeah, because it's, it's like, not as simple oh. as like just counting how many quests each area has. You have to go through and be like, okay, this one's Creation Club, this one's Radiant, this one's... Yeah. Like... Go mine some ore, and that's a quest. Dude, yeah, this is just... Uh, yeah, there's just, a, there's a lot of quests, but they're all just fucking go get thing for me real quick across town and bring it back. So yeah, when just someone says this game has... Shit. When someone says this game has hundreds of quests, they're either being disingenuous, say, or they're I counting will... literally everything without making a distinction of, oh yeah, this is yeah. a radiant quest that can... that. That's a nothing quest. I'll say, all right, you can say it has hundreds of quests. If you'll agree with me that 95% of those are literal nothing quests. Where yeah. you just go to one place, do one thing, and it's done. Yeah. When a place like the... Dawnstar has two real quests and the rest are radiant. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight radiant quests and two real quests. Not counting the Hearthfire, build your own home. Literally 80% of the quests in Dawnstar are radiant. Jesus Christ. And the fact that they actually counted fucking Creation Club stuff, like, are you serious? Well, no, this is just USP. We don't know what numbers these people are using. It's just uh, someone says... Still. Not 90%, closer to about 40%? No, I'd say 90%. I it's would say... definitely the majority. It's so, okay. To be more fair, I'd say probably 60%, or maybe 65%. Because again, these are nothing. A false front. The I need to deliver some forged documents to the Stormcloaks. Versus the Battle of Fort, and then Fort Dunstead. Take Fort Dunstead. Regain the Rift. Compelling tribute. Use a corrupt steward to gain intelligence on the Stormcloaks. Radiant. Well, hold the on. Battle I've, of Fort I've, Greenwall. I've, take Fort Greenwall. I've got another Radiant. example here. So I went back to the Markarth page. There's 14 Radiant quests on this page. I just counted them. Now let's count the real quests that aren't part of Creation Club. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That looks a little simple though, but I'll count it. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14... 15. So 15 and what, what did I say? 14? 14 radiant, 15 non-radiant? Yeah. And this is for Markarth. But keep in mind, some of the non-radiant quests are super simple. Um, so, delivery to Kelselmo. Deliver a rink to Kelselmo. That's a non-radiant quest. And it's super fucking yeah. simple. Yeah. Oh my god. Speak yeah, then there's like the potion one. Speak Take to... the potion to the Jarl's fucking... Ugh. Speak to Degain. Um, this is the quest name, apparently. Ask a beggar about money. Speak to Degain. Steal a statue in the Temple of Debella. Bring the statue to Degain. Okay. Okay, so doing... Not, not counting any of the Radiant stuff. There are 69... Wow, nice. Nice. There are 69 main quests and faction quests all together. Not counting Radiant. So yeah, it just goes to show how fucking simplistic and garbage these are. Yeah, and like I said, and one of the quests, like, 
Get outfitted. Get a free set of Imperial armor. That's a quest. Like, Jesus Christ. Wow. Uh, wow. I can't believe that's an actual quest. I thought that was just... Oh, man. Yeah, you're right. That is a named quest now that I think about it. Yeah, it's literally just walk from the keep to the smith and say, I want my armor, and he gives you armor. Yep. Wow, that's fucking And he dog asks shit. you, like, are you a scout or whatever, or something like that, so you get either heavy armor or medium armor or light armor. Alright, back to the video. Again, you can say hundreds of quests, but they're mostly dog shit. Yeah, I feel it's a bit disingenuous to include something as a quest if it's like, do this insanely simple thing for me. Yeah. Because by that nice. by that standard, we could add a thousand quests like that and say, hey, yeah, this game has a thousand quests. Isn't that cool? And it's like, yeah, but they're all dog shit. Yeah. Open the door to your front house. Quest completed. Get in the car. Quest completed. It's like, you know, it's... Yeah, okay, that's fine. You have... <laughs> you do hundreds of quests a day. Jesus, but... Gee, they're all, like, nothing... Quest, get some bitches. <laughs> now that one could actually have some length and journey to it. Or you could pay five dollars. Wow. Five dollars, me love you a long time. <laughs> All right, here we go. A personal favorite. I know that people are particularly affectionate for the vampire stuff, which is, you know, still mm -hmm. notable uh, even now. Like, there aren't enough vampire games out there, but Skyrim, uh, you know, as well as being everything else, uh, it manages to, you know, have that going for it. So, yeah. Uh, what? I wouldn't count it a vampire game. Yeah. Just because of Dawn Guard? No. Is... Uh, I've only played through Dawn Guard once. Is the vampire path any different from the non vampire path? A bit. How... Right, you become a vampire lord. Okay. But you can do that at the end of the expansion, too. Or after the expansion, even. Yeah. But what I'm asking is, how different is it? Like, is it a completely different questline, or are you mostly doing the same stuff, and there's a few slight changes? Uh, it's mostly doing the same stuff with some slight changes. It's literally uh... just, well, instead of fighting vampires, you're fighting the hunters. Okay. So, yeah. So the for, main difference is the end. So for this amazing vampire content that that's added to Skyrim, um, you don't you don't get crossbows and you can turn the sun dark. Right? Oh. Yeah. The plot of turning the sun off always seemed retarded to me. Yeah. So we just kill the world. And, and it's one of those things like, yeah, but vampires can now come out at any hour of the day. Yeah, but all of their food dies. But what do you mean? Well, because none of the crops will grow, so none of the the animals will eat the crops, and none of the people will eat the animals or the crops, so they all die out. <laughs> it's like it it doesn't actually help them. Yeah, it makes no fucking sense unless I don't know. They don't really explain it, so I I, I can't even do like the writing for the game. Because it's so not explained, but it's like when you do it, it the sun doesn't really disappear; it just turns red. Wow! Oh. And oh, I don't know shift. if it's just the hue shift. <laughs> yeah, and it's like I don't know if that would actually stop plants from growing, but maybe it, it would. I think it would uh, because the hue shift changes the energy type. It, it's it's an energy uh. type change. It's not just color change. Just a comment in chat. To be fair, the sun doesn't really exist in Elder Scrolls. It's a giant hole that leaks magic. No, that's not true, is it? I don't know. I, I feel like that would be that would have a lot of issues if it was. Oh no, I really hope that's not true. Uh, okay, well, whatever. Wasn't there a story where vampires did conquer the world and they actually made things better? Since they still need humans for blood, and healthy humans give better blood, that would be an interesting story if it that's, hasn't been done. That's kind of what Vampire: The Masquerade is like. It, depending on what clan you're from, like there there are different tiers of blood. The more dregs of society, the the hobos, the the gangbangers, stuff like that. They have um, lesser quality and nastier tasting blood than the the higher members of society. 
And it, it, depending on what clan you're from, some clans will drink rat's blood and stuff like that. They're totally fine with shit like that. I think that's just a mythologic explanation for the sun. Like, uh, the earth on a giant turtle myth. Yeah. Ventru, gang, gang. No, it's Tremere. Clan Tremere will win everything. Sorry, if you aren't a member of Clan Tremere, I'm gonna blood boil your ass. Yeah, Nosfer Nosferatu have to drink uh, rat blood. Dude, that would be a fascinating world to get Kratos into, the, the vampire, the masquerade stuff. I've been meaning to play it. Dude, Bloodlines is a great game. Yep, Tremere for the win, baby! Vampires? Ha, huh, who needs vampires? How about vampire blood mages? Oh, yeah. Literal blood magic, like causing people's blood to boil in their veins, then rupture out of them and go straight to the vampire. Oh, <laughs> Are there, is the person dead? Absolutely. But it's great. Anyways. Affectionate for the vampire stuff, which is, you know, still mm -hmm. notable uh, even now. Like, there aren't enough vampire games out there, but Skyrim, you know, as no. well as being everything else, uh, it manages to, you know, have that going for it. So, yeah, the That's original awesome. released obviously 10 years ago today, but it did eventually come to PlayStation 4 on October 28th, 2016. It brought with it reduced load times, volumetric lighting, but most importantly, something that had already been bubbling up on other platforms, um, specifically PC. Um, it was the PS4 version that introduced mods to consoles in a very sort of Luddite-ish way, admittedly. <laughs> but I Extremely yeah. limited. From what I've heard, PlayStation Skyrim mods can't have any new assets in it. It has yeah. to all be stuff from the original game. Or its yep. expansions, I guess. Reminds me of Blood Omen 2, where you don't suck blood out of human necks, you drain it like you have an invisible straw. Well, that's basically what the... the, um... Uh, Tremere do. I just love the fact that they just cast a spell at somebody and like a blood spike stabs into the person and then it, it the blood spike will actually suck all the blood it possibly can out of the person and then it shoots back to the Tremere who grabs it and gobbles it up. It's like, oh damn! Kretosis, can't you just ban that Enwa? What do you think I've been doing this whole time? Those are yeah, new accounts every time. Them. Yeah, this is how bot, this is how bot attacks work. They just, they're new accounts that are slightly different. This is how fuck YouTube system is. Well, they don't even have to be slightly different. They can use the same name now. Yes, also as, um, Mescalero, Mes, Mescalero, uh, says, turns out official mods are a bad idea because of liability clauses. Eggs fucking exactly why, why Creation Club can't do anything wild and out there. Because your Creation Club content has to work with literally every single other person's Creation Club content and work with the base game. Otherwise, it's a faulty product. That's why Creation Club is completely fucked. What they should have done is what they did with Morrowind, where they go up to their, their own developers in studio and be like, Hey, if you have ideas for a mod you could do for uh, Skyrim, we could do it official. Because Morrowind had that official mods where it was like oh yeah here's the master index so you gain all the uh indexes for the prop prop pylon chambers or whatever they're called in the dunmer fortresses you get the master index so you don't need to carry around these 10 items you just have the one or um the area of effect arrows and, and just stuff like that um and there's even a showcase of things that developers in studio did. Uh, I'm getting a call. God damn it. Uh, you guys continue. Wow, okay. There's even a showcase where I have no idea where Kurtosis was going with this point, so I don't know how I'm going to continue this point. <laughs> oh, careful. I almost got you, Kaldine. Almost got you. <laughs> Yeah, there's been a couple of times where I've like looked over, I'm like, oh, there's more, and then I'm like, oh no, wait, that's just somebody memeing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah it, something, it's, something Morrowind. Yeah, it's just, it's just so fucking weird. 
it's it's just such a poor concept. Oh, man. And I'm back. You talked about Milf. the showcase of uh, in-studio developer mods, right? Yeah, no, totally. Already continue. I don't know if you're being sarcastic or not. Did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> oh. I didn't you know where you were going with your more point. And stopped. Yeah, I, no, that's what Fagan said. And I was like, I have no idea where you're going with this point. Okay, so back before uh, Dragonborn release, there's a bit of a showcase Bethesda did um, of ideas that people on their own team had and actually made them put into the game as like mods. You know, uh, you know how Dragonborn has like were bears instead of werewolves. That was actually a developer thing long before that, that they just kind of randomly included because, hey, there were werewolves in Blood Moon. But, um, yeah, there's a, a showcase of things that the developers in studio did. And I don't think a lot of them got released. And it's like, that would be the perfect thing to sell as additional content. It's like, um, just have your developers do fucking whatever, and if people are interested, they can buy it. Hey, yeah. people want werebears in their game that you can become a werebear instead of a werewolf? Hey, that's cool. Do it. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if, as an Argonian, you actually turn into a were-gator like you're supposed to? That they constantly reference in lore and everything? Jesus Christ. But of course not. Calbeck? I am terrified that that might actually be a real site. I hope to God it's not. And I am not going to find out. Anyways, we good to continue? Yep. I, I, we can't talk about Skyrim and have it as part of the conversation without uh, discussing just how much of an impact the community around Skyrim and the mods that came as a result of it, you know. The memes, yes. Thomas the Tank Engine as a dragon, you know, we all love that. Uh, and we see Thomas's big old face. Particularly on PlayStation, modding is something that's been quite contentious with Skyrim. I think it's fair to say other platforms have handled that a little bit better, but there's still ways for PlayStation <laughs> players to kind of have- A, a little bit better, yeah. Just God, God, yeah. You don't say. Yeah. Jesus Christ, Creation Club was met with absolute disdain. And then fucking... Uh, the fucking demon himself had to come out and make it a million times worse. Well, because people are saying, hey, we bought the season pass. Shouldn't we get this uh, additional content? Because it's DLC. Well, no, it's not DLC. Oh, then it's microtransactions. It's not microtransactions either. They're like mini DLC. Creation Club content is something entirely new and different. Um, <laughs> no, they're microtransactions, you fuck. You disingenuous cunt. Yep. Bethesda really needs to put Pete Hines back in this cage. Or just fire him. Seriously, fire Pete Hines in a mill and things will get way better for you. Yeah. Have fun as a result of that community. Mm, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Like you say, the PC modding community is always such a, an important part of any uh, PC release. And, and you know, uh, you look at uh, Valve games as an example of... Of any PC release, there's a big fucking exodus there. There's plenty of games yeah. that don't have a modding community. Yeah, and they're just fine. I mean, Dark Souls, even without, its, even without the mods, is still alive and kicking and exists today. That's Dark Souls 1. Are there mods for Dark Souls 1 stuff now? Yeah, and they're hella fucking jank. Because, you know, modding wasn't the intention of that game. That all came about later because people were like, yeah, we still play this game. What if we could change things in it? What if we could make it harder? Yeah. And people have done that. Aggression mods or changing <laughs> all of the enemies into Gwyn because people are fucking masochists. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there, dude did it, and it took him 40 hours just to get out of the asylum. Oh my god. Because all because they all had Gwyn health. And his his sword only did... And when I say all enemies, I include the, the normally passive hollows right outside his fucking cage door. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Yeah. Fuck that. 
Oh, um, uh, I love that mod that came out recently. The fucking the really cursed one where you could do like Fortnite dances and they can actually curse and kill you when you do it. Yeah. <laughs> How much of this video is just the same looped jump cuts? Pretty much the entire, the entire fucking thing. thing. Yeah. Because they're just playing trailer footage for some reason. Yeah, over and over and over and over again. Um, I have a question. If StarCraft copy Warhammer 40k doesn't doesn't mean it's bad, right? Yeah, StarCraft isn't bad because of copy Warhammer 40k, and StarCraft just isn't bad in and of its own. But it does suck that StarCraft people think Warhammer 40k ripped off anything from StarCraft. No, it's the other way around. StarCraft ripped off everything from Warhammer 40k. Like that's the annoying part about it. Hey, Setch, have you played Dark Souls the Randomizer? It's horrifying and amazing. Yes, I have. How hard is it to use the actual footage? For these guys, apparently impossible. But, yeah, I think no. Everything it, they've incredibly... used so far has been um, the trailer footage. No original footage. Even the Thomas yeah. the Train Dragon, which, by the way... The Thomas the Train one you reference is the Meteor Fall. The Dragon one is the Randy Savage one. Um, yeah. Even that was just a screenshot. They didn't actually use footage for that. So, like, what the fuck? Yep. <laughs> oh, no. What? Such Dark Souls, every enemy Gwen win? Fuck no. I respect myself too much for that insanity. All right, we're ready? Yep. Yeah. How modern community games are live for decades after the original developer have maybe moved on. And Skyrim is no different. In fact, any of Bethesda's games are, are no different in that sense. Create a club. Yeah, I mean it was quite controversial when it first when it first launched. I think it was a, a bit of a, a bit of a teething issue on Bethesda's part. No. But no, it's not a teething issue. It's still dog shit. Not only is it, it is still, still dog garbage. shit, it's a really bad thing we don't want in gaming. Like, okay. I do think uh modders who put a lot of work into their mods oh, should God damn it. What? <laughs> you saw it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. in our group. <laughs> uh where did you post? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I do think uh, modders who put a lot of work into their mods um, should have the option of being paid or be, uh, being able to sell their mods on their own if they choose. But yeah. having them having it be like done by the developers just feels really scummy to me in general and i think it's such a bad precedent where we might reach a point where it's like hey all these bug fixes you can sell them it's like yeah. oh god so we're gonna have to pay yeah. for fixes to Bethesda's games they already have enough incentive to not fix their own games because people will just do it but imagine if we get to the point where where we have to pay for patches yeah yeah um, oh, God. And and some people might think, oh, that's crazy. Well, it'll never go there. How many things have fucking happened in this gaming industry where? Oh, it'll never happen. Not not just people the gaming industry, in the world in general, going. where it's like, oh, that'll never happen. Four or five years later, it happens. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. Yeah. We it, we built up to it steadily. We're fine and used to it now. But they'll never do this other thing. Like stop. Yeah, exactly. This Don't... is why gatekeeping is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, Fallout 76 is a really good example for me because I, you know, I I, I, I I, was one of those people that was like, oh, surely they would never sell the shell of a game with no NPCs in it and then, you know, add them years later and people would actually buy it. Yeah. Well, no, it happened. Remember Horse Armor? You know, it was a big deal. It was a big controversy. Everyone hated it. And now that's like the least offensive of the DLC and microtransactions we've seen since then, you know? There, yeah. There's $18 power armor skin in Fallout 76. There's fucking 
pay a dollar for a red dot site in Call of Duty. And other fucking insanity. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you're leaving again? Alright, well, you yeah. know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna I'm go grab my sandwich. <laughs> you can't stop me. Oh, oh God, I had the bots! <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I grabbed it before, before I take off. Alright, be right back in a second. My sandwich is, literally should take me, like, two minutes. Okay. Uh... Well, I guess this is my stream now, so we're going to do things my way. Let me pull up uh, the manifesto. Where is it? Uh, what's my favorite Dark Souls game? Oh, well, if we're just talking Dark Souls, as in like, the actual Dark Souls games, three. Three is my favorite. That talk about our Lord and Savior, Princess Luna Pagan. Uh <laughs> Luna is not our fucking savior. Nah, I'm sorry. Nah, try again. There's a better option. You could do it. Come on. <laughs> I'm the captain now. Okay, I lied. I was gone, I think, a minute long. Okay, well, I, I wasn't looking, I wasn't bringing up a manifesto or anything, I swear. Uh, Unbritted. <laughs> Touch down on paper? Unbritted. Touch down on paper? Unbreaded. Touch down on paper? Unbreaded. Die. <sighs> there we go. Now chat's getting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're getting it. <laughs> so. I had my headset on the entire time, and I heard Seth left after I did. Thanks for keeping the stream alive, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I get to keep myself alive first with a sandwich. You could listen, have waited a minute record. for me to get back. Oh, yeah. Like you oh, do, you listen. do. Re mm, hold on, hold on, mm, hold on, rapper. hold on. You do realize it's important to not have fucking dead air on stream, right? Because people get bored and start leaving. We had Pagan here. That doesn't. <laughs> oh, wow, you're saying Pagan's dead air. Wow. Okay. No. <laughs> Sorry, Pagan. What I'm saying is it's easier to keep like something happening with two people rather than just leaving one person alone. Wow. Pagan, Look, he's when, saying you're not talented when, enough to keep when, things going. No, when both of you are gone doing something, I'm left here alone. It is a struggle to keep things going. To not have dead air talk about fucking something to, to chat just randomly. Yeah. <laughs> So, so Pagan isn't charismatic enough. The disrespect. That's not, <laughs> this is serious. Yeah, it is kind of difficult. I was, I was like struggling to find something to talk about, and I was just like, "Fuck it, where's the manifesto? I'm bringing it up." Oh God, <laughs> it, it is serious, sir. We can't be doing that. I thought, I thought somebody in chat brought up the manifesto. No, I did. Ow. Anyways, are we good to continue on with this uh, shitty video? Yeah, I mean it was quite controversial when it first when it first launched. I think it was a, a bit of a, a bit of a teething issue on Bethesda's part. But what we have now is you know a way for people to expand upon the core release in interesting ways and also support creators who have put in work to create content and i think you know having that as a, as a feature is is certainly no bad thing i would love to see more okay so 
Another thing is, they're now contract staff, and I think they just get paid regardless. Um, so they don't get paid based off what one was popular or not. I, I can't remember what the contract specifically said, but I'm pretty sure what I... it wasn't like based on the popularity of your particular creation club thing, you would get a cut. You instead get the group pool or whatever. Well, what I heard the contract was back when it first came out is they pay once um, for the mod, and then Bethesda gets all revenue after that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fun. All right. We're almost halfway well, through. Mods come to console. Don't. I think it's a. It is a. It is a difficult process, and Bethesda have been, to my knowledge, one of the only companies that have broached it. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, having those mods there is fantastic. There is always a bit of an issue around, uh, you know, how these mods uh, link up to one another. One thing I'm a little bit uh, wary of with this anniversary edition is, is what mods have been added. Do they enhance the core experience? Are they there just as a way of repackaging Skyrim? For they obviously exist as a way of repackaging Skyrim. You fucking you potato. Yeah. How? How do you think they... How does fishing help the core experience? They pay half when the mod is in production... And the rest when the mod is completed. Then Bethesda gets all profits. Yeah, I figured that was probably the way it worked. Or something similar. That's what I've heard for a while. <laughs> Modders should not get paid. The more they suffer, the harder they work. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. For a new jet to, oh well we'll throw stuff in i know there is new stuff in the uh the i mean you get it for free anyway stuff like fishing you know you don't need to spend a, a pound to to get <laughs> a dish then that's not new stuff it's what? already existing creation club content yeah but you also do need to spend money because they said nobody gets it for free right oh then, then they finally go back on that and say that people do have to pay no matter what to get the anniversary Fucking hell. Such have you seen the video where a guy beats all uh, Dark Souls 2 bosses while blindfolded? No. But I saw the God Run. The God Run is some of the most impressive stuff in, in, in the Souls community, period. That's the one where the guy beats each and every game back to back without taking a hit. And if he has to take a hit, he has to start over from the beginning. Yep. Fuck. And, and uh, the Happy Hob beat God Run 2, which is... Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, and Sekiro. All of those games, back to back, without taking a single hit. That's fucked. Yep. Hey, guess what I'm never fucking impressive. doing. It was impressive as shit. But anyways, yeah, you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to pay a pound for it, but uh, you have to pay for the anniversary edition to get it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What? Kind of fucked up. What's up? It's, it's, it's not paying for it if you pay for it. <laughs> Additional enhancements. You can upgrade to PlayStation 5 for free if you want the PlayStation 4 version. Something I didn't know. Uh, we spoke about this oh! offline. I was like, yeah. what do I... Do I have to pay £15 or not? Turns out I don't. I can pay £15 just to get, a, basically, a curated selection of, of mods instead of having to pay for them individually. Speaking of mods, you only need to look at... Okay, so it's a free upgrade for some for some places. Hmm. Because I know I didn't get that for PC. I know for sure I didn't get that for PC. Yeah. I'm glad they finally made up their mind, considering how... Confusing and convoluted who was getting it what for where was. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you have needed a flowchart to figure out what the fuck is even happening with that release. Night. I ceremonious it's been because The Forgotten City, which is, for mm. many, a Game of the Year contender for a lot of people this year, originally started out life as a Elder Scrolls Skyrim mod. And obviously it's since gone off and spawned into its own game, and I think people are really, really loving it. But I was playing that uh, only the other day, and even though it's been developed in like its own new engine now with different assets and stuff like that, mm -hmm. the essence of Skyrim is still very much there. And, what? you know, with this anniversary... 
Is what it? is the essence? What is the essence of Skyrim? Yeah, you're gonna have to elaborate on that one, motherfucker. Yeah. What is the essence of Skyrim? Because, man, if anything, that's a condemnation of this random game. It's like, God, it has the essence of Skyrim. Okay, I definitely don't want to fucking play that. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, when I think of essence of Skyrim, I think of just the pure jank and brokenness of it. That's what I think of. The brokenness of the quests, the world building, the world itself, the characters, just fucking yeah. everything. Edition, one of the major uh, factors and appeals for people that are just about to pick it up and pay money for that specific upgrade is one of the major community narrative driven mods. It might not be an entirely new Bethesda made expansion, but it is at least something uh, for you know newcomers and veterans to enjoy. Oh, is that actually something that's in the, is that part of the anniversary package? Is like a, a, a community? So I forget what it's actually called. It's got a, it's got a name, um, but it, it's one of like headline oh, features okay. when you look on Bethesda's website. So it might be worth spending those extra pennies after all, Liam, not just for fishing. I, uh, I didn't. God, I just find this whole video fucking irritating. Yep, spend extra money on Skyrim today. So this goes to the tribunal thing. This was apparently on the Bethesda website for the anniversary edition. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So is that part of anniversary edition or do you have to download it separately? I I don't know, because it's not like Alright, time know, to crack open a, a new tab. That's a flowchart problem. <sighs> USP, Ghost of the Tribunal, is a creation for Skyrim Anniversary Edition. Okay. So yeah, buy the thing to get this new stuff. It has armor sets, it has weapons and artifacts, it has books. Oh, it adds the Tribunal Temple. Does that have any quests? Oh, it apparently does. Oh, barely anything. Decide the fate of a heretical cult. Restore power to the Dwarven Forge in Felbathov to restore a powerful ar uh, artifact. Ambush a meeting to retrieve the Mask of Vivek. Find the missing uh, curate to retrieve the Mask of Sothasil. Soth Spread the word um, of the goddess Amalexia, which... How? Why? No, <laughs> never mind why. How? <laughs> um, find out who attacked the temple and retrieve their unique mask. Oh. Uh, what? Just... Is this going to be one of those really shitty it was Dagoth Ur's followers? Find out who attacked the temple and their unique mask going to be the Dagoth Ur mask? Well, I don't care about fucking spoil like this Creation Club stuff. Uh, Find out who attacked the temple and retrieve their unique mask. You hover over a unique mask. Uh, USPE Skyrim Mask of Dagoth Ur. Of fucking course it is. Jesus Christ, that is some fan wink if I've ever seen it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's a helmet. It's an actual helmet you can wear. And the character you kill to get it from doesn't even have a page. His name is in red. There's currently no text to this page. You can search for the page teller or other pages or search for related logs, but you do not have permission to create this page. <laughs> Okay. Also, that fucking Dwarven Forge thing. It's literally just a fucking repaste of the thing they added with Dawnguard. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, let me, uh... I have to see this. Um... There's a the temple, um... Yeah, that doesn't look too good. Well, there isn't even a quick walkthrough or a detailed walkthrough written in for this stuff. Wow. 
I guess no one on the UESP cares about fucking Creation Club crap. Yeah. Anyways, back to the video. But first, have you heard they're reforming the Dawn Guard? No! <laughs> Even that's how much of a sterling <laughs> professional I am. That's all right. There's a lot going on this week. You know, we've got GTA, Skyrim. So, but yeah, the last thing to say in terms of the content of the game is that, you know, Skyrim continues to live on. And while it might be a bit gutting that The Elder Scrolls' is future on PlayStation might not have that much more to it, I think, you know, we can... I count you guys lucky. You yeah. are lucky that you won't be plagued with the next Elder Scrolls game. Because yeah. the chances of it being good are fucking astronomical. You have a better chance of winning the lottery three times consecutively than uh, than a good Elder Scrolls... Than a good Bethesda game coming out again. Especially with ML That's there. unfortunate, yeah. Which sucks, because I do want there to be good Elder Scrolls and uh, Fallout games again. Like, again, this goes, kind of goes back to the whole, oh, you're just Bethesda haters, blah, 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 blah. None of what we say is because we hate Bethesda or Elder Scrolls or Fallout. I want them to be good again. Exactly. And, I want and to be being excited good, about these games again. And being good again doesn't mean make them like Morrowind, make them like New Vegas or Fallout 1 and 2. It means make something fucking good. Yeah. I shouldn't have to turn my brain off to enjoy a game. I should think about it and enjoy it even more because you realize all the connections and all the every why everything makes sense. You know? I should play Fallout 3 and think, oh hey, this makes a lot of sense that such and such happened for such and such reasons and all the supporting evidence is there rather than, holy shit, everything in this game is fucking retarded and broken because the developers... I don't know what the... They're taking fucking horse tranquilizer at the time, and didn't do anything that supports this uh, story in any way. Yeah. Because effort is banned. Literally. Effort is a dirty word. You know, Skyrim continues to live on, and while it might be a bit gutting that The Elder Scrolls' future on PlayStation might not have that much more to it. I think, you know, we can still go back to Skyrim to experience and immerse yourself in a grand adventure, which is something that Cyberpunk 2077 failed to do. And I think that's the closest sort of most recent example to being gifted this highly detailed world to explore. Yeah, you're definitely right. I think Cyberpunk was 100. Gifted. We're gifted this world to explore. Oh, shut not up. All. Not at all. This is, this is a product. I don't care... It, what you think about it, it is a product, it is something you paid for, it is not a gift. Uh, see, I would say that even about genuinely good things like Morrowind or New Vegas, like yeah. whatever you, however good you think they are, at the end of the day, they're still a product. You're not gifted this wonderful, fucking magical thing to explore. You're, you're given a product to entertain you. Yep. Fucking goddamn. Hundred percent, the game that the same level of hype as Skyrim did, like in terms of cultural conversation, it felt like uh, everyone <laughs> was excited. That's easy, Elden Ring. The, again, you made this on November eleventh, twenty twenty one, and what was the thing that was sweeping all the most anticipated awards? Like Elden Ring. It was Elden Ring, constantly. And my God, am I fucking happy! Happy, happy Elden Ring is good. Oh man, and with how good it, it is and how yeah. popular it's been, you know this year's fucking game awards are gonna be absolute shit if they As... just if they try to ignore Elden Ring and try to not give it that many awards. Game of the it's year like... Horizon Forbidden West. What? Yeah, if they pull that shit, oh, they might as well just shut down. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't think the female version of Nikocado Avocado should win Game of the Year. Dude, it is so fucking baffling. Well, should we realize she wasn't very body positive, so we, should meet, we made her a flard ass. So it was like, the fuck? Why, how, why yeah. is she a lard ass in the apocalypse? She's a lard ass with peach fuzz on her face. 
Why? Yeah. Oh, dude, it's so fucking weird. It's like you took a strong female character that people actually liked and made her fucking ugly and stupid. Why? Why? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Jeff Keighley is likely an Elden Ring shill. I, I can agree with that. I have a feeling he is. However, what we were, what we got found out about how the voting system works, where three mega corporations have all the voting power, mm, not really liking the chances for this. Because these three mega corporations are so woke and up their own ass, it's ridiculous. What? They did what? Yeah, if you didn't know, they made the main character of Horizon a fat ass. Because, yeah, <laughs> they're like, she wasn't body positive. It's like, Let me see if fuck? I can find the image. Yes, please do. I will throw away the leftover of my sandwich. I, I dropped out a tomato and I can't eat tomatoes by themselves. Pagan, I don't know how to tell you, but women aren't real. Man, if only... All right, here it is. I genuinely don't like looking at this guy's fucking face. Fucking terrifying. Let's get it off screen. That's... I, I really... God, yeah, it's insane. Like, the only difference is the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Chad is freaking out. <laughs> yeah, they fucked her up. They fucking ruined her. They also gave her peach fuzz for some reason on her face, and it's like, oh, that's hilarious considering fucking you know the Lord of the Rings is coming oh. out, and it's like, oh, the the female dwarves will not have beards, but fucking alloy from <laughs> from fucking her bit Horizon Zero Dawn will. Like, are you fucking kidding? Oh, dude, I, dude, that fake that fake fans video that exploded in their face. Holy shit, these are the super Lord of the Rings super fans, and then they were like <laughs> people that didn't know anything about Lord of the Rings whatsoever. I just find it hilarious how much Chad is freaking out. I love how much pain they're in right now. <laughs> yeah, they fucking ruined her. What the fuck? Wait, which one's which? Did she plant? <laughs> did she face plant off of rocks too often? Oh god, that thing. Um, I'll never play that game. Uh, holy fuck, it's hideous. Oh my god, what'd they do to her? <laughs> I know! Again, wait, uh, uh, contrast her with how she looked in the first game. She was fine! Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Officer Hotbeds. I don't like that they look like they're about to bone and or eat each other. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> oh, shit. $2, Two dollar super chat for peace was never an option. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Al. Time for a, an LED injection. Lead injection, I think? <laughs> I, I, we're going to use uh, guns and stuff? Okay, let's do it. If, if Sauron was the personification of pure evil is hot, I'd want to fuck him because I'm gay. Oh, what? Dude. Yeah. If Sauron, the personification of pure evil, is hot, I'd want to fuck him because I'm gay. Yeah, like, the fucking... Oh, the oh, weird super God. fans thing, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> you guys just don't know what a real woman looks like. Twitter defending this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is the main character a muckbanger? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. If you hadn't seen the Lord of the Rings, the super fan stuff, we're, we're talking about... They tried to show that, oh no, the, the really hardcore fans are totally on Amazon's side on all this. Apparently they, it was super scripted of, too. Yeah, they had it was super scripted and they had the cringiest hardcore leftist social justice warrior people you could ever think of on there. Oh god, it of was... Of course. Oh, it was absolutely horrible. 
I hate that you actually posted that image. I had to. It was necessary. People Super asked fans. to see it. Super fans video. The gay guy who is gay and lets you know how gay he is says something along that line. Yeah. Man, I am not looking forward to covering Amazon Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I it's going listening... to be completely dog shit. I started listening to uh, the audiobooks for Lord of the Rings. I'm about 73% of the way through Fellowship, and I'm really enjoying it. It is yeah. really good. And uh, my favorite God, part... Is there is there an audiobook for the Silmarillion? Because, God, that is uh, uh, I... rough. Re I think there is. God, I hope so, because that's kind of like a dictionary. Um... One of my favorite parts, though, is there's actually a foreword from Tolkien. And it's just like, yeah, I hate allegory. Um, people asked if uh, the scourging of this, uh, the scouring of the Shire was based on um, England in World War II being bombed. He's like, no, it's fucking dumb. Like, obviously, he didn't say it that way, but it's like, he just does not like that sort of thing. And that's not what it's meant to represent. Uh, you remember his one of his most famous quotes is that evil cannot create. It can only take what is good and destroy it. Yes. And yeah. it's like, yeah. Fucking okay, even from the grave, like <laughs> J.R.R. <laughs> Tolkien has two middle fingers up at Amazon. Bam! <laughs> oh, God. Did you see that rags video? Um, Where he's talking the about article? that article? Yeah, I listened yeah. to that at work yesterday. And man. Jesus, oh. yeah, and that fucking dude was like, oh, and a bunch of, like, alt-right Nazis were spamming this fucking hateful rhetoric from Tolkien himself about, like, how racist he was and stuff, and it's like, the fuck? Because yeah, he no. said this one thing that has nothing to do with race? Yeah, the uh, everyone in chat, the Rags video on his Dog Bites channel about this uh, shitty article on Amazon Lord of the Rings is really good. I recommend this yeah. video highly. LGBT of the rings pock of powers. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. Oh dude, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, let's like finish this video. The same level of hype as Skyrim did. Like in terms of cultural conversation, it felt like oh uh, everyone god. was excited for Skyrim. It felt like the game that everyone rushed out to buy in, in Cyberpunk in a lot of ways was the same. Obviously, the difference being Skyrim lived up to the expectations. Yeah. And no. 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 Uh, sorry. Skyrim mm. did not live up to the expectations. No. Yeah. No. It did not live up to the expectations. You can. It is right an actual that. shit game. Yeah. Um. Again, it didn't live up to any of my expectations. Not in the slightest. Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk at least tried and failed miserably, but it at least fucking tried. Yeah. Uh, Rags is making videos again. Um, he's yeah, made a he, few he does, he does on a his Dog, dog Bites bite. channel. Um, yeah. He's been working on a Mandalorian video for quite a Eternity. while now, though. But yeah. uh, I expect it to be insanely good once it comes out. That I am looking forward to. Yeah. Yeah, the only reason I won't break down the, uh, the Mandalorian myself was because Rags is doing it, and he'll do a better job than I ever fucking could, and... It would just be nice to sit down and listen to someone else tear something apart for numerous hours. Yep. Alright. And Cyberpunk? Uh, but yeah, it's, it is it is when there were these, like, tentpole releases that were this popular. I think we're in an, an era now where so many good games come out so frequently. I don't think it... So many good games come out so frequently. What are you no, referring to? Citation it needed. Much, what? It is much more the opposite. So much dog shit gets released that that have like retarded half wits going. Hey! But, so yeah. Maybe. What was the last really good big game besides Elden Ring, which was like two weeks old at this point? No, like a week old at this point. A week and a half. There. You, you know what I mean. It didn't need to be exact. Yes. And it needs Quite to be exact because I already have 105 nothing. hours in it, so I need I need to make sure that people know. But besides Elden Ring, what was the last really good big game to have been released? The last really good big game. Breath of the Wild. That's uh, not that good. That's not that good of a game, though. I think Breath of the Wild was uh, really overrated. It's, it's not terrible, though. Yeah, it's not bad. Sekiro. I love I love the shit out of Sekiro, but it's such a different beast, that's for sure. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima! I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, Ghost of Tsushima. There was one. 
And that's a yeah. couple of years now, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're talking about one that exploded huge. Yeah, a Ghost of Tsushima would definitely be it. And re-releases of old games don't count. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, we're not we're not gonna do that. That's that'd be silly. Yeah. God. Yeah, and th this is such a dumb thing for him to say because I mean, how many people have we heard now being like, oh, the only reason people like Elden Ring is because everything else is so bad. Oh. It's like, that's that's <laughs> retarded. That's a dumb that's, take. But at the same time, that's an that actual just shows, argument, too. Yeah. yeah, that is an actual argument. And it's like, yeah, that says a lot about the gaming fucking culture right now of like the, the fucking atmosphere. Just everything is shit. Uh,. I mean, if their good game bar is set as low as Skyrim, it's pretty easy to count a lot of games as good. Good point. Hey, that's true. Well, all right, well, let's continue onwards. We've got seven minutes left. Or eight minutes left, sorry. I realize that's 58 at the end. Uh... All right. A single game can have that much hype. But, you know, November 2011 was a very busy month anyway. You had things like Arkham City, uh, I think Uncharted 3, had just released maybe a month prior. Skyward Sword did just come out on Wii, I believe. Well, I mean, it it, it had, but uh, I remember <laughs> I remember it wasn't. It came out the same day as Modern Warfare 3, is all I'll say about Skyward Sword in terms of cultural uh, significance at the time. Anyone who picked up Skyrim, you had, you picked the right game beginning with SK and high fantasy elements. No, I think you'd get a lot more out of Skyward Sword than you would out of Skyrim. Yeah. Um, in fact, for yeah. most competitions of yes. this game versus that game, I'd say you'd lost if you picked Skyrim. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, Patricia TV said that, yes. Um, Johnny All14, uh, have you seen the Horizon Dawn devs try to talk crap about Elden Ring on Twitter? They are so salty. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> and tons of channels have pointed out that they're so fucking jealous. And people are saying, like, to them, see, cope. Maul, that's your lack of talent. Why did he say SK instead of Skyrim? Why did he even say fucking SK? If the point yeah. I'm trying to make is, oh yeah, you picked the right game if you're picking such and such a game, why would you limit it by SK? Because, like, yeah, Skyward Sword, sure, whatever, but... Why limit it at all if you're trying to say this is the best thing ever? Yep. And it is, yeah. it is just, you thought it sounded smarter. It's, it actually does the opposite, my dude. All right, here we go. Um, oh. If you owned a certain platform. <laughs> yeah, but, but come at us, Nintendo Life. What are you going to do about that, eh? Yeah, there you <laughs> We're go. We're dunking on Skyward Sword. <laughs> Hello there, Skyrim people. <laughs> but obviously, for as great as Skyrim is, we, we've got to remain impartial. It wasn't all sunshine. For as great as Skyrim is, we have to remain impartial. After saying it's the best no. open world RPG ever, then fucking inspired no, Witcher yeah. 3 to the point we wouldn't have it without Skyrim. Which isn't true at all. Like, yeah, and, and you guys have your heads so far up your own ass that you think you're looking out at the world, but you're looking at the inside of your fucking throat. <laughs> God. And the annoying thing is, I'm sure the only reason that they feel so confident to shit on Skyward Sword is because a certain fucking famous YouTuber at this point loves to shit on it, even though he's completely fucking wrong and always gets shit wrong when he talks about it. I actually don't know who you're referring to. Aaron Hansen oh. from Game Grumps. He yeah. loves the shit on it and he gets stuff wrong about it all the time. Even when he was literally playing it, he was getting shit wrong. And it's like, dude, come on. At I... least get the facts right. I used to watch Game Grumps before all the talent left. Rest in peace, John Tron. Yeah. 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 Aaron did not age very well. He was funny. Him and Dan were funny for a while. And then Aaron just kind of. I don't know. He lost his mind. He he went woke. Oh. Uh, really, really toned down his humor to the point where it's like it's just poop jokes, and then became a fucking raging asshole online where he loves to blame people who I remember, aren't doing anything wrong. I remember like a year or two ago, he was asking fans to send in their Yu-Gi-Oh cards or something so they could play with them. It's like, dude, you operate like one of the biggest gaming channels and make tons of money on it. You can't buy some of this shit for yourself. 
No, of course yeah. not. No, He's John Tron isn't movie. dead, guys. I was saying yeah. rest in peace, John Tron. It's a joke that, oh, yeah. He yeah, left. he's off Game Grumps. Yeah. yeah. In fact, as people yeah. made, uh, th those were jokes people made back then when John Tron left. Oh, I can't believe John Tron fucking died just because he left Game Grumps. <laughs> but yeah, um, the show was better with John Tron there. And yeah. Danny became yeah, a did... yes man. Fucking. Rip. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did become a yes man, which is a shame. But I mean, I get it. He wants to keep his job. He likes it there. He likes doing that stuff. I don't have anything against Danny. He seems like a really nice guy and he is genuinely funny. The problem is Aaron and you can't say no to Aaron. If you do, he's going to chew you out. Like I, I've heard some horror stories about but the behind the scenes with Aaron. He is he has gone full fucking just piece of shit mode. Wow. I, I can't stand him. Every time I hear stuff about him, I'm like, wow. He fucking, he completely turned his back on his roots and stuff. Can't stand new grounds. Uh, he criticized that animation video where like, it, it was like a, uh, oh, what was that video? Fuck. I know that it was like a comp compilation, like a, Fuck, I can't remember exactly. They were making fun of something. It was some animation with a bunch of different animators who made this thing, and they were like poking fun at something. I don't remember what it was, but he got like he got on he got on his soapbox and called them all out and was calling them like abusive harassers and stuff like that because they dared to mock something and yeah, basically just full woke bullshit and. He turned and, and people like the the artists called him out and were like, dude, you used to be a part of Newgrounds and shit. And then here you are saying like they're alt right Nazis and stuff and all this other crazy bullshit. Like, fuck you, dude. You've you've completely lost sight of everything. And his response was just more of the same bullshit. It's yeah, he's he's become a complete piece of shit. I can't stand to watch Game Grumps anymore. Yeah, I stopped watching shortly after John Tron left. Yeah, same. Um, I watched for a few years after, but it got worse and worse over time to the point I just couldn't take it anymore. I know that Jonathan Tronathan didn't die. I was trying to make a funny. Jeez. It was that mo multiple people were saying, oh my god, he died. No. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but yeah. I, I do like that someone else says Jonathan Tronathan. That is, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Tronathan. Yes. <laughs> that's great the full name all right let's do this come on we got this shining particularly on the land of, in the land of playstation i think it's safe to say the ps3 version uh it didn't go off without its issues and it was by far the most janky version enemies falling from the sky getting caught in the world randomly you know you've got the the traditional amount of bethesda jankiness but the playstation 3 issue i think as a result of the cell architecture you had things like the game would just stop working hearthfire and dragonborn expansions both launch later than other platforms but historically if your save grew any did it did they release any later on playstation 3 than they did for pc because the uh... whole deal with that was that xbox got the dlcs first and then there's a, a month delay on Hearthfire and Dawnguard and a two-month delay on Dragonborn for the PC release because they had uh, an exclusivity oh yeah. it, it contract. Released, it released way later. I just looked at it. Oh. So, September 4, 2012 on Xbox 360, October 4, 2012 on PC, and February 19, 2013 on PC. On wow. PS3. <laughs> it, hold on. I, I kind of have to read this out aaron shot himself on the couch while recording yeah i remember that yeah it was pretty gross what that did did they keep that in the video yes they did why and, he, and danny danny was like questioning and like wait did you really shit yourself and he was like yeah i think i did he was like Are, you're being serious aaron yeah I, I think i did and he's like oh my god like you could just tell danny was like disgusted and questioning his fucking life choices what yeah. the fuck? In that episode, yeah, it was really sad. That that is fucked. Like, there there's no there's nothing wrong with stopping and going to fucking clean up after yourself. 
and coming back and restarting the recording and just doing a cut in the video. Yeah. Christ. Yeah. It was the yeah, I, I it made me feel really uncomfortable. It, it it was that that was about the time when he did that was when I was like, I think I'm done. I I think I, I think I'm done with this channel. All right. Larger megabytes. I believe Skyrim was just rendered unplayable, which was a bit of a, a bit of an arrow to the knee, as it were, oh, for anyone. Oh, shut the fuck up! God oh my damn. god, dude! Fucking stop with this shit. You're not gonna bring it back. You can't. And thank God, thank God too, because people know it's annoying as shit. If, if magic is ever brought to our world, and necromancy is outlawed, this is it. It's a dead fucking meme. Leave it where it is. Fucking dead where it belongs. Christ. Play it on PlayStation. Um, so it says a lot that you know when when we eventually did get that version on PlayStation Four, a lot of those issues, you know, had gone away, and uh, it paved the way forward for PlayStation to enjoy Skyrim proper. It is crazy because I'm one of those players that I'll just constantly rewrite one save a lot of the time. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. So I, I very rarely have multiple. If I like a particular boss or whatever, I'll just you know constantly save over the same one. Oh well. Do you not do that? So I. Don't if you like a particular boss. What possible boss could be worth having a save for in Skyrim? What could you possibly be like, oh, that was a great boss. I'm going to save that so I can do that again later. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. When I was young, I would save at the Alduin fight just because of the spectacle of him dying. I was like, oh, that's kind of an interesting animation. I want to I want to save here so I can show people that. But that was it. And that was when I was a kid. So someone else, someone brought up something in chat. Wait, Skyrim has bosses? And that's something I was going to ask myself. Like, there's the dragon priests, maybe? They're kind of like... Yeah, a... the dragon priests, the steam centurions. They're ones that get uh, brought up as bosses. Uh, I don't know if they're really, like, necessarily a boss, though. They are, but again, they're they're as about as limp wristed as you can possibly get. They're very, they're very bosses. loosely bosses. Yeah. 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 They like ooh, enemy that's slightly bigger than me and has a bigger health pool boss. Yeah. The dragon priests are somewhat unique, but like they don't seem all that different from a lich, I guess. They float around and do stuff. Um Yeah, I don't know. Dragon Priest, Mercer Frey, and Elduin. How the fuck does Mercer Frey get into that category? Because you do have to fight him. No, I know you do have to fight him. It's just funny. It's like these yeah. ancient, undead, powerful magic creatures. Some guy and the god of all dragons. <laughs> yeah, some guy that turns invisible during the fight and runs away. I fight another super chat from Elmo Bentley. Thank you very much. Thank you. Why do these videos fail so hard at being funny and correct? Because... I, know. I think it's because they live in their own delusional world. Where they think they can revive fucking Arrow to the Knee jokes. Yeah. Like, and legitimately, that shit wore out in the first few weeks of Skyrim being out. People were sick of it after that. Yeah. I mean, he even admits it. He even says it died the same year this game came out. But, oh, we need to bring it back. Fuck off. Maybe there's a good reason it died. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's... Yeah, they, eh, these people just... They, they can't do research. They can't actually look into anything that they talk about. They, they just say stuff that's wrong and then don't bother to be like, ha, am I actually right about that, though? Let, let me look that up. No, nah, they, 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 they don't do that. They, they can't do that. Hell, this, this fucker couldn't even be bothered to get actual gameplay footage to put in his video. He just loops the fucking trailer over and over. Which, by yeah. the way, holy fucking shit, I I didn't know I could hate Skyrim more than I did already, but this looping footage has done it. Yeah, this yeah, this yeah, is really over annoying. Over and over and over and over. And there's still several minutes left, so we're going to see the giant walking with the mammoths again, and the skeletons being and Fusro Dodd. Over, and, yeah. and, and the the spider that he's kind of circling around with the knife, and fucking 
uh, shooting the arrow at something. I don't remember what. You think I'd remember after seeing it a thousand fucking Draugr? times? I think it's a Draugr he shoots the arrow at. Outdoors? Because he's in like the field of like yellow grass. Uh, yeah, I'm shooting I, I, a deer. Probably. Uh, I guess we'll see. Well, let's just let's just continue. Don't serial saver. That's my issue. I Ooh. I often walk away from a game with about 150 separate. Okay. Um. Real talk between these two. I'm a serial saver as well when it comes to games that allow for it, because I have gotten too many times of. Well, shit, game crashed. So I'll just go back to where I... it doesn't auto save. Yep. Yeah, yeah that's I do how that I too. You can ask. And you can suddenly, ask you know, it's, it's eight hours of progress gone, and I'm just like, ah! <laughs> yeah, that's how I am too. You can ask chat whenever I was doing my uh, Fallout New Vegas Let's Play, like, you would see quick save in the corner, like, every five minutes, <laughs> where I would just, like, every time I would do something, quick save, quick save, quick save, quick save. Quick save. <laughs> I would just constantly do that. Yep. Fucking happens. Uh, there are just some games that they just teach you. Like fucking Stalker. Save. And save often. <laughs> Weird yeah. things are happening. Saves. And I, this might just be a handover from childhood. When saves could corrupt. But yeah. I'm always just terrified I'm going to lose a save, so I'll always save in separate slots. Well, as we say, Skyrim Anniversary Edition, it's out today. You've no doubt been inundated with several retrospective uh, and reflective pieces, including this very one that you're watching right now. Retrospective and reflective pieces. I mean, you barely qualify, I guess. Yeah. You just kind of said vague things about it, then um, then said, yeah, it's out today, go buy it. Yeah. Yep. Two dollars uh, <laughs> Two dollars from bottom text. Thank you. Do it for sale. You should have put bottom text at the bottom of that bottom text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, stalker saves are also hilarious because they don't actually. <laughs> so the stalker saves really only save you and what you've done. And they don't really save enemies. Uh oh. And their alert statuses. <laughs> oh god, they are the jankiest fucking things you have ever experienced. Two dollars again from bottom text. Thank you. Do it for Dale. Do it for Dale. Oh. I'm not sure if that's referenced. I don't know so. who Dale is. Yeah. King of the Hill, Dale. <laughs> I do it for him. Damn it, Dale. <laughs> Oh god, though. No. There. So, to, to give you a hint, Kratosis, about how wild and janky the Slav jank is within Stalker. Yeah. You can quick save. So Yahtzee Kroshaw brought this point up, and it's actually accurate. This was back when he, you know, was made sure his stuff was more accurate. But um, he brought this up. You, he quick saved as a guy was throwing a grenade at him, and it blew him up immediately. He's like, "Oh hell." So I'm going to quick load and quickly jump. So he quick loaded and then he jumped. And, but the, the two guys who threw the grenade at him were just were walking towards him. And so he's like, what the fuck? So he walked up to him, talked to him. And one of them offered to guide him through the forest. So he said yes. And then he went he went with them. And the guy ran off and said, that's him there. Take him down. And then the game crashed. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, two, $2 again from bottom text. Bottom text. There you go. <laughs> Money well spent. A dim Dale, Dimmy Dale? Well, as we say, Skyrim Anniversary Edition, it's out today. You've no doubt been inundated with several retrospective uh, and reflective pieces, including this very one that you're watching right now. Um, but before we wrap up, I've got a bit of a surprise for Mr. Meevil himself, Liam. Ooh. Um, it, this, <laughs> this is a quiz I've affectionately called What Has Skyrim Been Porting To? Okay, this sounds really fucking gay. Um, this does. But look, we're 15 minutes into this 20-minute video and they've barely said anything. If this was truly yes. like such an amazing game, shouldn't you be able to talk about it for hours and yeah. not barely 15 minutes? Yeah. 
Is zero punctuation still a thing? As far as I know, yes. Because that's the thing. We could sit down and talk about a lot of the things that New Vegas or Fallout 1 and 2 did right. The things that Morrowind did really well, like um, the the mythology behind Nerevar and, uh, you know, the how good it, the super mutants are handled in um, Lost Hills. I, I always mix up Broken Ooh. Hills and Lost Hills. Point is, the super mutants in Fallout 2 and Jacobstown and New Vegas. And... Mm. Um, even Tabitha and everything to do with her. And, like, we could go on and on and on talking about the stuff these games get right. And these yeah, guys... I mean, we praising... have. We have, yeah, literally. And these guys that are trying to praise the fuck out of this game can barely make it 15 minutes. And they're done. And now they're going to do a really, really fucking gay-sounding quiz. What systems has this game been ported to? Ugh. It's like... Okay? Um... Yeah. Do we even... Is the rest of the video going to be this quiz? Because we can skip it if know. it is. Yeah, let's find out. Let's uh start it, and then we'll start jumping a little bit at a time to see what happens. All right. uh, find all the super chat from Elmo Bentley. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come, come on, Cree, you know the drill. The longer the video, the worse it is. Not necessarily. Because <laughs> for shorter videos, they have to do like more stretching and not substantiating their claims and yeah, that they, makes it they worse more make, they more make the claim and then they don't elaborate on it or anything alright so here we go let's, let's find it obviously the meme in and of itself I'm going to test your wits you might have answered okay. some of this already annoyingly right it's it's not explicitly getting like a re release I don't think <laughs> egg, egg, I can't even get the words out G game nah it's not happening suffer with the Elder Scrolls Blades on Android, yeah. which, uh, yeah, less said about that, the better. I'd rather go to the dentist, Aaron. Happen. Do you think we'll... Because we're not getting Elder Scrolls 6. We're just not. I, I yeah. think you know, Starfield being the next box. I'm sorry? Oh, no, 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 no. They're on PlayStation. Remember, they're PlayStation fanboys. Oh, right, 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 so, right. So, yeah, yeah, And, and it's, it's going to be uh, Xbox exclusive and PC, it looks like. Uh, $2 super chat from Stephen Wright. Thank you very much. What's up, guys? Have some money. Well, oh, thank you. thank you. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's exclusive now, so yeah. I keep forgetting about that. Because when he said, oh yeah, we're not getting Elder Scrolls 6, I'm like, what the fuck, they've announced it. But uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. What's going on? Did you press play? Yeah, multiple times, and it just keeps stopping would have been resolved well enough that you can at well, least play the PS4 yeah, slash PS5 weird. version on like future PlayStation consoles I'd want to say but it does throw up the question of will PlayStation invest in a Skyrim like of its own <laughs> maybe it should no. uh, it probably won't though because they're too obsessed with their hyper focused narrative driven games currently that's all they do yeah. Which is what's so fucking tedious and annoying about PlayStation. Guys, PlayStation had the fucking win over Xbox. When Xbox was talking about how much they're a sports-watching console, a TV-watching console, the news-watching console, and that there will be no backwards compatibility and sharing games is illegal. Blah! That was an easy win. Matt, who remembers the fucking advertisement for PlayStation of how to share your PlayStation games. And the one CEO hands it to the other CEO, and they're just like, wow. And that was the end <laughs> of the commercial. That was, like, really smart ass of them. I really liked that. It, it was <laughs> fucking great. That was an easy win. And they, they just pissed it away. They pissed it away by becoming so narrow-focused. They are just on... They are just on... Single player, narrative focus, beautiful graphics. That's it. They need to actually expand their portfolio. Need to try new things. My meanwhile, Microsoft is like, we're going to try all the new things. Grab that developer and grab that developer and grab that developer and get that publisher and that big publisher. They're all ours now. Woo! Uh, Xbox wins, guys. Microsoft curb stomped you. And you're yeah. going to be feeling it here real fucking soon. Yeah. 
Remember, PlayStation should have invested in variety. Yeah, um, Microsoft got id. Doom is theirs. Skyrim and Elder Scrolls are theirs. Fallout is theirs. Warcraft, like, Starcraft. Um, yes, all of it is theirs. Call of Duty. I don't think Microsoft is spread too thin. I think Microsoft realized it has the bank and the capital to make a literal, like, you know, whip your dick out and just slap it across your opponent's face. Sony did buy Bungie. What the fuck does Bungie have? Yeah, Bungie has Destiny. That's it. I mean, sure, they've got the developers and maybe they could put them to work on something new, but there's there's a difference between buying Bungie and buying um, Bethesda, uh, Blizzard, Activision, um, Obsidian. Obsidian, yeah. Because you're not... The IPs are part of what matters. Because you could swap out uh, developers. Some are going to leave. Some are going to join. Excuse me. Some are going to join. Um, you know, developers come and go. What's yeah. really important as far as the company is concerned is the intellectual properties. So well, we... Here's the other thing that that PlayStation is only just now figuring out, too. Um, they're starting to put their games on PC. So the, those PlayStation exclusives are starting to come to PC. Because they're figuring out, hey, that doesn't actually give Microsoft money. Everybody has a PC. That doesn't yeah. actually help Microsoft. So we can get money in that market, too. It's like, guys, you only just now figured this out? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's something they should have learned years ago. And I thought they did when you could connect Steam with PlayStation a while back. No. Yeah. And they had a weird, like, no, we must keep things contained. It's like, what? Yeah. Why? I hate Fortnite, but if you log into your Fortnite on PlayStation 4, you can't ever log in anywhere else ever again. It's like, what? Yeah. That's a bit fucked. Yeah, that's why... That's why I I'm open uh, here in a couple months, when the when the fervor for Elden Ring dies down a bit. I'm hoping there's going to be a special announcement because there have been leaks and leaks from a credible source. Again, take it with a grain of salt because they they these might be just things uh, putting out stuff to measure hype. But there have been leaks that there is a Bloodborne remaster coming. Oh. And it will be coming to PC. Oh. So, yeah. Uh very, very excited on that one. It's going to be hard to pull me away from Elden Ring, but I, I do some fucking Bloodborne on PC. Finally getting a proper modern gaming PC tomorrow. What should I play first? Shadow Warrior 2013 or a Medieval? Um, Morrowind. Ooh. A Medieval is really good. Like, a, a Medieval um, is a boomer shooter uh, using swords and everything like that as guns. It's fucking metal as shit. Play the original Doom. On your Dude, modern uh, gaming PC. A, a medieval with RTX mode on it actually does look fucking sick. Uh, if you could get it, I would say Elden Ring. Absolutely. But yeah, I, uh, yeah, holy shit. Anyways, it looks like we're almost done with the shit, which makes me very happy. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, they were they were doing just this over and over like quiz thing. So we... this incredibly oh, did... oh. oh go ahead, go ahead. This incredibly dumb and pointless fucking quiz. Yeah, that adds nothing. <laughs> no, Kudos, he needs to play H Doom. I mean, I'll I'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> I've just arrived. What's the damage? Pain. Yeah. Pain. Very, very pain, much sad. Wait, I thought he said Ooh. I thought he said a mid-evil. Did he say mid-evil or a mid-evil? A mid. A mid-evil, yes. Okay, a mid-evil's the the what I'm talking about. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Cuz there is a game called Medieval too as well. <laughs> There's a game called Medieval 2 as as well too. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Uh, I just realized there's a game called Medieval 2. I mean, as well, because there's also a Medieval 2 2. <laughs> medieval 22. Like <laughs>
future PlayStation consoles, I'd want to say. But it does throw up the question of, will PlayStation invest in a Skyrim-like of its own somehow? Do you, oh, that's... I, they need probably to. Not. They, they need to, but given their track record, probably not. Th yeah, they should get one of their developer uh, developers to be like, okay, we need an open-world fantasy game, make something really unique and cool, fucking go. Or... Just fucking God of War. Just make God of War more open world. Uh, sure. Go for that. But I mean, I'm I'm looking at the perspective of it would just be nice to have another open world series with a bunch of fantasy races where you make your own character and just do shit. But like, I good. agree. Yeah, I I definitely agree there. <laughs> but like I'm saying, if if I'm thinking more of a business savvy thing, just God of War open world. Okay, be here, fine. Here here here's something. Sony, do a really good remake of Legend of Dragoon. I'll go out and buy a PlayStation 5 fucking immediately. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it. Man, it's a shame Assassin's Creed Valhalla ended up being such shit. That could have been a good game. Uh, well, they... I wasn't expecting much after um, Unity, Syndicate, and Odyssey. <laughs> yeah, but it's just such a shame. It... Uh, it looked like it had potential, and then they just fucking did nothing with it. Which Pillars one? of Eternity, yes, Pillars of Eternity is getting an FPS game, an F, well, a first-person RPG. I don't know if it's really a shooter, but yeah, it's Avowed is set in the Pillars of Eternity universe, and I'm very excited for that. Which Assassin's Creed was, uh, we was? We was Kang's? That was yeah. Odyssey. That was Odyssey? Wait, wait, no, 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 no. No, because Odyssey was The Roman medieval. one. Yeah. Oh my god, did I miss... I missed the Egyptian one. Um... Oh, Origins. Assassin's Creed died with Origins. That's... Yeah. Yeah, that's the... That's the We Was Kings. That was the old, uh... Oh. Oh god, my heart. Couldn't handle a Dragoon remake, good or bad. I dumped at least $100 into renting it back in the day because I couldn't find it for sale for the longest time. I just recently finished uh, playing through it on stream. Um, really fucking great game. I love it. One of my all-time favorites. Yeah. Ah, uh, someone got the bot before I did. Yeah, um, it was me! God damn it. Oh, um, wow, there's another one. Immediately. Oh, shit, I unhit it. No, hide it again. Fuck. You fucked up. Yeah, I did. Okay, that, that second one doesn't count. Because somebody else got it technically before me, and then I accidentally unhit it, so I had to rehide it. Rose's voice, though. Yeah, I do like Rose. Um, she sounds a bit tizzy in a couple of the cutscenes, though. But, yeah, it, it is a great game, and I do want a really good... I, I would love a good remake of Legend of Dragoon. I'd be fucking infuriated if we got a Final Fantasy VII tier remake, where they just change a bunch of shit for no reason. Like, oh god, it's so annoying. I watched um, a playthrough of the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and the other members of Avalanche, um, I think one of them is named Wedge and a couple of the others, uh, a couple of them are baited to die from the plot go several times, which, it, it's just annoying. It's basically them saying, oh hey, we're changing things from the original, but not really. It's like, fuck off. I... <laughs> You know what? I've got a video I would love to watch. It has the Skyrim music on it. But I kind of want to watch it because it's that, that SS13 video I was talking about earlier. <laughs> and I think the chat would get a kick out of out of it. Um, Officer Hot Pants referenced the exact uh, tism line I was referring to. No! It cannot be! It cannot be! It! It! Yeah, it, it, th that voice acting was really tism in that cutscene. Yeah. I love Black how they... Flag, so, so, Assassin's Creed Black Flag was great because you didn't have to do the Assassin's Creeding shit. You could just be like, I would just be a pirate and go on the seven seas. Now yeah. you're ready to sail for the horn. Way, hey, hey roll, roll and go. And go. Yeah, I fucking loved Black Flag. That was one of my favorite Assassin's Creed games. Dude, and the legendary ships, when you actually attack the legendary ships, they had their own cutscenes. Like, these are full-on fucking 
boss fights and naval Age of Sail combat boss fights. Like, holy hell. The worst part of Final Fantasy VII Remake is that it's not a remake. It's a sequel with implied time loop shit. Yeah. Why did why did Ubisoft never do another pirate game? They've tried. It's called Skull and Bones. And it has been in development hell for years. <laughs> it got announced like what, like a year after Black Flag was released? Yeah, it's been in development hell for a long time. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> that fucking comment by Officer Hot Pants. That newest one. Oh yeah. Um uh, th that relates to another comment he made, so I have to go up and read. Um, All right. I still love how they censored her spell and accidentally way, uh, made it way more not safe for work looking. We can't have her stabbing herself. Cut away and make it look like she's opening a gate to hell with her bleeding vagina. Yeah, that's fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hate censorship because a lot of it is tism like that too. It's just completely fucked. What you you don't want my jelly donut? <laughs> oh, what was even the point of that, dude? It's because do you do you want to know the actual reason? Yes. That four kids gave for that because they didn't want the children to be influenced by Japanese propaganda and follow the Japanese way of life. How the fuck is a rice ball propaganda? Congratulations! You've you've thought this through way more than they did. I still think it's dumb that like they edited out the guns from Yu-Gi-Oh and shit, but like the rice ball is like one of the worst. <laughs> God, I hate yeah. censorship. It's it is so, so bad. stupid. Eat your hamburgers, Apollo. Are you any of you want my jelly donuts? <laughs> and every single child looks. Every single child looked at that and was like, that's not a jelly donut. That's the stupidest jelly donut I've ever seen. I they, didn't, we didn't even know, think we that. Didn't I, know it was rice balls. I just thought, it's what just the like, fuck <laughs> is that? That's not a donut. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I was, I was also confused. I was like, what? What? What, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah. What? What is that? What the fuck is that? Sir, rice ball, sir! <laughs> <laughs> Well, what is that? What the hell is that? <laughs> Anyways, we're almost done. Let's see if we can wrap this up right. quickly because. All right, and then I want to do that video. Because what video? It's a minute and five seconds long, and it's the Circuit Born video. What Skyrim music does it have in it? Does it have the main theme? The the trailer. Yeah. The main theme. Yeah. We can't do it. We can. We can't. I. Oh God. We cannot. When I streamed Skyrim for the first time for the five thousand subscriber uh, celebration stream, the stream got fucking taken down. Ah, oh, so stupid. Yeah. Because of a fucking retarded copyright claim. Because a thousand people have done covers of this shit. Yeah. Oh God. <clears throat> It's really interesting because my gut instinct is that they won't. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I just think that I just I, I don't agree. think Sony have ever really gone out of their way to compete in spaces where they think they're lacking exclusivity. Although I'm saying that, and <laughs> that's dumb. It, it, it's dumb, but yeah, that's kind of true. No, I know it's true. It's just like, oh, we don't have anything unique over here. Okay, we're just gonna not. Yeah. That's a good way to set yourself up for failure when you're selling a video game playing platform. Yeah. It's like, man, I really like RPGs. Huh, Sony doesn't have any, but Microsoft has a bunch. Well, I know where I'm going. Yeah, exactly. It's like, okay, oh, Sony made a really good RPG. Huh, I might consider getting that system. I actually have to make a decision now. Yeah, I'll post the link to the video when the stream ends. Immediately, I'm thinking about Killzone. But PlayStation making a lot of acquisitions recently. All they need is to snap up one team, I'd say. And uh... a lot.
lot of acquisitions lately? No. Have they? Here's Bungie. Who else did Sony snap up? They bought it was Kojima. Microsoft. <sighs> yeah, but God, he had to be cheap, honestly. Like, fucking, uh, what was it? Um, Death Stranding? Yeah, Death Stranding didn't do as amazing as they thought it would. I mean, that kind of happens when you make a game about walking. Yeah. No, I can't, I'll post in the chat when we're when the stream is ending. The stream is almost um, over. Anyways. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm right in saying this, but before God of War got rebooted over at Sony Santa Monica, the rumor was that um, they were working on an open world RPG. Um, oh. And I think it was one of the writers from uh, the Fallout series that was supposedly on it before it got canned. That's interesting. So it doesn't bode well for the future, I suppose, but there is... You know what? One of the writers from the Fallout... You can have fucking ML. You can have them. We'll give them to you for free. Sony already seems dead yeah. set on fucking dying, so they can have him. Yeah. And we can have one of the real writers from Fallout, like fucking Tim Kane or uh, Josh Shoy Sawyer. And hopefully, when... Uh... <laughs> When Demon Souls is no longer a console seller for uh, for PlayStation Five, we'll get it on PC. Yeah. That's mine, creep. That's mine. Yeah. Them at least trying, and yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll just see whether they've already got something in the works. Maybe they're planning to quietly get something out before. Um, you know, Elder Scrolls Six, but it, it's interesting. It's interesting to to think about. My my gut says no, although I'd like would I like to see something like you know Naughty Dog tackle a huge open world RPG? Naughty Dog, fuck no, no. fuck no, absolutely not. Yeah, no, Jesus Christ, yeah, no, after fuck that, after Lies of Us Two, no, fuck that. Naughty Dog should die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. keep them away from everything. Uh, five dollars super chat from Waylay one hundred and eight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Not trying to derail the stream, but what do y'all think of the Kotor remake? Well, there... the fucking psychopath is off the project, so thank God. There is always danger in a remake because there's always a possibility they'll fuck it up or oh, I can improve it. Yeah, and... but the, but that lady's gone now. Okay, but I'm talking about in thank general. God. I'm talking about in general because. You could yeah, still have fair. someone that's just as crazy or even worse. Um, yeah, who, who's it, just silent about it? They it just, doesn't. Yeah, even, I was gonna say they got rid of the public crazy. Doesn't mean they got rid of the quiet that's, ones. That's 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 fair. It doesn't even have to be like a woke weirdo shoving their politics in. It could just be someone who's shit at writing, and be like, yeah, um, I could fix the things that are wrong with this game that I personally don't like, and end up making it worse as a result, like. Wasn't it one of the Halo games where they hired people who didn't like Halo to work on it? Yes, they hired people that said they hated Halo and they tried to make Halo Call of Duty instead because they were Call of Duty veteran devs. Oh, God, That's fuck fucking stupid. retarded. Like, yeah, and again, they, they were proud of that. They're like, yeah, they hated Halo. But they, they were Call of Duty devs. They love Call of Duty, so they're going to make Halo like, more like Call of Duty. Yeah, this went up so well why? for you guys, didn't it? Yeah. Why would you do that? That's so stupid. Because it's like, well, people obviously play Halo and not Call of Duty because they like that gameplay. Why the fuck would you change that? I am curious about the uh, KOTOR remake, though, because it could be an interesting way to see the shift in politics between back then and now. Because if we start getting shit about, like, uh, the strong female character, blah, 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 blah. When yeah. the original didn't have that shit in it. It's like, okay, we can show you in real time what used to be and what is now. Yeah, that's true. Because you can make uh, comparisons to stuff like um, Alien and Terminator with uh, uh, Ellen Ripley and Sarah Connor and all that. And how Yeah, these are good female characters who are strong. As opposed to these insufferable fucking characters like Bebop flicks uh, Faye Valentine or... Um, the new Terminator movie that... Or The Last of Us 2. Or The Last or, of Us or, 2. Or they're all insufferable. Yeah. Mm. 
I'm curious what changes they'll make to HK-47. They better fucking not. Yeah, HK-47 H- is sacred. You cannot change HK-47. No, no. What I will say is the only changes you can make to HK-47 is making them hate humans even more. That God, is it. Great. That is the only yeah. direction you could take them. All right. Let's do it. Remaking The Last of Us for the third time, maybe. Yeah. Would be quite nice. Or wait, they could uh, they could uh, pull a Playground Games and just get Polyphony to make uh, uh, an open world RPG instead oh, yeah. of the racing uh, <laughs> racing line for for just a second. Oh, Lord, what could can be? you imagine? Anyway, guys, I think that just about does it for mine and Liam's reminiscence on Skyrim yeah. and this, its 10th anniversary. As already mentioned, you can pick up the Skyrim Anniversary Edition. Okay, so he's literally just trying to sell the game again at this point, even though he said buy it like five times fucking already. Yeah, hey, let's see what else we got here. No! Oh, you're what? moving forward. I couldn't yeah, tell because forward, it's the same footage back. we've seen a thousand fucking times. Yeah, exactly. Um, All right, good. Thank God. But Bastilla was a strong female character, Kratosis. That's not what I mean. There's a difference no. between an actual strong female character and a woke like strong Ellen female Ripley. character. Like Ellen Ripley, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bastilla yeah. was a good character in the original KOTOR. Now, for the remake, are they going to keep her pretty much the same as she was? Or are they going to make her uh, an I-don't-need-no-man uh, strong female character? Which is what we're fearing. fearing. Yeah, that's the th- and that's the thing that I swear to God is very likely going to be um, the the nonsense we're going to get in the Fallout TV show for fucking sure. Oh God, sure. especially since yeah. it's being done by Amazon. Yeah. Oh, fucking yeah. hell. Yeah, now she looks androgynous and hates men. Even though she basically looks like one. Strong female character is code for insufferable piece of shit. It seems to be now. It, yeah, it is now. God, you remember the fucking He-Man show? Oh, God. They were fucking hyping up, and then that came out. and <laughs> Man, they made her an absolute fucking bitch. And a man. They literally had to turn her into a man. Yeah. <laughs> no, they did turn her into a man. He, they turned her into, it is ma'am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's ma'am. It is ma'am. Oh, God. Yeah, I heard the finale for that show is fucking god-awful. She turned into this, like, disgusting muscle beast character, <laughs> and oh, fucking god. He-Man and Skeletor, uh, Skeletor both got fucking cucked for power and everything just god <laughs> she ma'am she <laughs> ma'am <laughs> yeah they literally called I think that was um as real versus baby face called her she man. yeah <laughs> alright okay I am going to send the link now to that thing let figure we did a chat. We made it through Push Square, which was awful. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah, but that was bad. They weren't Ugh. claiming they were claiming it was a review or anything, but they did say why it's still the best open world fantasy RPG, and they didn't even come close to even making a coherent argument. It has a very coherent landscape. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, God. I, yeah, I also bad. just remembered another example of a uh, a bad, strong female character. I'm the Avatar, and you've got to deal with it. Fucking die. Yeah. Uh... yeah. God Fucking damn. Hell. Fucking Legend of Korra is so shit. Anyways, um, you posted what that if one we could... died? Did we really, though? What if we died and this is our hell now? Well, <laughs> uh, you know, that would be tragic. Alright, here we go. Here's the link. Yeah, well, even Hell gave us Elden Ring, so it can't be all that bad. Yeah. That's a, that's a sign that we aren't I'll in Hell. Watch, I'll watch the video with Pagan and uh, Kree and just pretend you guys are there, chat. Yeah. Anyways, so... I think that'll be it for today, won't it? Yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, I think we 
we'll call that for today. Uh, next week, it's time. Cinema oh, yeah. things. Cinema things. Yeah, and Indigo Gaming will be there with us. <sighs> Probably. It'll be great. Um, well, that, that was the hope. That's He wanted to be there for yeah, Cinema that's, Sins. So. That's why we're doing it yeah. next week instead of today. Yeah. Uh, Two dollars super chat from Denark Ways. Or, Thank you. I did Ways because the, you know, German thing of you pronounce the second vowel. Uh, glad to finally watch a full stag live. Well, yeah. Nice. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, have a good one, everyone. Have a good night. Yep. Yeah.